Poor Tuck Bao, she is really pitiful. Her mother passed away a year ago and her father remarried a cruel stepmother. Falsely accused by the stepmother, she was brutally beaten. Kneeling in the snow for a day and a night. On the verge of death, she heard a voice that others could not hear. Instructing her to call for her younger brother to start the story. Suddenly, a scream pierced the air. Tearing through the darkness, followed by a loud noise. A pregnant woman rolled down the stairs. Director Lam Fong hurried over, anxiously asking her what's wrong as bright red blood flowed from the woman's legs. Her face was pale Fong, she cried. I am in so much pain, please save my baby, let's go to the hospital. Everyone panicked and crowded around her. Old Mrs. Lam kept asking what happened. Tears welled up in her eyes. As she looked up the stairs, everyone else also looked up. At the top of the stairs stood a young girl about three or four years old. Seeing everyone look at her, the little girl hugged the stuffed rabbit in her arms tightly. Mr. Lam angrily roared, It must have been you who pushed Mrs. Muck Tham Tam right. The little girl shook her head, No, I didn't, I didn't push her. Muck Tham Tam tugged at Mr. Lam's sleeve, sobbing and begging him not to blame Tuck Bao. She's just a child, she doesn't know anything. I didn't mean to do it. That one sentence confirmed little Tuck Bao's guilt. Lam Fong's eyes were cold and he didn't ask any questions. He directly ordered her to be locked in the junk room outside. When I get back from the hospital I'll teach her a lesson. The little girl cried daddy I didn't do it. Tuck Bao was dragged up to the attic the girl hugged her rabbit tightly. Curling up in a corner Tuck Bao really didn't push anyone. Why doesn't anyone believe me? Her lips turned purple from the cold as she shivered uncontrollably. She could only close her eyes and mumble mom. Tuck Bao didn't do it Tuck Bao won't admit to it. Tuck Bao thought and thought but couldn't understand why then she passed out. The next morning Lam Fong angrily dragged Tuck Bao who was still unconscious out into the snow. The cold woke the little girl up. She unconsciously called out daddy. I am so hungry Lam Fong sneered you killed the baby in Muk Tham Tam's belly and still dare to call me daddy. How could I have given birth to such an evil daughter like you? Saying that he beat Tuck Bao with a stick as thick as two fingers. Tuck Bao cried out pitifully frozen and in pain. There was no life left in the girl's eyes. She couldn't speak today I'll teach you a lesson. If not I won't be your father anymore. Do you admit your wrongdoing Tuck Bao Tuck Bao hugged her head. She shook her head no I really didn't do it. This made Lam Fong even angrier. If it wasn't you then I guess your aunt slipped and fell herself. She was six months pregnant and she fell. What good would that do her the more Lam Fong saw her stubbornness the more furious he became. You did something wrong and still remain stubborn. Putting on an act in front of me he suddenly recalled Muk Tham Tam bleeding heavily in the hospital. The doctor announcing she had a miscarriage. But before the brink of life and death Muk Tham Tam still said not to blame Tuck Bao. It was just because the little girl was afraid that after her younger brother was born no one would love her anymore not that she deliberately pushed her aunt. The more Lam Fong thought about it the angrier he got. He beat her while scolding her and forcing her to confess. With every sentence he said the stick came down on Tuck Bao's body once. He beat her continuously to the point where he didn't notice his phone falling out. Until Tuck Bao lay motionless in the snow. The girl arduously crawled up but fell forward into the snow again. She felt that she was probably going to die soon. If she died would she get to see her mother? At that moment a faint voice suddenly rang out next to her ear Tuck Bao quickly call your younger brother. Your brother's name is to why Tham Tuck Bao opened her eyes. And saw a cell phone in the snow. Her survival instincts made her try to crawl towards it. Her hands trembled uncontrollably stiff and disobedient. She didn't know how long she struggled before she could make the call. At the same time in an antique villa in the capital. An old uncle was scolding another year has passed by. To why Tham didn't you say you could pass the doctor exam this year? The eight brothers looked down silently. The uncle suddenly asked it's been four years and you still haven't found your sister. The faces of the eight to brothers changed. Everyone kept their mouths shut I only had one daughter. Who was sickly since she was little her brain was affected four years ago. She lost her memory and wandered off these past four years have been so agonizing. One of them was extremely regretful. That day the doctor had to urgently treat a critical patient so in just a moment she disappeared. Father it was all my fault. I was her lead doctor but I didn't watch over her well enough. 
The living room fell silent. Just then the phone suddenly rang. He had a rule against answering phones during morning meetings. To why Tham hurriedly picked up the phone. Getting ready to turn it off right away but his father coldly turned on the speaker. It was an unfamiliar number he put down his teacup. And ordered the speaker to be turned on the two brothers looked at Dr. To sympathetically. He had no choice but to take the call on speakerphone. A small voice suddenly rang out hello younger brother. I am Tuck Bao my mother is to Cam Nock. Are you my younger brother to Y Tham? Hearing this the pen in the old uncle's hand dropped. The child's voice on the line continued younger brother. Tuck Bao is so cold and hungry Tuck Bao didn't push auntie. But they don't believe me daddy made me kneel outside in the cold. Can you come get Tuck Bao younger brother? As she spoke the little girl's voice grew weaker and weaker. Everyone felt their throats tighten. Unable to utter a word the howling wind and snow could still be heard clearly on the phone. But the child's voice suddenly stopped. Dr. To finally reacted, holding the phone close to his mouth, and anxiously shouted where are you right now? Tell me where you are but there was no response on the other end. The old uncle stood up abruptly flustered. The stern rigid demeanor from earlier had completely vanished. He frantically tried to trace the location of the call. After who knows how long Lam Fong went to look for his phone. Seeing Tuck Bao lying motionless he kicked her to see if she was still alive. He coldly said dead is also good. Less trouble four years ago he had picked up a woman. Her clothes were tattered. He pityingly brought her home. When she was washed clean he discovered she was very beautiful. Her whole naked body seemed to have lost her mind. She was also a bit silly and dumb he became infatuated. Feeling that she was cute and so she became pregnant. Thinking back now he felt disgusted. There was no trace left on Tuck Bao of who she used to be. Lam Fong put away his phone and went to see Director Go. Sir I want to ask if you know the Tu family in the capital. Ha ha now isn't your company having some trouble. The wind and snow outside was too strong. Tuck Bao lay face down in the snow. Time passed by bit by bit. She still had some consciousness and tried to open her eyes but couldn't. After calling uncle just now without any response. That meant they didn't want her either. Mom seeing Tuck Bao like this after you died. Do you hate me mom Tuck Bao's purple lips tightened. Her mind kept repeating mom. Tuck Bao want cry Tuck Bao is very obedient. At this moment outside the Lam family villa. A man kicked open the front door. Doctor to anxiously looked around. On the phone Tuck Bao said she was kneeling at the door. Suddenly his expression changed as he saw a small snow pile by the door. He rushed over and finally saw a small figure under the snow. He shouted wake up doctor to hurriedly picked up the little girl. When he clearly saw the small face. He was certain this was his niece. Her face was exactly like to Cam Knox when she was little. Tuck Bao just felt herself falling into someone's warm embrace. That person even took off his coat to wrap her in it. Tuck Bao arduously opened her eyes and looked clearly at the man in front of her who resembled her mother a bit. Perhaps he was her uncle she softly asked are you my uncle. Tuck Bao didn't push anyone Tuck Bao has almost lost all feeling. Dr. Tuck couldn't hold back his tears. You've come I am taking you home. He couldn't imagine what Tuck Bao had endured all alone. Dr. Tuck carried Tuck Bao outside. It all happened so quickly that the Lam family didn't have time to react. Getting in the car the young man with him asked how is she. Dr. To hurriedly said hurry to the hospital. In his haste going downstairs. Lam Fong didn't see Dr. To carrying Tuck Bao away. Seeing the people in the car he was startled. To Nyat Tran the current head of the Tu group. The famously cold-hearted CEO of the Tu corporation. Lam Fong was racking his brains thinking I was still trying to figure out how to make connections with the Tu family. Why did they suddenly come to my house? Great with just one word from him. The Lam family could turn misfortune into a blessing. Lam Fong immediately ran over. His face was full of smiles Mr. Tu. Please come in what wind has blown you here. We are greatly honored to welcome you to the Lam family home. Tu Nyat Tran coldly glanced at Lam Fong. So you are Tuck Bao's father while Lam Fong was speaking. Mr. Lam Mrs. Lam and the servants heard the news and came out to greet them. Everyone had smiles on their faces but Mr. Tu's expression didn't change at all. Tu Nyat Tran said that then got in his car and left. The Lam family stood there dumbfounded. Their hearts empty and terrified. Lam Thien Sai sent someone to find out what had happened. 
upon hearing that the Ta family came and took Tuck Bao away. And also said that Man was the girl's uncle. He suddenly understood something. The Ta family had eight sons, and one daughter who had poor health since childhood, and never appeared in public. So the woman he had picked up four years ago was the precious only daughter of the Ta family. Mrs. Lam trembled since she's of the Ta family, let's quickly bring Tuck Bao back. Lam Fong angrily roared, How can we bring her back now? Now we can just take her back as we please. Mr. Lam thought for a moment, then said, No matter how angry the Ta family is, they can't deny he is Tuck Bao's father. He only beat her a little harshly, and also beat her lightly sometimes, so in the future she will live in luxury and wealth. After bringing Tuck Bao back, the Ta family didn't return to the capital but rushed straight to the nearest hospital. The top VIP floor of the number one hospital in Nam City suddenly became chaotic. Old Mr. Ta kept pacing back and forth leaning on his cane and asking repeatedly why she wasn't out yet. His son looked at his watch and said father please sit down. To why Tham frowned as he handed the test results to Tanyat Tran. After reading them everyone in the Ta family suppressed their anger her arms. Legs even ribs were all broken. Countless severe wounds all over her body. The worst places had to be amputated. A three or four year old child had to endure this much. They would definitely destroy Lam Fong. The tiny child had borne far too much suffering. Tu Nyat Tran had thoroughly investigated the Lam family. He coldly said their company was found to be smuggling. And had fallen into crisis recently they tried every method to ask the Ta clan for help. Old Mr. Ta angrily said it's their luck I didn't annihilate them. Dr. Ta asked why they beat Tuck Bao. Tu Nyat Tran replied Lam Fong's wife Muk Tham Tam fell down the stairs. Lam Fong thought Tuck Bao had pushed his wife so he beat her like that. Tu Nyat Tran's assistant stepped in Mr. Tu. The Lam family came to see their niece. But this VIP floor has security checks. They can't get into the inner area. Tu Nyat Tran coldly smiled good. Notify the hospital to turn off all AC and open the windows wide. So they can wait outside next to Tuck Bao's ear there was only the steady sound of machines. There were voices but very vague Tuck Bao. Tuck Bao wake up Tuck Bao trembled and slowly opened her eyes. Finally she opened them seeing the stark white wall. Next to the bed was a group of people looking at her. Dr. Tu was the first to speak very emotional Tuck Bao. You're awake I am your uncle. Do you remember you called me earlier? Tuck Bao asked you all came to get me. Dr. Tu nodded we came to take Tuck Bao home. Old Mr. Tu seemed choked up. He had to take a deep breath before saying back home with us. No one is allowed to mistreat you. If anyone mistreats you grandpa won't let them off. Tuck Bao glanced around. She wasn't sure if her family had abandoned her or not. Whether they beat her didn't feed her or not. Seeing Tuck Bao's silence they grew worried. Tu Wai Tham hesitated for a moment then asked what Tuck Bao was worrying about. Dr. Tu sighed and bent down next to the bed. Gently stroking the little girl's hair Tuck Bao can you tell me your full name? Tuck Bao was silent for a moment then said she didn't have a name. My name is Tuck Bao daddy said he didn't want to name me. Had wait until after auntie gave birth. The name Tuck Bao was given by her mother Dr. Tu's heart ached. How did Tuck Bao live in the Lam family? He suppressed his anger and asked so can you tell me what you're worrying about. Tuck Bao finally turned her eyes back. And struggled to turn her head to look at the man claiming to be her uncle. She pursed her lips at home will I get food. Will anyone beat me her words stunned everyone. Turns out Tuck Bao was afraid of being beaten. Just how much abuse had she endured. Dr. Tu grasped Tuck Bao's little hand and pressed it to his face. Choking up at home with me you can eat whatever you want. No one will beat you this is eldest brother to Nyat Tran our current CEO of Tu Group. This is second brother to Tu Lam an architect. Third brother to Viet Phi is an excellent pilot for S Airlines. Fourth brother to Lak Dao is currently the hottest celebrity. Fifth brother to Thang NHI is in charge of the construction company. Sixth brother to Kan Mac heads the optical engraving lab. Seventh brother to Van Tru is currently a police officer protecting the safety of our country. And this is your grandpa. You have to listen to him in the future. He's very stern but they're all very strong. They will protect you no one can harm you anymore. Tuck Bao gripped the blanket tightly silent. She worried that if she didn't admit fault. Whether they would still care for her. 
When everyone thought she wouldn't say anything more, she suddenly spoke up. Uncle Tuck Bao didn't push anyone. Daddy and Grandpa forced Tuck Bao to admit fault, but Tuck Bao won't. They didn't believe Tuck Bao. They said Tuck Bao pushed someone to their death. Tu Nyat Tran calmly said, "I believe you didn't do anything wrong." Doctor Tu also nodded. Maybe they were mistaken. Tuck Bao didn't do anything wrong. Tuck Bao did very well. Hearing this, Tuck Bao suddenly pursed her lips. Tears streaming down. Thank you, uncles. Grandpa believes in Tuck Bao. You're so kind. It seemed the little girl finally had someone who cared about her grievance. The pent-up tears suddenly came bursting out, no longer able to hold back. Tu Nyat Tran called his brothers out to the hospital hallway. He opened the file and announced to everyone about his sister to Cam Nock after she disappeared four years ago. No one knew how she wandered from the capital to Nam City, over 2,000 kilometers away. She was found by Lam Phong and taken home. After giving birth to Cam Nock, nearly died from serious illness. Perhaps having her child let her miraculously live two more years. In the end, she passed away in Nam City. Only Tuck Bao was left alone. Our beloved sister died in loneliness, far from home, without even a name. No one knew about her. Lam Phong didn't even give her a status. Yet dared to treat her so cruelly. To Thang N H, I couldn't help but ask eldest brother, Will we let the Lam family get away with such despicable consequences? Just bankruptcy is not enough. Tu Nyat Tran calmly unbuttoned his cuffs and rolled up his sleeves. Then said, "Brother, why do you think I called you out here? Eight against one is that enough?" Hearing this, the eyes of the two brothers lit up, flashing with something. Doctor Tu cracked his knuckles. Tu Thang N H I, the fifth brother, worked in construction. His sun-darkened skin was hot-tempered. He coldly smiled to Viet Phi, third brother pilot. You're calm and gentle. In a soothing voice, you said, "Civilized society can't openly beat people up." Then he went and asked a nurse, "Excuse me, sisters, do you have any cloth bags?" The confused nurse said, "We have snakeskin bags and cardboard boxes too. I thought you needed something to hold items. Cardboard boxes are probably better than cloth bags." To Viet Phi smiled, "Thank you. Cloth bags are good in the parking garage basement." Lam Phong walked while calling, "You go back first." Remember to watch for when Mister to leaves and let me know right away. Before he finished speaking, Lam Fong's eyes darkened as someone pulled a cloth bag over his head. Next was a storm of blows raining down on him. Lam Fong shouted, "Who are you? Stop it!" Lam Fong was beaten until he screamed pitifully. With no chance to fight back, all he could do was curl up. He yelled, "Do you know who I am? I am the CEO of Bao Fong Group. You dare touch me? Believe me, you'll regret it." The eight to brothers stomped on Lam Fong, beating him nearly to death. They didn't need to get their own hands dirty. They didn't deign to do those kinds of things themselves. Tu Nyat Tran coldly laughed and signaled for them to stop. Seeing them stop, Lam Fong thought they were afraid. But then a wooden stick powerfully struck his body. Lam Fong's agonized screams echoed throughout the parking garage. In the VIP room next to Tuck Bao's ear, the voice rang out again. Tuck Bao. Little bookworm Tuck Bao Tuck Bao opened her eyes. The room was quiet. Her hands tightly clutched the blanket, worriedly looking towards where the sound came from. She felt a little scared. The coaxing voice said, "I am your master. Call me Master Tuck Bao." Frowned. She didn't fall for the trap at all. She said, "I don't have a master. I am Tuck Bao." Not little bookworm. The male voice chuckled. At that moment, next to the hospital bed was a ghost that normal people couldn't see. The pale-skinned young man had pitch-black eyes, a tall nose, pink lips, and devious-looking eyebrows. I really am your master. When your mother was alive, she didn't let you become my disciple. Your mother's name was to Cam Nock. Yours is Tuck Bao. I am right, Aaron. I Tuck Bao didn't believe him. I don't know you, sir. Mother would never let me become your disciple. If you really were Tuck Bao's master, why can't I see you? The young man licked his lips. Little girl, don't overthink. Later, master will give you heavenly eyes. You'll naturally be able to see me. It's normal you don't know me. I am not from your time. My name is Li Chong Sheng. I was a great figure when alive. Tuck Bao looked surprised towards the empty space. You're called Li Chong Sheng. Tuck Bao suddenly asked, "Even great figures die. Can the dead become masters?" Li Chong Sheng fell silent, not answering. He felt this girl was a bit difficult. Tuck Bao, you may not remember. But I really am your master. Before your mother passed away, she had you bow to me as master. 
Although at that time you still couldn't see my spirit either. Think back two days ago. Didn't I help you telling you to call your uncle? Remember Tuck Bao gripped the blanket tightly. And look down if you're my master. Why have you never cared about me before? After my mother died no matter how I cried or suffered. No one paid me any mind. Li Chong Shang was stunned and immediately grasped Tuck Bao's little hand. He felt a little remorseful. Before I couldn't do anything. It wasn't until two days ago when you were about to die. That I could talk to you. Don't blame me in the future I will protect you. I can teach you many things. So no one can bully you again. Rest for now I'll be back later. This is what I gave you when we first met before. Tuck Bao just felt warmth on her hand. Then a red string was tied around it. Then Master I'll see you later at this time the door burst open. Dr. Ta softly said Tuck Bao are you feeling better? I brought you milk and sponge cake. I don't know if you'll like them. To Thang NHI barged in fifth brother's beef noodle stir fry is better. Old Mr. To hurriedly whacked his leg with a cane. Scolding him Tuck Bao just woke up. How can she eat that he took some fun noodles do you want to eat grandpa's soft fun noodles? They're very tasty to Viet Phi cut in or drink some porridge to fill your stomach first. Tuck Bao pursed her lips and looked around before softly calling grandpa. I want to eat fun noodles Tuck Bao now finally had a family. The Ta family was like seeing little to Cam knock again. Ten days passed in the blink of an eye. A sigh rang out it's unbelievable. Such heavy injuries yet only ten days to heal completely. It's like a miracle. Doctor to you can take the little girl home today. Tuck Bao secretly thought it was probably thanks to Li Chong Shang. Tuck Bao looked up uncle. My little bunny was probably left behind at the lambs. Doctor to opened his mouth Tuck Bao. The little bunny is gone. I'll buy you a new bunny Tuck Bao shook her head. Her eyes welled up with tears but that bunny was from mom. To Nyat Tran pushed the door open and came in. Seeing Doctor to had upset Tuck Bao. He frowned and coldly asked what was going on. Doctor to said resentfully it wasn't me. It's that the bunny knock NH I gave Tuck Bao was left behind at the lamb's house. To Nyat Tran thought for a moment then said Tuck Bao. Eldest brother will take you to find your little bunny okay. Tuck Bao thought besides the bunny. She had to bring Li Chong Shang too. In the first floor living room of the Lam's imposing antique styled villa. Now only Lam Fong and Mr. Lam sat on the sofa. The former extravagant assets had been nearly entirely removed. Leaving only desolation behind. Mrs. Lam cried how dare you borrow that much debt. What do we do now ever since Lam Fong was hospitalized after the beating. The Lam clan had collapsed all their real estate had been mortgaged. Even the villa they were in was about to be repossessed. Mr. Lam angrily roared crying over what? Before why didn't you advise him to treat Tuck Bao well? Lam Fong irritably said stop talking. Talking about that now is useless. The two elders fell silent regret piercing the heavens. Just then Muk Tham Tam walked downstairs father mother brother Fong don't worry. As long as we have this bunny Tuck Bao will come back. Muk Tham Tam held Tuck Bao's stuffed bunny in her hands. It was the little girl's only memento of her late mother. Very important to her I've mended the torn place and washed it clean already. Tuck Bao will surely be very happy to see it. Lam Fong happily said thank you sister. When the family stands up again. I will repay you well Muk Tham Tam pretended to be worried as long as I can lessen brother Fong's worries a bit I am happy already. She thought this time the miscarriage definitely wasn't because of Tuck Bao. But because she fell herself luckily she had handled it ahead of time. So the baby in her didn't have to be forced to die at the lambs. This time if she could connect with one of the eight to brothers. Her efforts wouldn't be wasted. At this time Tuck Bao was coming to the backyard of the lamb villa to pick up little Wu. But she didn't expect her stepmother to have laid in ambush long ago. In front of the lamb's villa gates. Eight stalwart men stepped out of the car. Behind them was old Mr. To the Lambs had been waiting and came out to greet them when they saw the twos arrive. Lam Fong put on an apologetic and pained expression Tuck Bao. Daddy was wrong before can you forgive daddy. That day I was too harsh in teaching you. Also for your own good. To Thang NHI immediately felt that day he had gone too easy he should have finished Lam Fong off. Hearing the familiar voice Tuck Bao's natural reflex was to retreat backwards pressing against Dr. Tu. Dr. Tu coldly said that's enough Tuck Bao's bunny is still upstairs right. 
To Nyat Tran signaled with his hand the bodyguards in black rushed inside. In no time they brought the stuffed bunny out. Tuck Bao's face showed a hint of joy. She hugged the bunny tightly little bunny. Tuck Bao has come to get you Tuck Bao won't abandon you. Tuck Bao asked uncle can we go to the backyard for a bit. To Y Tham nodded the two went to the backyard. Tuck Bao looked towards the small bush little Wu. From the bush came the cry of a bird a parrot circled around then flew away instead of coming nearer. Tuck Bao leaned in and softly said to doctor to uncle. Little Wu seems to be afraid of you. Doctor to also lowered his voice or ill have someone catch it and bring it back directly. Tuck Bao shook her head still whispering no need ill come back to get it later. She felt that little Wu would be too pitiful if people suddenly grabbed it. Tuck Bao shook her head no. Little Wu isn't a bad bird. If we catch it it'll be very scared stay still don't move. Ill go in and call it out. Tuck Bao went further in little Wu come here. Tuck Bao sternly said little Wu. That guy isn't stupid. Be good Tuck Bao had gone deep inside. Suddenly she heard a small sound behind her. Turning on reflex she saw a familiar pair of eyes staring at her intently. Muk Tham Tam said you finally come back. Auntie knew you'd return for little Wu. Tuck Bao jerked back in shock but Muk Tham Tam had grabbed her arm. When Tuck Bao was about to scream Muk Tham Tam covered her mouth. Muk Tham Tam asked what's wrong. Not happy to see Auntie Muk Tham Tam didn't know Dr. To was right outside the bush. She turned Tuck Bao's face towards her auntie's child died because of you you know. You have to take responsibility. If they ask you have to admit you pushed auntie down the stairs. Understand. Suddenly Tuck Bao opened her mouth and bit down hard on Muk Tham Tam's arm. Muk Tham Tam cried out in pain. And slapped Tuck Bao's face. But suddenly a ray of light emitted from the red string on Tuck Bao's wrist. Pushing her hand back to slap herself instead. Next Muk Tham Tam flew back. And crashed heavily into the bush. Doctor to hug Tuck Bao for a moment the girl doubted why without using any strength herself Muk Tham Tam was sent flying so far away. To why Tham worriedly asked if she was okay. Doctor to coldly looked at Muk Tham Tam you dare hit Tuck Bao. Carrying Tuck Bao he walked towards her Muk Tham Tam panicked damn. Since when was doctor to hear Muk Tham Tam hurriedly raised her hands Mr. To you misunderstand. I am also like a mother to Tuck Bao. How could I hit her? Doctor to used his palm to cover Tuck Bao's ears. Pressing her head to his chest so she wouldn't see what came next. He stomped his foot on Muk Tham Tam's face you dare claim to be her mother. Are you worthy Muk Tham Tam screamed pitifully Mr. To spare me. I was wrong doctor to stomped her face again. Coldly saying scram the parrot in the tree cried ok ok. Beating a fool Muk Tham Tam didn't dare make another sound. Covering her face she ran away after driving the woman off. To why Tham still had to coax Tuck Bao to catch the parrot. But no matter what they couldn't lure it over. To Thang Nhi and to Viet Phi. To Lak Dao didn't see Tuck Bao come back. Going to the backyard they witnessed the scene of a dignified elder. And a child with a strange bird. After understanding what happened they realized. Tuck Bao had deliberately returned to the lamb's house because of this parrot. To Thang Nhi coldly said unbelievable. We can't even lure a parrot down. Youngest the parrot in the tree swayed and sang 8,000 years. King Ba Ba likes to eat Ba Ba. Doctor to point it up the tree if you're so good go ahead and try. To Thang Nhi waved his hand calling for the parrot to come down. Tuck Bao's eyes widened she thought fifth brother is totally like a gorilla. To Lak Dao faintly smirked just to lure a parrot yet you've become an ancestor already. Tuck Bao covered her mouth giggling. The curious girl observed her uncle's youngest uncle and third uncle were so nice. One gentle one as warm as the sun. Fourth uncle looked bookish but like a villain. They were her mother's brothers it seemed Tuck Bao liked them already. Otherwise when her eyes met to Lak Dao's. She wouldn't have turned away pretending nothing happened. To Lak Dao faintly smirked this little girl was quite gutsy. Hey don't bother anymore only Tuck Bao can lure this parrot. Tuck Bao tilted her head coaxing the parrot. It almost landed on her shoulder. Suddenly old Mr. and Mrs. Lamb's voices rang out nephews. You're here the parrot startled. Flying in the opposite direction Tuck Bao reflexively pressed against Dr. Two. Lam Fong smiled don't be too gentle with that bird. Knock it out then catch it and take it back. 
To Y Tham coldly said, We don't need your help here. Please leave to Nyat Tran signaled with his hand. The bodyguards rushed forward, pulling the lambs out of the garden. The two elders protested loudly, This is our villa. Why are you kicking us out without the lambs causing trouble? Tuck Bao kept coaxing the parrot that guy isn't bad. Li Chong Shang hurry down we have to go. If you don't come down you won't see Tuck Bao again. At this time the parrot finally flew down. And perched on drive to's head doctor to jerked in shock. Taking advantage while it was unaware he quickly grabbed its leg. At the lamb's gate they pressed close again. Now they had to find a way to break through the protective barrier around Tuck Bao. Lam Fong smiled gently daddy was a bit harsh. But it was also for your sake. Tu Thang Nhi suddenly charged forward. Grabbing Lam Fong's collar and flinging him against the front door. Everyone seemed to hear the sound of a watermelon smashing onto the ground. He roared how can you still claim to be your father? You're not worthy to be Tuck Bao's father. Dr. Tu carried Tuck Bao to the car and left. Take your time brother well wait for you in the car. Tu Thang Nhi grabbed Lam Fong's hair. And continuously slammed his head against the wall if you can't do a father's role well then don't claim to be one. After speaking he kicked Lam Fong's privates. Next Lam Fong's agonized screams echoed throughout the villa area. Tu Thang Nhi threw Lam Fong onto the ground like tossing away a dead dog. Then left Mrs. Lam ran over son are you okay? Mom will call an ambulance to take you to the hospital right away. Mr. Lam immediately stopped her calling what? We don't have money for hospital treatments now. Mrs. Lam sorrowfully said bear the pain. It'll pass just then a group of people charged in remember to repay your 80 million debt to us before leaving. Turns out it was a debt collection group they surrounded the Lam family. Mr. Lam shouted what do you want? Do you know who we are? We're in-laws with the two family in the capital. In response the two families cars drove away. The debt collectors laughed mockingly so prestigious huh? Why didn't the Tu family help you? If you can't repay use the house instead. Get lost Tuck Vang ordered. His underlings charged forward too bad. You didn't think about today beforehand. The Lam family deserves this outcome. In the car to Nyat Tran looked at his phone. Sending a message let them live not die. Tuck Bao sat quietly in the car holding her stuffed bunny. And the parrot old mister to gently said we're going home to the capital now. Well take the plane soon Tuck Bao suddenly asked Grandpa. Can we bring my mother's ashes home too? Old Mr. Tu nodded sorrowfully of course we must bring your mother back with us. Only now did Tuck Bao feel at ease. Finally able to bring her mother home. The Tu family chartered a private jet. Tuck Bao looked at the sky outside. She felt the clouds were right next to her. Flying alongside her she pressed her face against the plane window. Looking outside to Viet Phi smilingly asked what are you looking at Tuck Bao. Tuck Bao turned and asked third uncle. We're in the sky now right? Doctor to nodded we're on an airplane. Tuck Bao suddenly asked is mom here too? To Viet Phi and to Y Tham who sat near each other fell silent. Heads bowed looking at the sky outside. Mom passed away so she must have gone to heaven right? Will we see mom later? Tuck Bao misses mom a lot everyone was silent. Turning away as tears quietly filled their eyes. Doctor to hugged Tuck Bao Tuck Bao sleep. When you sleep you'll meet mom in your dreams. Tuck Bao murmured yes and curled up in drive to's arms. Tears quietly rolled down. He had tricked Tuck Bao she had slept many times but never met her mom once. Tuck Bao fell asleep the red string on her wrist emitted a faint glow. In her dream Tuck Bao felt her body become light. As if flying in midair. Around her were fluffy white clouds like cotton. She reached out and picked off a piece putting it in her mouth. Her eyes lit up it's so sweet just then a familiar voice spoke gently behind her. Tuck Bao Tuck Bao opened her eyes wide. Turning around she saw her mother standing not far behind her. Gazing at her with tearful eyes Tuck Bao rushed over and hugged her mom tightly. Her mother gently stroked her hair my good Tuck Bao. From now on grandpa and your uncles are your family. You must live happily grandma is in poor health. Tuck Bao be filial in my place. Tuck Bao sobbed I understand mom. Ill definitely take good care of grandma. To Cam Nox smiled saying something but her voice grew weaker. Her body emitted a dimming glow becoming transparent. To Cam Nox said Tuck Bao mom loves you. Loves you forever Tuck Bao was sleeping soundly. Mouth calling mom her tiny face was drenched in tears. At that moment next to Tuck Bao was an invisible figure. 
Li Chongsheng thought this time he had cleared his debt to the mother and daughter. After dealing with the Lam family, the Tu clan planned to bring Tuck Bao to their manor in the capital. The plane landed at the capital's international airport. Seeing Tuck Bao still sleeping, old Mister Tu signaled to Wai Tham carried Tuck Bao outside, still keeping his body bent to avoid waking her. Just then, the parrot cried loudly, "Thief, kid, thief!" Tuck Bao jerked awake. Everyone glared at the green parrot. They really wanted to cook it into soup. Tuck Bao hazily looked around. Her gaze was a bit blank. Doctor to hugged his beloved girl. We've arrived in the capital. Now we're almost home. Tuck Bao nodded groggily. The two families' luxury cars were already waiting outside the airport. Four Rolls Royces lined up majestically. Passersby crowded around, taking photos, curiously guessing which princess this was. While everyone was still discussing, they saw eight stalwart men with imposing aura step out. First was an old man. One of the men carried a little girl. A parrot perched on his shoulder. The parrot cheerfully sang, "Life is so beautiful." Harry Potter rides a broom and flies. The song was a bit contradictory to the solemn atmosphere. Seeing this, Tuck Bao's eight uncles quickly got her into the car. The convoy of luxury cars left the airport. A reporter said, "Esteemed sirs, today we have learned a valuable lesson. Just look at those four Rolls Royces lined up. That shows what family it is." Compared to how they treated Tuck Bao, the Lam family is so wretched. The Lams went completely bankrupt without anything left. When other companies go under, the bosses at least still have some money to buy a small house. Lam Fong's assets were all confiscated. He has nothing now, only able to sleep under bridges. Mrs. Lam struggled to breathe from the shock. It's unbelievable. The evil stepmother was furious, seeing the news that hateful brat is happily enjoying herself. And forgot about the elders who raised her. What an unfilial niece! Muck Tham Tam grew more and more envious inside. She had struggled for two years and finally became the lady of the Lam household. Who knew it would turn out like this? She absolutely refused to let her life end this way. She refused to lose. A vicious glint flashed in Muck Tham Tam's eyes. She posted shocking information online that to family's little princess is cruel and sinister. She pushed her aunt down the stairs, causing a miscarriage. The murderer almost died twice, but now rides in luxury cars back to the capital. The car quickly arrived at the two families' private manor. For a young child, when Tuck Bao saw the manor before her eyes, her little face showed amazement. Is this where Mom grew up? Doctor De said, voice slightly choked. This is the princess castle. It was your mother's home and will be Tuck Bao's castle in the future. Old Mister To told the servants from now on Tuck Bao as the two families' little princess. The young miss of the two family two rows of servants stood on both sides, smiling to welcome the young miss return home. Old Mister To hesitated to that's right. We must quickly decide on a name for her. He happily took Tuck Bao's hand. Let Grandpa show you your room. Tuck Bao nodded upstairs. She had never seen such a beautiful princess room. She looked up and sincerely asked Grandpa. Is this really my room? It's so big. To Wai Tham asked, "What do you think? Does Tuck Bao like it?" Tuck Bao nodded emphatically. "I like it a lot. Thank you, Grandpa. Thank you, Uncle Doctor." To stroked her hair. No need to thank us, Tuck Bao. Later, when your siblings are done with school, they'll come play with you. Tuck Bao was puzzled. Siblings, Doctor, to explained. Tuck Bao, you have three brothers and one sister. Their eldest and second brother's children. Doctor to felt Tuck Bao was too lonely at the Lam's house. Now she needed peers to grow up with. Tuck Bao kept nodding. Then she looked up and asked, "Uncle, can I have some paper and colored pencils? I want to make gifts for my siblings." Hope lit up in the little girl's eyes. Tuck Bao finally had siblings now. Outside the manor, an elegant woman led a little girl holding two dolls in her hands. She told Ham Ham later, "When you meet your sister Tuck Bao, you must give her one doll. Understand?" Hearing this, Ham Ham immediately got upset. No, the dolls are mine. All the toys are mine. Saying so, she turned and ran into the manor. The woman was at a loss. She really didn't know what to do with the girl anymore. She turned to the boy following behind to Two Tick. Hurry up! Why do you have that attitude too? Unexpectedly, to Two Tick also scowled. I don't want a sister. One sister who loves stealing my toys and cries all the time like Ham Ham. I am already sick of it. I don't want another sister. Saying that the boy also left, Ham Ham ran into her room, grabbed the two dolls and threw them on the ground. 
kicking and stomping them repeatedly even if I have to break the dolls. I won't give my sister any outside. Tuck Bao gathered her courage and knocked on Ham Ham's door sister Ham Ham. I am Tuck Bao I brought you a gift. Ham Ham jerked the door open and pushed her get lost. I hate you who wants your gift. Tuck Bao was pushed and fell backwards. Old Mr. To suppressed his anger Ham Ham your sister came to be friends. Why did you hit her his second granddaughter was very spoiled. Just saying one harsh word would make her ball. Sure enough Ham Ham's eyes were already welling up I won't give my sister any doll. Hearing the noise to two lamb ran up. The wife gently said dear please calm down a bit. Ham Ham is still young and doesn't understand. Old Mr. To shouted it's because she's young that we must teach her now. I've talked about this issue more than once already. Why do you raise her like this? So unruly at a young age. How will she live in society when grown up? The wife lowered her head I understand father. Old Mr. To angrily led Tuck Bao away. She felt unhappy that he had spoken too harshly. She's my daughter ill raise her myself what right do you have to interfere? There's nothing wrong with spoiling a daughter. She stroked Ham Ham's hair good Ham Ham don't cry. Mommy will buy you a new doll. Old Mr. To brought Tuck Bao back to her room. Seeing Tuck Bao return the parrot flapped its wings wanting to fly over but was chained down. Tuck Bao comforted be good Li Chong Shang. After uncle finishes the room hell let you out. Seeing Tuck Bao whisper to the parrot. Old Mr. To said compassionately my Tuck Bao. Siblings normally treat you like this. Tuck Bao smiled it's alright grandpa. I understand my sister's feelings. I also don't like giving others my things. Old Mr. To was amazed Tuck Bao understood this so young. Just then he noticed a painting you drew this. Mentioning drawing Tuck Bao's face became intent yes. I love drawing at dad's house before. I drew a lot what is this painting of can you tell grandpa. Tuck Bao transformed into a little tour guide this is two children riding horses in the forest. Old Mr. To thought if Tuck Bao's words were true. Perhaps he could have that art tutor properly teach her. Grandfather and granddaughter were happily chatting when a servant's voice came from behind master. Mistress is home old mister to stroke Tuck Bao's hair let's go greet grandma dear. To two lamb pushed the wheelchair old missus to looked up and saw a pretty little girl being led downstairs by old mister to. Tuck Bao pulled her hand free and ran to the staircase railing. Leaning over to look at grandma. Grandma Tuck Bao is home hearing her voice. Old Mrs. To choked up unable to speak only crying. This is Cam Nock's daughter. She looks just like little Cam Nock. Tuck Bao ran over to old Mrs. To. Calling grandma hearing her call. Old Mrs. To hugged Tuck Bao tightly. And sobbed my granddaughter. You've suffered so much all these years. Tuck Bao cried I promised mom I would take care of grandma. And be filial to you. The old woman cried louder Tuck Bao comforted her don't cry grandma. Be good upstairs as soon as Ham Ham stepped out she saw the scene of grandma and Tuck Bao embracing and crying. The little girl was furious hateful thing daring to steal my grandparents. Angrily Ham Ham turned and ran upstairs. On the way she heard squawking coming from Tuck Bao's room. Curiously Ham Ham pushed open Tuck Bao's door. She saw a green parrot perched on a stand. Ham Ham's eyes lit up what a pretty parrot. Seeing Ham Ham charge over. Little Wu panically cried the crazy child is here. Help me hearing this Mrs. Wen frowned. What does this parrot normally say? No manners at all. She called Ham Ham what are you doing? Come downstairs grandma is waiting below. But Ham Ham kept saying she wanted the parrot. Mrs. Wen could only coax that's your sister's parrot. Mom will buy you another parrot later okay. Ham Ham whined no. I only want this one saying so she climbed onto a chair. And reached to grab little Wu the panicked parrot struggled to get away. But Ham Ham had grabbed its neck. Ham Ham tried her best to restrain it but couldn't hold the parrot. It scratched her injuring her hands. In terrible pain Ham Ham screamed by now everyone downstairs also heard the noise upstairs. Tuck Bao immediately ran up old mister to react it. Yelling at to two lamb it's Ham Ham again. I told you to discipline your children but you keep letting this happen. To two lamb's face turned bright red from embarrassment but she couldn't speak. Everyone hurriedly followed upstairs. While throwing and hitting little Wu Ham Ham yelled if you don't listen ill hit you until you learn. Seeing this Tuck Bao's face turned red. She rushed over to stop her don't hit little Wu. 
Seeing Tuck Bao snatch the parrot, Ham Ham angrily pushed her down, feeling her thing was stolen. Ham Ham forcefully pushed Tuck Bao. Little Wu is mine. Very worried, Tuck Bao also pushed back Little Wu as Tuck Bao's friend, not yours. Everyone was surprised. The usually docile Tuck Bao suddenly got angry. Tuck Bao's eyes were red, but she endured without crying. Mrs. Wynn hurriedly scolded, "If you want, let your sister have the parrot. Say so." Why hit people? Tuck Bao pursed her lips. Eyes red. She hit me first. Mrs. Wynn said, "You're allowed to hit back when hit. You don't know children should be humble." And yield, old Mister, to roared enough. He cut her off. Ham, ham. Do you know how to be considerate yet? Clearly, she took the initiative to steal the parrot and hit first. Why are you scolding Tuck Bao? Seeing old Mrs. to push her wheelchair over, caring for Tuck Bao, and ignoring Ham Ham, Mrs. Win felt cold. Ham Ham was hit, yet no one cared. They went too far. She hugged Ham Ham. Good Ham Ham. Let's go. Ham Ham left with her. Without another word, old Mister to was so angry he could die. Am I not allowed to speak? Do you recognize the issue here? To two lamb stammered, "Don't be angry. I'll handle it." But her words only made old Mister to angrier. But now was not the time to be angry. He went over to check on Tuck Bao. Tuck Bao hugged Little Wu tightly. Eyes red. Sister clearly hit Little Wu first. Old Mrs. to felt immense pity. Don't cry, Tuck Bao. Tuck Bao is Grandma's good granddaughter. In the room, Mrs. Win saw her daughter's arms covered in scratches everywhere. Angrily, she said, "Too lamb, is this how you act as a father? Our daughter was clearly bullied, yet you're like this. Look at her bloody arms. If she didn't try to steal the parrot, how could she be so injured? V. Win, is this how you teach your child? I've yielded to you on many matters before, but my patience has a limit too. Now, Mrs. Win only felt immense heartache." What did I do wrong? Does loving my child count as a mistake? Why do you all keep targeting me and Ham Ham? To Tu Lam silently turned and left. Tu Nyat Tran leaned against the wall, seeing Tu Tu Lam come out. He coldly said, "Second brother, you should end your affairs soon too. I know you worry how divorce will affect the children, but think for yourself. If you need help, come to me." Having said that, Tu Nyat Tran left at dinner. At dinner, old Mister Tu brought up giving Tuck Bao a name. Everyone thought about it. Tuck Bao said, "Mom said Tuck is a type of grain. Removing the husk is called Tuck rice. It's very adaptable. So Mom named me Tuck Bao." Her voice was sweet, but her face very serious, as if reciting her mother's words. Old Mrs. Tu's nose soured. The name Tuck Bao was so meaningful. She said, "Tuck Bao, your mother's surname was Tu Cam Nock. Do you want to take the Tu surname like your mom?" Tuck Bao happily nodded yes to. The same surname as Mom, old Mister, to ask to what? Tuck Bao raised her hand to Tuck Bao. Everyone laughed. Doctor to said, "How about to Tuck?" But Tuck Bao shook her head. No, that sounds too much like Uncle. Everyone was stumped on the name. Old Mister to said, "No rush, keep thinking." He asked, "This year you're three and a half, right?" Tuck Bao thought, then replied, "Yes, Grandpa." Mom said, "Tuck Bao was born on March 15th." Grandma said, "March 15th." The next week is Tuck Bao's fourth birthday. Let's celebrate Tuck Bao's birthday and buy an extra huge cake. Tuck Bao's eyes lit up excitedly. Really, seeing all attention focused on Tuck Bao, Ham Ham was unhappy. She slapped the table, crying loudly. I don't want to eat with Tuck Bao. You only care about her. No one cares about me. To Ha Van, to Cash Van, to Ha Vu. The three nephews shook their heads together. Why does no one care about Ham Ham? Children are very sensitive. Ignoring her like this is too cruel. Mrs. Wind sorrowfully said, "Good Ham Ham, come to mom." But Ham Ham grabbed her rice bowl and smashed it on the floor. I won't let her eat with me. I don't want a sister. Those words reminded Tuck Bao of Lam Fong's terrifying face. When he also wouldn't let her eat, Tuck Bao was very scared. Unable to hold back, she cried. Now, old Mister, to suppress his anger, who allowed you to smash bowls on the table? Second son, how did you raise your child like this? If you don't want to eat, go downstairs and eat. Seeing him angry, Ham Ham looked at her mother, but to Tu Lam silently hugged Ham Ham, intending to leave. Unexpectedly, Ham Ham struggled and cried loudly. Angrily, to Tu Lam grabbed the back of Ham Ham's collar and dragged her upstairs. Ham Ham shrieked loudly. Mrs. Win shouted, "Tu Lam, what are you doing? Is it necessary to treat Ham Ham like this?" Saying so, she hugged Ham Ham into the room. Just then, Ham Ham's grandma video called. After hearing Mrs. Win recount what happened, 
Her grandma shouted what Ham Ham is being bullied I knew it. Before when Ham Ham was the only girl in the house. No matter what the Ta family pampered her like a princess. Now that there's that other child they don't indulge Ham Ham anymore. Hearing this Mrs. Wynn grew more irritated stop talking mother. But her mother-in-law scolded why can't I talk. Do you know in Nam Tan she was the one who pushed her aunt down the stairs causing a miscarriage. Those uncles of hers covered for her. It's an unforgivable sin clearly she was wrong. But they forced the Lam family into bankruptcy. Mrs. Wynn frowned what are you saying mother. Her mother said how can you not believe it. I'll send you the video. I'll hang up now not long after. Mrs. Wynn received a video. After watching she felt disgusted how could the Ta family bring that girl home. Tuck Bao's birthday came very quickly. She wore a pretty dress still hugging her old bunny rabbit. Led downstairs by Tanyat Tran. Behind the two brothers followed. But no one noticed another soul behind them. He leaned on the staircase railing. Smiling as he watched Tuck Bao luckily made it in time. Everyone was surprised she looked so pretty in that dress. The little girl is so adorable. Even cold master Tanyat Tran personally led her downstairs. She's really pampered. Upstairs Ham Ham's grandma exclaimed that dress is from top brand GYFY right. I heard they only made one in the country. If not for that brat the dress should have belonged to my Ham Ham. Seeing everyone pamper Tuck Bao Ham Ham turned to her mom mom I want that dress too. Mrs. Wynn sadly said mom will buy you another one later. But Ham Ham got upset again I want that one. Grandma said that one was originally mine. Mrs. Wynn decided to bring Ham Ham into the room to avoid contact. But Ham Ham suddenly rushed out wanting to go steal it for herself. Mrs. Wynn hurriedly called wait Ham Ham. In the garden Tuck Bao was happily feeding cake to Da Ha Van. Now Da Ha Van sat next to Tuck Bao on his father's orders. Coldly staring at the little girl. To Ha Van said without looking up from his book I want eat. You eat suddenly a voice called out Tuck Bao ignore him come here. I'll teach him a small lesson. Abruptly a small figure charged into the garden you wretch. Ham Ham rushed over and grabbed Tuck Bao's dress give me back my dress. Tuck Bao was jerked and stumbled. The cake in her hand fell onto the dress. The bewildered girl said this is the dress uncle gave me. Next Ham Ham slapped her heart across the face. Ham Ham shrieked it's mine mine. You stole my little woo. Stole my dress and hit me angrily Tuck Bao. Slapped Ham Ham back Ham Ham screamed loudly. She screamed you dare hit me. Then I will Ham Ham was about to advance and hit back when Da Ha Van hurriedly grabbed her wrist. He looked at Tuck Bao are you okay? Tuck Bao shook her head I am fine. Ham Ham sobbed pitifully. Her cries made everyone stop chatting. And look back to see what happened. How are the two families two princesses fighting? Tuck Bao pursed her lips eyes red but forcing herself not to cry she hit me first. Mrs. Wynn rushed over and hastily said how could Ham Ham hit someone? But Taha Van bluntly said auntie. Clearly Ham Ham hit first. Ask everyone hearing this Ham Ham cried louder. She's the one who hit me first. Tuck Bao stole my dress then hit me. Tuck Bao is a naughty child now people began gossiping. So Tuck Bao is wearing Ham Ham's dress. Just after arriving at the Ta house she stole someone else's dress. Could those online rumors all be true? Mrs. Wynn asked Nguyen Nhi tell me who hit first. Nguyen Nhi thought to herself that Tuck Bao didn't let her eat cake. Then she shouted loudly Tuck Bao hit Ham Ham first. Tu Ha Van looked at Nguyen Nhi say it again. Everyone believed Nguyen Nhi's words. Young master to don't blame her. She's only telling the truth. If this continues Miss Tuck will be spoiled. Whispers surrounded Tuck Bao. The girl bit her lip eyes red but forcing herself not to cry I didn't hit her. Uncle gave me this dress sister Ham Ham hit me first just now. Tuck Bao clearly did nothing wrong. So why were the adults blaming her? Was the adult and children's worlds different? Mrs. Wynn roared at Tuck Bao that's enough. It's clear you hit first what else? Just then old Mr. Tu and Tunyat Tran ran over. Tunyat Tran coldly asked Tuck Bao hit first. Did you personally witness that? Old Mr. To looked coldly at Mrs. Wen I believe Tuck Bao is not that kind of person. Whoever says Tuck Bao is wrong come out here and let me see. Old Mr. To was very restrained not reproaching Mrs. Wen in public. But Mrs. Wen felt he was excessively biased. She blurted without thinking we must look at this objectively. 
Ham Ham can be spoiled, but she never hits people. Old Mr. To was so angry he shook you don't even know when your own child hit someone. Her eyes are still red and swollen. What do you know you only know that ever since Tuck Bao arrived? You've all opposed Ham Ham. Ham Ham did nothing wrong to Nyat Tran softly said to the butler behind. Bring out the garden surveillance footage for everyone to see. Mrs. Wynn had a bad feeling. They're checking cameras too today they really want to make it hard for Ham Ham. The footage showed Ham Ham running to Tuck Bao's side, saying it's mine then slapping her hard across the face. So Miss Ham Ham struck first. But earlier Nguyen NHI said Tuck Bao hit first. Why is it reversed all eyes turned to Nguyen NHI? The girl's face turned bright red for the first time she knew what it meant to be speechless. She hid behind her mother sobbing loudly. Nguyen Nhi's mom awkwardly laughed kids often remember wrongly. Someone said Nguyen NHI isn't that young. How could she remember wrong she clearly lied on purpose. Mrs. Nguyen said elder brother Ham Ham is still young. Her pride is terribly hurt. But to Nyat Tran seemed impatient Ham Ham. Do you feel you did right? What should you say to your sister? Ham Ham glanced at Tuck Bao and silently nodded I was wrong. But she didn't want to speak seeing Ham Ham cry. Mrs. Wynn ached how can you scold a child in public like this? How can they bear it but to two lamb stopped Mrs. Wynn from speaking its best if you stay silent. Or ill ask for a divorce immediately. Tuck Bao looked a bit enviously at Ham Ham. She wasn't really malicious after all. She had her mother's love children loved by their mothers must be very happy. So why wasn't she happy? To why Tham stroked Ham Ham's head Ham Ham. Can you tell everyone why you hit Tuck Bao? Ham Ham sobbed I wanted that dress. If I didn't have a sister that dress would have been mine. Her grandma hurriedly said dear you just need to tell grandma what you want. It's only a dress. If Tuck Bao likes it let her have it. It's grandma's fault for not understanding. Doctor to had a headache whatever Tuck Bao wants should be given to her. Just then to Nyat Tran took out documents his assistant gave him here are the dress measurements. Everyone can see they perfectly match Tuck Bao's height and figure. Ham Ham is taller than Tuck Bao so she can't wear that dress. So the dress was originally meant for Tuck Bao. Unconsciously grandma looked at Mrs. Wynn. Mrs. Wynn angrily gritted her teeth. Everyone came to their senses that's right. Miss Ham Ham can't wear this dress. How could it have been hers? Mrs. Wynn was ashamed not knowing how to respond. She was furious inside I didn't say the dress was Ham Ham's. I only said Tuck Bao had it while Ham Ham didn't. The deeper reason was you biased people caused Ham Ham to react like this. But to Nyat Tran coldly said please look at page 2 of the contract. Here is the dress information for Ham Ham. Everyone's gazes towards Mrs. Wynn changed slightly. Children don't understand. Surely the adult said something to make the girl think the dress was hers. A sharpied person noticed Ham Ham's dress was even 50,000 more expensive than Tuck Bao's. It couldn't be called biased now. Not sure how the girl's mother taught her to become like this. Mrs. Wynn felt her face burn hot with shame. Dr. To stepped in front of Ham Ham and gently said Ham Ham do you understand now? You have your own dress too. If you want a dress like Tuck Bao's, uncle and I can have one custom made for you. Ham Ham stopped crying I understand now. The embarrassed girl apologized Tuck Bao I am sorry. Tuck Bao said it's okay sister. Now old Mr. Tuck told to Ha Van take Ham Ham home first. Then he scolded Ham Ham's grandma go home and reflect properly. The old woman kept defending herself it wasn't on purpose. I just love my granddaughter too much. Old Mr. To coldly said he didn't want to hear more. Tears brimming her eyes the shamed Mrs. Wynn led Ham Ham away let's stop talking mother let's go home. Even if Ham Ham was wrong. I as her mother should discipline her. What right do they have to interfere in how I raise my child? Ultimately the Tu family is still biased. Meanwhile outside the mansion gates. Lam Fong and Muk Tham were shouting noisily guard. You misunderstood were Tuck Bao's parents. We came for our daughter's birthday the guard said since they had no invitation he couldn't let them in. Lam Fong took out his ID look I really am Tuck Bao's father Lam Fong. Just then although very irritated. Mrs. Wynn suppressed it when she noticed. People at the gate. Her eyes lit up that was Lam Fong Tuck Bao's biological father. Ham Ham was tormented to this extent how could Tuck Bao be happy. Today she had to let everyone see Tuck Bao's true colors. 
She told the guard to let them in the guard hesitated ma'am. I should inform the master first Mrs. Wen frowned why wasn't my order obeyed. This is the first time many people celebrated Tuck Bao's birthday. The girl couldn't help feeling happy the earlier tension seemed to vanish. Old Mrs. To gently said make a wish Tuck Bao. Tuck Bao put her hands together closed her eyes and prayed sincerely I hope mom in heaven is always happy. I also hope to see mom again. I hope grandma stays healthy. I hope my uncle's businesses thrive. She prayed for everyone. Forgetting herself then she opened her eyes. Happily to Wai Tham carried Tuck Bao to blow out the candles. Tuck Bao took a deep breath. Her cheeks puffed out like a blowfish. With one blow the candle went out everyone clapped congratulating Tuck Bao's birthday. Suddenly a loud voice called out wishing Tuck Bao a happy birthday. Dad came late Lam Fong and Muk Tham rushed into the garden. Stepmom and dad brought presents for Tuck Bao. Seeing the two the smile disappeared from Tuck Bao's face. The corners of her mouth twitched old mister to frown. And roared who allowed you in here. Get out but Lam Fong and Muk Tham knelt down. Lam Fong regretted it was all dad's fault before. I paid too little attention to you that day because of my unborn younger brother's death I was busy. And didn't have time to spend with you I didn't hit you. Right Muk Tham gently said dear. About you causing your brother's death by coming back. Mom doesn't blame you Tuck Bao pursed her lips. And bravely argued dad you're lying. You hit me before too. You always hit me Lam Fong ground his teeth I am your father. That was just discipline everyone looked at the Da family. Then at Lam Fong and Muk Tham. They quickly realized these were the real dad and stepmom from the online rumors. They came to make trouble on purpose. Knowing it was their daughter's birthday but intentionally choosing this timing. Others said they couldn't blame him. His unborn child was killed. In anger he couldn't control his hands. People could empathize everyone here only heard Lam Fong hit Tuck Bao. Not knowing how bad the situation was then. So they felt they could understand. Hot tempered to Thang Nhi ground his teeth. Elder brother why not kick them out? Must we wait until Tet but to Nyat Tran raised his hand to stop him kicking them out as letting them get their way. Originally we planned to handle it after Tuck Bao's party. Didn't expect they'd put their heads in the noose themselves. Putting his hand in his pocket he stepped in front of Muk Tham. An imposing aura about him you said Tuck Bao caused your miscarriage right. Do you know the Lam house had surveillance cameras then? Muk Tham lowered her head in panic what is Mr. to saying. I don't understand a thing just then little Wu flew over to land on Tuck Bao's arm. To Nyat Tran glanced at it. He said Tuck Bao bring little Wu here. Tuck Bao obeyed hugging little Wu over. She still gently comforted it don't be scared uncle want eat you. The coldness on to Nyat Tran's face softened slightly. He said say it all again what you heard that day. Little Wu flapped its wings then mimicked Muk Tham's tone Tuck Bao. Stepmom doesn't have a baby in her belly anymore. Do you know you have to take responsibility? If your uncles ask you like this, you'll have to admit it's your fault. Do you understand Muk Tham's face paled? This wretched bird actually remembers everything I said that day. Everyone was also shocked little Wu's tone and intonation were exactly like Muk Tham's. Where did it learn this or was there more to Muk Tham's miscarriage? After the truth was exposed, the eight two uncles brought out evidence, immediately exposing Tuck Bao's foster parents. Seeing everyone's doubtful gazes, Muk Tham's eyes turned red Mr. Tu. Just based on a parrot you doubt me. I harmed my own daughter Tuck Bao. What benefit is there confidently to Nyat Tran said nice acting. Do you want me to help remind you what happened that day? The butler immediately projected the USB contents onto the screen. The video showed the pregnant Muk Tham and Tuck Bao hugging a bunny. Standing half a meter from the stairs. Tuck Bao wore a dirty dress. Listening to stepmom and standing still. Suddenly Muk Tham fell backwards. Sliding down the stairs herself the video clearly showed Tuck Bao did not touch Muk Tham at all. Muk Tham was stunned the Lam house had no cameras. Where did this video come from Lam Fong was even more shocked than everyone. He asked didn't you say Tuck Bao pushed you what's going on. Muk Tham awkwardly said I don't know. I don't remember anything. To Nyat Tran took the documents from the butler. And threw them at Lam Fong's face this is the notice of a doctor being fined for falsifying medical records to help her. She had planned to miscarry all along. The supposed heavy bleeding during surgery was fake. 
Remember yet no matter how Muk Tham defended herself it was useless now. She collapsed to the ground Lam Fong's eyes turned bloodshot Muk Tham. You wanted to leave me long ago right? Seeing the Lam house in trouble. You were afraid having a child would make it hard to find a place. So you asked Tuck Bao to help you miscarry. Muk Tham still denied it vehemently. Lam Fong was angry but had an idea Tuck Bao. It's all dad's fault. Dad was deceived by those he trusted most. It's because I was deceived that led to so many misunderstandings. Dad will make up for it later. Tunyat Tran raised his hand to signal. He said and you beating Tuck Bao to that extent is also called a misunderstanding. The butler continued projecting more documents onto the screen. They were Tuck Bao's emergency room records. It clearly stated respiratory arrest shock. Fractured left third fourth sixth and seventh ribs. Broken right arm and wrist bones. Broken left foot bone bones permanently damaged. Frostbite necrosis amputated big toe and three centimeters of skin and flesh. Next was a video shot secretly by a neighbor. Tuck Bao wearing a dress knelt in the snow. Lam Fong beat her with a cane. Just a few lines of medical records showed how badly Tuck Bao was beaten. Everyone looked furious at Lam Fong you call this discipline. Clearly it's beating your child to death. He still dares to call himself a father. Making a child kneel in freezing snow like that. He's not human but a monster. Tunyat Tran signaled for the butler to continue. He projected an arrest warrant with the Lam Company seal the Lam Company was found smuggling massive goods a year ago. Now we have evidence and officially issued this warrant yesterday. So the Lam family was not revenged by the Ta family but brought about their own downfall. Everyone discussed animatedly again. Those fake online rumors were also spread by them. Such shameless people don't deserve to live. We need to call the police and arrest them. Hearing call the police Lam Fong panicked. He said Tuck Bao is still my biological child. Without me she wouldn't exist in this world. The Ta family forgot their life-saving grace. Tunyat Tran looked down at Lam Fong and coldly said in fact Tuck Bao isn't your biological child. Here are the DNA test results. Lam Fong's mind buzzed his only way out was also blocked. How could she not be my biological child? I raised her for three years yet she treats me like this when I've hit rock bottom. I have to make Tuck Bao die with me. So you'll regret this secret forever saying so Lam Fong rushed at Tuck Bao. But before he got there to Nyat Tran kicked him very hard. Sending him rolling away the police immediately escorted Lam Fong onto the car. Lam Fong regretted endlessly if not for Muk Tham I wouldn't have hit Tuck Bao that day. How did things come to this thinking hard Lam Fong's eyes turned bloodshot. He suddenly kicked Muk Tham's back catching her completely off guard. Her head hit the car door hard she let out a miserable shriek then collapsed. Blood flowing from her head Muk Tham died violently. Her soul left her body. Her expression dazed but she reacted again. She realized she had died Muk Tham screamed I was kicked to death. No I still have to cling to a rich man. How can I die so horribly? Old Mrs. to hugged Tuck Bao let's go home child. Everyone sympathizes with you now. All the truths have been revealed. Thinking back on their negative thoughts about you before. They all feel regretful the girl asked grandma is sympathizing with Tuck Bao right. It's okay grandma Tuck Bao is fine. Tuck Bao smiled brightly. Though the most gravely hurt she comforted others first. Tears brimmed old Mrs. Tu's eyes Tuck Bao still hugged her stuffed bunny. Patting its head why are you crying grandma don't cry anymore. Old Mrs. Tu suppressed her tears and replied okay. Tu Nyat Tran stepped forward and asked Tuck Bao are you sad today. Tuck Bao shook her head I am not sad. Dad was the one who did wrong not me. Dad should be the sad one to Nyat Tran's heart softened. He patted Tuck Bao's head you're very right. Tuck Bao was blameless no one was still in the mood for her birthday party anymore. To why Tham raised his glass and politely smiled let's stop the party for today. Thank you everyone for attending. Once again thank you all. From today on Tuck Bao will take the to surname. With the name to Tu Tuck we of the to family will not let Tu Tuck suffer any more grievances. Everyone hurriedly said in unison Mr. Tu is too kind. Were very honored to attend this party. Then they slowly left on the way. They still couldn't help but whisper that with the eight to uncle's protection. It must be said Tuck Bao was truly blessed. She was like a real little princess. 
Nguyen Nhi tugged her mom's sleeve recalling Tuck Bao's dazzling brilliance in that dress. She was envious but mostly jealous. Suddenly Nguyen Nhi's mom noticed some people hadn't left yet. She heard the old master painter say he was looking for a young disciple. Hearing this her eyes lit up the old master was a famous painting master. He was usually very aloof and rarely appeared. Today he announced had take a young disciple. If Nguyen Nhi was chosen, she could hold her head high for a whole year. She pulled Nguyen Nhi closer to the old master painter. Pretending to chat with him the old master smiled slyly a child who uses vibrant colors. With a rich imagination to paint. This is the most outstanding young talent I've encountered in over 10 years. Hearing this Nguyen Nhi's mom was delighted inside. Sure enough he was talking about Nguyen Nhi. The old master even came himself. It was too apologetic Nguyen Nhi noticed her mom's joy. And also felt excited the girl wanted to show off before the venerable old man. Greetings respected sir my name is Lam Nguyen Nhi I really like your paintings. You're truly venerable the old master painter only glanced at the girl thank you child. He was very happy indeed the old man had noticed her. Just as Nguyen Nhi was about to say something doctor to lead Tuck Bao over. The old master turned around ah doctor to is here. Doctor to nodded venerable sir. This is Tuck Bao Tuck Bao bowed very politely my name is Tuck Bao. The old master painter was stunned then burst out laughing awe. Little Tuck Bao how old are you? Tuck Bao hesitated a bit glancing at him I just had my fourth birthday so of course I am four. The old master painter felt like he was felled by a sweet candy. What was going on even the venerable master was stunned. Tuck Bao smiled it's alright sir. I sometimes act a bit older too. Nguyen Nhi's mom standing beside grew even more jealous inside. To why Tham said dad and brothers are waiting in the room let's go in and talk. Nguyen Nhi was stunned you're not accepting me. The girl anxiously tugged his sleeve sir sir what about me. The old master looked at her in surprise. He smiled you're very well behaved too. Just wait here then the old master left with Tuck Bao's family. Nguyen Nhi's mom was furious inside but didn't dare show it. After all the Tuck clan was too powerful but the old master wasn't an ordinary person. He couldn't be bribed with money. She comforted Nguyen Nhi mom and child let's wait a bit. In the second floor living room of the mansion. Old Mr. To told Tuck Bao he's the greatest master in our country's painting circle. Tuck Bao bowed again greetings master. The old master really liked well behaved children. He asked can you tell master about these paintings. Mentioning paintings made Tuck Bao's face light up. She nodded then concentrated on describing the fantasy world in her paintings. The old master and Tuck Bao bent their heads looking at the paintings engrossed. The old man occasionally laughed. Seeing this to Nyat Tran's expression softened. Finally Tuck Bao had a friend too. Although an old friend it was still good. Meanwhile to Tu Lam scolded his wife you let Lam Fong in right. How long more will you stir up trouble? The taciturn to Tu Lam just let Mrs. Win complain by herself I do it all for the children. Why don't you protect your own daughter? Do you know how pitiful Ham Ham is? To Tu Lam coldly threw the divorce papers on the table then left. Saying let's split up Mrs. Wynn was stunned what are you saying? But to Tu Lam had left Mrs. Wynn firmly refused the divorce. On this side it was 11 pm now. Tuck Bao was very happy to have found a good friend. Though their ages greatly differed she acknowledged him as a friend. As grandpa said old friends go slowly. Tuck Bao waved goodbye the old master painter also waved to her. Unexpectedly this trip also netted him such an intelligent disciple. The old master happily kept flipping through Tuck Bao's photos on his phone on the way home. At this time two people were waiting by the roadside. He stopped the car and politely asked who they were. Excited Nguyen Nhi said Sir I am Lam Nguyen Nhi. The top ranked in the National Children's Painting Group before. But the old master painter didn't know who Lam Nguyen Nhi was at all. Nguyen Nhi was stunned how could you not remember me? Didn't you come to accept me as a disciple? The old master got in his car and said sorry. I've accepted a disciple already to family's Tuck Bao. You must know the girl too before Nguyen Nhi could react his car sped off. Nguyen Nhi's mom thought the old master chose Tuck Bao for money. After sending off the old master Tuck Bao returned to her room. Bathed clean and wore soft pink pajamas. Making her look even more adorable. 
Old Mrs. To looked at the obedient, pitiful child. Gently she said, If anything, remember to press the bell by the bed. Tuck Bao obediently nodded and bid her good night. After Old Mrs. To left, little Wu flew over. Angry at the old man in the living room for stealing his little disciple. Little Wu said, Tuck Bao Master will open your celestial eye today. After opening it, you'll be able to see Master. You know, magic cultivating can shoot out a fireball. But Tuck Bao turned away, I won't learn it. I want to learn painting from the old master. That's what children should do. Dejected little Wu flew away, you think children should do what? Tuck Bao sat up and counted on her fingers, eat. Sleep, draw, play with little Wu. So now it's time for little Tuck Bao to sleep. The corner of little Wu's mouth twitched. If not for my promise to Tukam Nok, I wouldn't have to beg this child like this. Little Wu went next to the bed. But Tuck Bao had turned over already. Ignoring him, little Wu said, You forgot what your mom said when playing slide with you in the sky. She told you to follow master and study hard, right? Studying hard, you can meet mom more often. Tuck Bao frowned, The one playing slide with me that day was a person, not mom. Mom left right after hugging me. Little Wu was stunned, How do you know? Oh, I revealed my huge feet. Mom's feet weren't that big. Little Wu wilted, He didn't expect to make such a silly mistake. Just when he thought Tuck Bao was difficult to teach, she suddenly asked, But can I really meet mom again if I study hard? Little Wu was motivated again, of course. Tuck Bao sat up straight, gripping the blanket tightly. A serious expression, okay then. Ill study with you, master little Wu. Little Wu was a bit surprised but also happy. He thought for a bit, then said, Ill open your celestial eye first. The celestial eye is the human's third eye. Opening the celestial eye, you can see what normal people can't. Little Wu made up a whole spiel, but Tuck Bao still couldn't see him. So, just opening the celestial eye will let you see Master. Hearing this, Tuck Bao hurriedly wrapped herself tightly in the blanket. Tuck Bao didn't want to open her celestial eye. She didn't want to have three eyes. Shed look hideous like the door god. If the door god heard this, he'd surely go crazy. The celestial eye won't appear obviously, it's hidden in your eyes only. So don't worry Tuck Bao breathed a sigh of relief that's good then. Little Wu continued let's recite the magic spell together concentrate your spirit on your eyes. Tuck Bao recited it once with him then opened her eyes wide. She asked why do I still not see anything. Little Wu floated around digging his ear opening the celestial eye isn't easy. The most talented person I've met. Took 49 days. Having said that he put a finger to his nose and sniffed. Tuck Bao blinked Master why are you sniffing? Little Wu chuckled Master didn't pick his nose. How would I know you succeeded? In opening your celestial eye. He was extremely shocked just reciting it once was successful. Your talent isn't outstanding but monstrous. Tuck Bao opened her eyes wide and looked around the room. An old woman was staring at her by the window. She pointed Master who's that? Little Wu's eyes lit up amazing this time I've recruited an extraordinary disciple. Tuck Bao let me see how much ability you have. Let's capture that female ghost. The old woman angrily said you can criticize my hideousness. But you can't insult my beauty she shrieked and rushed over. Little Wu said well done Tuck Bao recite torment wretched spirit with master. Tuck Bao recited along the old woman said I am just passing by I didn't expect you to use me for your teaching demonstration. Outrageous little Wu looked down at Tuck Bao. Thinking he had really struck gold this time. His hand suddenly produced a tiny porcelain vase, which he hung on Tuck Bao's wrist with a red string. He said well done Tuck Bao this is a soul vase for you. Later you can use it to help master catch ghosts. Tuck Bao looked at the vase and asked why is master talking about ghosts. But little Wu answered very perfunctorily children should nt ask so much. Tuck Bao pouted auntie auntie. Who are you why can't you pass on? The old woman said in a hopeless tone I am Li Mai. The construction worker for your second uncle before. This is punishment for the bad thing I did. Tuck Bao was curious what bad thing did you do to second uncle. For some reason the old woman's mouth uncontrollably said six years ago. Your second uncle's wife told me to put salt in his tea for $200,000. I did it but right after taking the money. A concrete slab fell from above and crushed me to death. Tuck Bao asked why did second uncle's wife tell you to put salt in his tea. Little Wu frowned ugly old woman. It's bedtime children should nt ask so much. Saying so he stuffed the old woman into the little vase. 
The red string on Tuck Bao's wrist flashed weakly, then disappeared. Looking at the vase, Tuck Bao said goodnight, Auntie, inside. The next morning, everyone woke up to find Tuck Bao stuck in the urn. Dunyat Tran quickly said, Let me call 119. Tuck Bao was startled in her eyes. The firefighters were like superheroes saving the world. They were her idols, how could she let them see her in this silly state? She immediately protested, Don't call them. Tuck Bao can get out herself. Cousin, wait for me a bit. She took a deep breath, then forcefully hit her head hard against the urn, hurting a little. Downstairs, the two brothers worriedly discussed how to safely pull Tuck Bao out. Not far behind, Mrs. Wynn coldly observed. She saw the two family react quickly, all showing deep concern for Tuck Bao. Mrs. Wynn felt irritated again. Just stuck on the second floor, yet they're so panicked. At this time, little Wu leaned on the railing. And nonchalantly looked at Tuck Bao Tuck Bao Tuck Bao. You have master's red thread. Just break the railing and you're done. Tuck Bao said, Don't fool Tuck Bao. How could Tuck Bao break the railing? Little Wu replied, How do you know without trying? While everyone was panicking, no one noticed Tuck Bao's tiny hands gripping the railing tightly, using all her strength to bend the iron railing instantly. Her head shrank and easily slipped out. The Ta family was startled. They looked at the twisted railing extremely shocked. Tu Nyat Tran calmly shielded Tuck Bao, not letting Mrs. Wynn see. Mrs. Wynn was suspicious why hide like a thief from me. I don't want to look at her after Mrs. Wynn left. Tu Viet Phi asked, Did you bend it, Tuck Bao? Tuck Bao nodded to Viet Phi and the brothers. Looked at each other with serious expressions, this can't be told to anyone. Later, Tuck Bao must not show her strength before others. Understand, Tuck Bao nodded, looking a bit dazed. Suddenly, to Thang Nhi rushed over, holding large pliers for him to come rescue her. But Tuck Bao said no need. She had gotten out already seeing the bent railing. To Thang Nhi froze to Nyat Tran whispered, Go cut all the railings. Don't let others know Tuck Bao is this strong. To Thang Nhi replied, Then bring Tuck Bao to the construction site with you. Tuck Bao nodded eagerly, Okay, okay. But too, too, to lack objected construction sites are dangerous outsiders can enter. Everyone discussed, indeed, children are still children. Tu Thang Nhi was like a rough man. But Tuck Bao was the sweetest. Tu Thang Nhi said, I'll take you flying. Tuck Bao changed into a tiny strapped dress and followed him. Wearing an adorable cat shaped backpack, Tuck Bao happily went downstairs only to meet Mrs. Wynn coming up. The girl greeted, Good morning, Auntie, too. Seeing Tuck Bao greet her Mrs. Wynn just HM Med. Tuck Bao secretly observed her aunt. Suddenly she noticed a black smoke on Mrs. Wynn's face. She asked, Why does Auntie Too have that on her face? Little Wu explained while floating around, That's deathly energy. You just opened your celestial eye yesterday, so you can see it now. Only people who have killed and were with the dead as they passed have this deathly energy. Hearing killed Tuck Bao startled. Just then, her cousin downstairs called her to come down. Since he was an architect who liked being at construction sites, he brought Tuck Bao along. Arriving, Tuck Bao saw the building under construction and praised the stadium as so pretty. She said it's the giant clock of the sky god that fell and shattered. To Tu Lam was stunned, then happily looked at Tuck Bao. That's the design concept I've had all this time. The inspiration is a giant mechanical clock. Tuck Bao turned and asked Cousin Tu was the designer. Amazing beside her little Wu yawned loudly. He said let me teach you how to deal with ghosts. Little Wu took the old woman out of the vase. And drew a charm on her forehead with two fingers. He explained this is called a labor charm. Drawing it on a ghost will make them obey you but the old woman objected forcing ghosts to work in broad daylight is too much. This isn't work but killing me. Normally ghosts can't appear in daylight. Except fierce ghosts, but they can only hide in dark places. Only evil spirits can walk around outside. A hideous thing like me can't. Once the car door opens, it'll vanish instantly. Please stop calling me hideous, so now Master will teach you soul transference. Simply letting the old woman possess some object. Helping her move around in daylight. Little Wu said, Tuck Bao, find something light. That can fly in the wind. The parrot unconsciously looked at Little Wu. Tuck Bao also looked at it mumbling light and can fly. The parrot seemed to sense it. And said don't pluck my feathers. Tuck Bao quickly reassured want pluck want pluck. Suddenly Tuck Bao's eyes lit up and she picked up. A plastic bag of bird droppings. 
The old woman panicked. Don't tell me you plan to make me possess this bag of bird poop. But Tuck Bao shook the bag. Don't be afraid. Inside the bag is just a pile of bird droppings. It's not dirty at all. Tuck Bao will line it with tissue for you. The old woman's mouth twitched. You must be joking. Heavens, I am dead now. I have to get into bags of bird poop. To Tu Lam thought Tuck Bao meant the plastic bag was ugly, so he also mumbled, "Kids are truly sincere." Little Wu said, "Soul transference is a bit difficult. Not as simple as opening the celestial eye. Here, Tuck Bao, you try first. If not, then never mind." Tuck Bao nodded. She mumbled a string of words, then pointed at the old woman. The old woman got sucked into the plastic bag. Little Wu asked Tuck Bao, "Do you remember the incantation?" Tuck Bao tilted her head, frowning. She held up her hand, counted, and mumbled. Seeing this, little Wu couldn't help but laugh. He said, "It's okay if you don't remember it all." Before he finished speaking, the old woman flew out of the bag already. Tuck Bao blinked, not understanding how the old woman escaped. Tuck Bao realized she had recited it backwards earlier. Little Wu was totally shocked. Tuck Bao succeeded on her first try. She even succeeded with the reverse effect. This child was extraordinary. At this time, the car stopped, and Tu Lam got out with Tuck Bao. Suddenly, a gust of wind blew the bag flying away, fluttering. Tuck Bao seemed to want to reach out and grab it. Tu Tu Lam said, "It's okay. There's a janitor here. Who will pick it up for you?" But Tuck Bao held his hand worriedly. But I haven't taken the bird droppings out for the old lady yet. Elsewhere, Mrs. Win and her mom were having morning tea. Looking gloomy, she recounted to Tu Lam asking for divorce last night. And said she taught Ham Ham poorly. She also said she felt Tu Tu Lam had found out about their wrongdoing in putting poison in his tea long ago. Mrs. Win's mom pulled her daughter's hand to stand up. So what if he knows? Li Mai disappeared many years ago. How could he find any clues? Mom led her to see Tu Tu Lam at the construction site. Arriving, Mrs. Win suddenly saw a plastic bag flying around the open yard. For some reason, her heart thumped loudly. Suddenly, the bag stopped swirling, and she felt it was staring right at her. The hair on her neck stood on end. Suddenly, a strong gust blew, sending the bag flying straight into Mrs. Wynn's face. Her nose smelled a rotten stench. Something was smeared all over Mrs. Wynn's face. Panicked, she fell forward, the plastic bag nearly smothering her mouth and nose. Luckily, a hand quickly yanked the bag away. Both Mrs. Wynn and her mom shuddered. Her face pale, she ran desperately into Tu Tu Lam's office. Tu Tu Lam was looking at blueprints when Mrs. Win hugged him tightly, wanting to throw herself into his arms. Tu Tu Lam frowned. He took two steps back. Mrs. Win tried to hug him, but was avoided, so she fell forward onto the floor. She quickly covered her nose and stood up angrily. What are you doing, Tu Tu Lam? Mrs. Win's mom quickly asked, "I am your wife. Why are you letting your wife cry like this?" To Tu Lam coldly said, "Don't cling to me anymore. If there's nothing, just go back and don't disturb the workers." The guards dragged Mrs. Win and her mom outside without asking. Dragged outside, Mrs. Win was very annoyed, but she suddenly saw Li Mei's horrified expression in the painting Tuck Bao just did. Li Mei died years ago. How did Tuck Bao know her face? Tuck Bao sat properly on the chair. She asked Little Wu, "How come Auntie Tu is like that?" Little Wu shook his head. Can't be saved anymore. The deathly energy on her face grew heavier after being hit by the bag. Tuck Bao glanced over. There was no poop. Just a little stinky. Mrs. Win angrily thought there must have been poop in that bag. To Tu Lam coldly said, "If there's nothing else, please leave and stop disturbing the workers." Dragged outside, Mrs. Win felt extremely annoyed. She worried about Tuck Bao's painting and her knowing about Li Mei's affairs. She told her mom to go first, while she snuck to the bronze statue in the construction site, looked around, and saw everything was normal. She finally breathed a sigh of relief, but before she could turn her head, she heard someone call her name. Mrs. Win ran desperately. A woman was chased by a plastic bag of bird droppings, scaring her out of her wits. Tuck Bao leaned on the tea room window upstairs, tilting her head, looking at the open yard that looks like Auntie Tu Xiao Wu. The parrot also tilted its head. Yeah, looks super dumb. Tuck Bao corrected. Anti two, not dumb. Xiao Wu tilted its head. Anti two plus anti two equals dumb. Behind the two girls, they exclaimed, "So cute!" She's calculating with a bird. Whose child is this? I just left for a bit. How did a child get into the office? 
She's teacher to's child, right? They pointed to the tea room. Where to two lamb was busy making milk, he carefully watched the measuring lines on the cup like a scientist. Suddenly, a plastic bag stuck to the outside window, making Tuck Bao jump in fright. She exclaimed, "Ugly auntie, you're back!" The old woman nearly cried, "I am so pitiful, making me stay under this scorching sun. I am about to be evaporated away." Little Wu boredly sunbathed beside her. Don't worry, Your Excellency won't let you die. Even sunbathing, you can't die. But Tuck Bao said, "Don't pretend, Master. Pretending will get struck by lightning." Just as Little Wu was about to say something, a bolt of lightning suddenly flashed across the clear sky. Seeing this, Little Wu's heart jumped. How coincidentally ominous! Tuck Bao put her hand on the window. The old woman instantly vanished into the soul vase. At this time, Tu Tu Lam brought the prepared milk to Tuck Bao. She thanked him, then took a sip. Tu Tu Lam had two children, but was rarely with them. He admitted he wasn't a good father. Now he suddenly felt regretful. He patted Tuck Bao's head and asked her opinion. Should cousin Tu divorce Auntie Tu? Tuck Bao looked up at him. Why do people get married then divorce? I don't understand why adults choose each other then separate. Why not just not marry in the end? Caught off guard by the question, Tu Tu Lam hesitated before answering because back then Auntie Tu was already pregnant with an Tu Tik. So cousin and I got married then, but sadly I found out later that I was initially drugged, which made me delirious and crossed the line with her. Tuck Bao scrunched her face, feeling the story was getting more confusing. Then how come an Tu Tik was in Auntie Tu's tummy? Did you like Auntie Tu? Tu Tu Lam shook his head. I didn't like her. He kept his cute little face serious. I didn't like Auntie Tu, but she still gave birth to an Tu Tik for me. So were you the despicable man that people talk about? Tu Tu Lam gaped, not knowing how to respond. Tuck Bao comforted its okay cousin. I understand. Tu Tu Lam's eyes bulged. Understand what? Just as he was about to continue, his younger brother to thank N H I cut in Tuck Bao. Are you bored yet? Cousin Five will take you around the construction site. Tu Tu Lam objected. Construction sites are very dangerous. Outsiders can't enter. But Thang N H I said, "Don't care." Tuck Bao isn't an outsider. She's my junior supervisor. He asked, "No." That Tuck Bao nodded. That's right. I am no outsider. Without waiting for Tu Tu Lam, the two left already. Suddenly, Tuck Bao pointed to the statue at the square's center. Cousin, what's that? Seems like Andy Tu played here earlier. Tu Thang N H I looked over. That's the phoenix symbol statue. It was designed by your cousin too. Beside her, little Wu told Tuck Bao that something was hidden inside the statue. He told her to ask cousin Five if he had a big hammer to break it open and see. Tuck Bao pouted and asked cousin, "Do you have a super giant enormous hammer?" Let me see. Thang N H I laughed and said, "If it comes to all kinds of tools, no one can beat you. You have up to four thousand hammers." Seeing they kept walking and not turning back, little Wu called out, "What are you two doing?" Tuck Bao didn't turn around, just looking at hammers. Little Wu flew over and guided Tuck Bao. Tuck Bao, take that hammer, and hit the bronze statue. Tu Thang N H I saw Tuck Bao pick up a huge hammer. He asked, "You like this one? This is for demolishing walls." Very powerful. Tuck Bao was eager to try. Tu Thang N H I suddenly remembered the little girl's terrifying strength the other day, but still said, "Cousin, we'll let you borrow the hammer to play a bit." Right after Tuck Bao's shout rang out as she swung the hammer hard, striking the bronze statue once. She shouted and struck loudly. A huge sound came from inside the statue. Then dust filled the air. Tu Thang N H I stood stunned, watching a four-year-old girl swinging a giant hammer hitting a statue. When the dust settled inside the statue, was revealed a white bony hand tightly gripping a bundle wrapped in old newspaper. Tu Tu Lam immediately hugged Tuck Bao tightly. Covering her eyes, to thank N H I said, "Brother, too, take Tuck Bao home first." But Tuck Bao said, "I am not done. I am not going home." To thank N H I interrupted, Tuck Bao, "Be good. This isn't a place for children to play. Go home and play with Grandma. Cousin two and five have some things to deal with. Remember, if the police ask, say Cousin five accidentally damaged the statue." Tuck Bao blankly said, "Why lie to the police, Cousin? Uncle Policeman isn't a bad person." To Tu Lam was at a loss, not knowing how to respond. Only saying "do" as cousin Tu says. Tuck Bao nodded. Okay, go home. She secretly asked little Wu, "Why must we lie to Uncle Policeman? The police aren't bad people. 
Little Wu floated around holding something, flipping it over. Police aren't bad people, but can't rule out bad people inquiring about you. Think about it. If others knew you have such tremendous strength, they'd dissect you for research. Hearing this, Tuck Bao fearfully looked at the apple in Grandma's hand. Tuck Bao quickly raised her hand. Tuck Bao doesn't want to be cut into pieces. When Grandma handed her a pre-sliced apple, Tuck Bao suddenly said she didn't want to be cut into pieces anymore. Grandma quickly reassured her want cut, eat it whole, okay. Until Grandma passed the apple over, did Tuck Bao understand she meant the apple, not cutting her? Seeing the girl's blank expression. Little Wu chuckled softly. He lifted his hand, pulling the old woman from the soul vase, and asked why her hand was inside the statue. The old woman sighed. The day I was crushed to death, my hand was smashed. Regrettably, I hadn't been properly buried yet, because without this hand, I feared my soul couldn't reincarnate. So all this time, I've wandered. Little Wu looked at the notebook and continued asking if she knew the salt Mrs. Wen asked her to put into two lambs' tea wasn't regular salt. The old woman was silent, seeming to guess Mrs. Wen's intention was to deliberately get pregnant by Tu Tu Lam to more easily become a Tu family member. Little Wu coldly laughed. Good and evil have karmic retribution. Exactly because you did something against your conscience, you fell into this situation. But don't worry. When the police find Mrs. Wen's fingerprints on that money packet, Shelby finished beside him. Tuck Bao was focused on eating her apple. Grandma happily said, "Eat slower." I'll go to the kitchen to get lotus seed and rose petal soup for you. Tuck Bao obediently thanked her. When no adults were around, Tuck Bao suddenly stuffed an apple slice into Xiao Wu's mouth. She said, "Eat this." Xiao Wu farted out, "Okay." Xiao Wu spat the apple out, so stinky, so stinky. While laughing happily, a cold voice suddenly rang out—a little girl speaking nonsense about poop. What will others think? Mrs. Wen had just returned in a terrible mood. Her hateful eyes. This child was making her relationship with Tu Tu Lam worse. Tuck Bao called Auntie Tu. Mrs. Wen frowned. Don't call me Auntie Tu. Having a child like you in the house is so unlucky. Tuck Bao thought of Grandma often calling her a black comet. People who meet you will have bad luck. Others' misfortune is due to their own karma. Not related to me at all. In the past, whenever you Grandpa or Dad met misfortune. Your shadow would fall hearing this. Mrs. Wen got angry. How dare you talk to adults like that? I will discipline you for your own good. But Tuck Bao said, "Auntie Tu does it for your own interest, not mine." Mrs. Wen was enraged at being talked back to by the girl. She suddenly remembered today was the tenth. Grandpa and Grandma were at the nursing home. This was a good chance to punish the girl. Mrs. Wen came close to Tuck Bao. Come here. But Tuck Bao shook her head fearfully, seeing Mrs. Wen enveloped in deathly energy, and ran away with Xiao Wu. Mrs. Wen was surprised the girl dared run. She snapped, "Stop!" Tuck Bao, Tuck Bao ran while saying, "Whoever stops is a fool." In the kitchen, Grandma Tu was bringing out rose petal egg drop soup when a maid said, "Let me do these things." But Mrs. Tu shook her head. Tuck Bao rarely visits. I want to make this with my own hands for her. Just then, a small figure rushed in. Mrs. Wen's threatening voice rang from behind. Tuck Bao, you can't escape. Her tone made Mrs. Tu's expression freeze. As soon as Mrs. Wen entered the kitchen, she saw Mrs. Tu looking at her with icy eyes. Mrs. Tu said, "I saw a crying, pleading four-year-old asking for help, sister, but you didn't comfort her and told her to cry more. That's very disappointing." Mrs. Wen awkwardly said, "Mom's here." Mrs. Wen quickly explained it was because Tuck Bao threw apple peels around, so she disciplined her. But the girl didn't listen, and even talked back. So she chased her here. Tuck Bao immediately denied ever talking back to adults. Mrs. Tu angrily threw her gloves at Mrs. Wen's face. Do you think I'd believe you? You even dare bully Tuck Bao right before me? Get out from today on. The Tu family no longer has a daughter-in-law like you. Mrs. Wen's eyes turned red as she gritted her teeth. Keep spoiling her, then you'll regret it. She left angrily. Mrs. Wen muttered, "That sly little thing." Knowing mom's in the kitchen, yet deliberately provoking me, then running in there at her age, yet so vicious already. Mrs. To watched Mrs. Wen's retreating figure. She was also very angry, not disciplining her own child, yet dares to discipline others. Tuck Bao patted grandma's hand. Grandma, don't be angry. Just then, Ham Ham's cries rang out from the villa. She told Tuck Bao, "Eat first, Tuck Bao. I'll go see if your auntie too is consoling Ham Ham." But the more she thought about it, the more worried she got that Mrs. Tu really fired her. 
So she told Ham Ham to go massage and soothe Grandma's mood in case she chased mother and daughter away. Just then, Mrs. To led a maid pushing a wheelchair to Ham Ham's room. Mrs. To glanced coldly at the girl, perhaps because her hair was still messy, but that Ham Ham often used crying to resolve everything. Mrs. To told the maid to bring a basin and make Ham Ham cry until the basin was filled with tears before stopping. Ham Ham was already trembling in fear, but hearing her mom defend her, "What are you doing?" Mrs. Win cried, "You're scaring my child!" Ham Ham wailed loudly again. Mrs. To coldly said, "Don't call me mom. Get out!" Not giving Mrs. Win a chance to react, she ordered the guards to pack her things. Mrs. Win was stunned as the guards dragged her out. After being chased out, Ham Ham was so scared she stopped crying. But the enraged Mrs. To ordered her to keep crying. Today you must cry a whole basin full. Don't stop. I am more stubborn than you. I don't believe your crying habit can't be cured. Ham Ham was truly terrified. Indeed, the girl wailed again. Tears streamed down her face like rain, pitter pattering into the basin as she cried. Ham Ham said, "Granny, I can't cry a whole basin. I am very thirsty. I want water." Maid Go wanted to laugh but held it in. She said, "Let the girl drink some water, ma'am." But Mrs. To coldly stopped her. No, stop indulging her. Let her reflect. Ham Ham's eyes were red before just crying got her pampered by mom. Now mom was banished and grandma didn't care for her anymore. Crying was useless after all. Just as she despaired, Tuck Bao's tiny figure drew near and gave her a lollipop. Tuck Bao said, "Sister, don't cry anymore." Ham Ham sobbed, "I don't want your candy." Tuck Bao immediately put the candy back into her pocket. "Oh, okay then. I won't give it to you." Tuck Bao curiously asked, "Sister's basin still lacks a lot of water. If you don't cry enough, Grandma won't let you eat. Why don't you try crying some more?" Ham Ham's eyes brimmed with tears again. She said in tears, "Then cousin, help hold the tear basin for me. Don't let it spill on the floor." The two kids panicked, not knowing what to do. Ham Ham said, "I am done for. I can't cry anymore." Tuck Bao immediately took a glass of water. Sister, drink more water. With more water in you, you can cry it out. So Ham Ham drank a glass, then motivated herself. Okay, let's start. Just then, Tanyat Tran led his two sons home. They saw Ham Ham crying hard and hiccuping. While Tuck Bao held a basin, catching her tears, Tuck Bao shouted, "Sister, you can do it!" The confused father and sons asked what was going on. Tuck Bao quickly explained, "Grandma is making Sister Ham Ham cry a full basin. She can't stop until it's full. We're trying our best." Ham Ham looked at Tanyat Tran and pleaded, "Cousin, I can't cry anymore. Could you ask Grandma to change it to a smaller basin for me? No basin, or how about a cup?" Eldest cousin is good at math. Calculate fast. A basin holds ten liters of water. To fill it, crying once would need two thousand days, not counting evaporation loss. So you'd have to cry continuously for five years to fill it. Ham Ham said, "Now I can't cry out tears anymore." Tuck Bao thought, then comforted her, "Don't worry, sister. Try your best crying another five years tomorrow. It doesn't seem that long." That to brothers Hop Nian and Hop Van both felt it was nonsense. And could only shake their heads helplessly. The two little sisters were really dumb. Mrs. Wynn dragged her suitcase to her mom's house. Her mom was surprised and asked what happened. Mrs. Wynn recounted being chased out by Mrs. Two. Hearing this, Mrs. Wynn's mom angrily said, "Who allowed her to interfere in your family matters like that? She's a troublemaker, all right." After a few minutes, Mrs. Wynn calmed down again. To Two Lam was asking for divorce if she was really kicked out. Years of effort would be wasted. Maybe she should go beg him for the children's sake to endure. Mrs. Wynn's mom disagreed. Right? It's because you're always enduring that you get bullied. You should wait for them to come beg you. Mrs. Wynn hesitated. Go beg mom. How can I? But her mom said, Why not? Without her mother, Ham Ham will surely act up. How will the Tu family handle it then? Just wait. In less than two days, they'll beg you to come back. When they realize they can't manage without you. Let's see if they still dare ask for divorce. Mrs. Wynn was unsure what to do, but felt her mom made sense, so she let it go that day. Without her mom beside her, Ham Ham was very sad. But remembering crying couldn't fill the basin. She didn't dare cry loudly anymore. Made Go felt bad for her, and told Ham Ham to sleep early tomorrow would be better. But Ham Ham turned and threw a pillow at Made Ngo's face. You're not my mom. I don't need you. Get lost. Made Go left. 
Just as she exited, she met Mrs. To standing outside with Tuck Bao in pajamas. Mrs. To asked if Ham Ham was still acting up. Maid Go said the girl had calmed down a lot already. Mrs. To sighed, "It's because she's still small that she needs discipline. If not taught while young, how can we expect them to behave when grown up?" Suddenly, Tuck Bao stuck her head through the door and seriously asked, "Sister Ham Ham, are you afraid sleeping alone at night?" Or Tuck Bao can sleep with you so you're not scared. Ham Ham panicked. How dare you try to scare me? You wicked child! I don't need you. She threw her teddy bear at the door with a slam. Tuck Bao blinked innocently. I am telling the truth, sister. There are ghosts. Mrs. To patted Tuck Bao's head. Okay, go sleep. Don't mind Ham Ham anymore. So Tuck Bao returned to her room, lying on her stomach atop the bed. Little Wu flew before Tuck Bao's face today. I'll teach you magic. Okay. Can you conjure a burning fireball? Poof poof. But Tuck Bao doubted. I am not three anymore. I understand a lot now. How can people conjure fireballs? Seeing Tuck Bao's disbelief, Little Wu continued. Fine, opening your third eye will do too. You're gifted with innate talent anyway. Your third eye is already open, but magic is different. Needing theory and practice. Some masters practice their whole lives yet can't conjure fireballs. Only use matches for fire. It's normal if you don't believe. I know Tuck Bao probably can't do it either. Hearing this, Tuck Bao knew he was trying to trick her. She said, "Master, just try conjuring a fireball. If I see it, of course, I'll believe." Little Wu was startled, though Master is powerful. I am still just a spirit. Tuck Bao understood that meant he couldn't do it either. Little Wu said again, "I can't do it. I am afraid the fire would be too big and burn all your hair off, making you bald." Seeing Tuck Bao still disbelieving, Little Wu interrupted, "Okay, okay. Children should nt ask too much. Master will read for you to listen. Want to learn? Then learn. Don't want to? Then don't. Now read after Master. Afterward, Little Wu asked, "Learned it." Tuck Bao innocently replied, "Can you read a bit slower, Master?" The four-year-old girl, learning magic from her master, had opened her third eye and studied magic. The ancient said, "Teaching disciples is enduring hunger." Tuck Bao felt this saying described her master. She irritably said, "Can you read slower and clearer, Master?" Meanwhile, Ham Ham had never been apart from her mom before. Without her mom beside her, Ham Ham hugged the blanket, crying. While sobbing, she unconsciously touched her face, remembering to collect her tears in a cup. Suddenly, a white shadow flew by, startling Ham Ham into turning around. What was that? Were there really ghosts? Suddenly, a white figure appeared before her. Reaching out its hands, lunging at her, Ham Ham shrieked in terror. Just then, the door burst open and Tuck Bao's voice rang out. Ham Ham didn't understand what she said. Only saw a ball fly from Tuck Bao's hand, smacking the white figure straight on. Next was a wretched wail. As the white shadow hastily fled, Little Wu explained it was an evil spirit. Turns out souls also have ranks. Those just wandering the mortal realm, unable to do anything, are lingering souls. Violent ghost souls who died wronged and full of resentment are called vengeful ghosts. They can appear before people and demand lives above vengeful ghosts are evil spirits, the cruelest ghosts, who die with immense hatred. Evil spirits often stem from human greed and anger. For example, the wailing ghost, the timid ghost, the miserly ghost. Tuck Bao seemed to understand because Ham Ham likes crying. She attracted the wailing ghost. Little Wu nodded approvingly at Tuck Bao. He said, "People who really like crying are easily haunted by wailing ghosts." Ham Ham panicked and plopped down on the bed. She shakily went to Tuck Bao and hugged her tightly, wailing loudly. Tuck Bao comforted her, "It's okay now, sister. Don't be afraid. I chased the ghost away already." Then she suddenly remembered, "Oh right, sister. Don't cry. I'll get a cup for you to collect your tears." Can't waste it. Ham Ham tried to stop crying. Tuck Bao ran to get a cup of water. When Tuck Bao brought the cup over, two teardrops rolled down Ham Ham's cheeks. The two girls looked at each other. Tuck Bao said, "Sister, try crying a bit more. Yell with your mouth wide open. Take advantage of the emotions." Finally, the sleepy Tuck Bao climbed on the bed. Sister, lie down and cry. That way, you won't get tired and can cry more. Beside her, little Wu's lips kept twitching. He sighed. The next morning, Mrs. To wheeled her electric wheelchair to Tuck Bao's door, and knocked lightly. Tuck Bao, are you awake yet? Grandpa is waiting for you to wake up and paint together. She pushed the door open, and her expression changed. The room was empty with no one inside. 
She panicked and called for people. Tuck Bao disappeared. Xiao Wu was yawning when he jerked in shock and screamed loudly. A child abductor. A child abductor hearing Mrs. Tu shouts. Tu Nyat Tran hurriedly asked what happened. Mrs. Tu worriedly said Tuck Bao vanished. The parrot said someone abducted her. Tu Nyat Tran immediately ordered Uncle Thoi to check the cameras and told Maid Go to ask the servants who woke early if they heard anything. Then he took out his phone about to call the police. Just then Tuck Bao's gentle voice rang out behind them Why are you looking for me cousin? Tuck Bao hugged a stuffed animal eyes closed tightly. Yawning longly everyone gaped at Tuck Bao. Why was the girl in Ham Ham's room? Moreover Ham Ham was up early without fussing. After breakfast the two girls ran to the painting room. Tuck Bao and Ham Ham painted with Grandpa too. Tuck Bao handed Ham Ham a blank sheet of paper. But Ham Ham turned her face away I don't want your paper. Still she took it Tuck Bao was surprised but you said you didn't want it. Ham Ham stiffly said my blank paper isn't white enough. Reluctantly using yours. Just then Grandpa to walked by and asked what they would paint today. Beside him Grandpa held up his phone video calling the doctor. Tuck Bao held up her and Ham Ham's paintings Grandpa can you see our paintings clearly. He praised they painted beautifully. Tuck Bao turned and asked Ham Ham can he post them. Seeing she agreed Tuck Bao said we don't mind Grandpa. So Tuck Bao held up the paintings for him to film. Beside her Ham Ham's eyes gradually lit up. It was the first time she received praise besides her mom's. Before this only her mom praised her. And called Tuck Bao a naughty child. But now she felt her mom seemed wrong. Kicked out from the to family Mrs. Wynn couldn't restrain herself. And went back looking for her daughter but was chased away before entering the gate. After asking around and learning Ham Ham was home from school. Mrs. Wynn lurked outside the gate. Suddenly looking through the iron bars she saw Ham Ham playing with Tuck Bao. Seeing this made her very unhappy. A good girl like Ham Ham befriending Tuck Bao would surely be led astray. She called loudly Ham Ham dear mom's here. Ham Ham and Tuck Bao were fishing. Hearing the familiar voice. Ham Ham said is that mom calling. But Tuck Bao quickly covered her ears no it's not. Tuck Bao looked toward the gate and saw the deathly energy around Mrs. Wynn was heavier. She pulled Ham Ham's hand don't go out there. Auntie Tu's death chi is too strong hearing this Ham Ham thought of last night's ghost. She immediately turned back babbling incoherently. Shouting I won't let the monster get me. Mrs. Wynn was furious I knew it that White Lotus ruined Ham Ham already. That night worried Tuck Bao would get bored. Grandpa to suggested the whole family go camping at the park tomorrow. Tuck Bao asked back not understanding what camping was. Grandpa to explained camping is sleeping outdoors in nature. Tuck Bao was even more confused we have a house already. Why go outside instead of staying home? Hearing this the cousin beside her sneered. And looked at Tuck Bao scornfully as expected an uncultured country bumpkin. Grandpa to frowned what did you say? Come here to two tick lolled out his tongue grandpa called. Gotta run grandpa to had a headache with these two grandchildren. Neither was easy to handle meanwhile. Wei Yi's mom was checking the doctor's account and saw he posted Tuck Bao and Ham Ham's paintings. She was furious how infuriating. The Ta family even pays to keep praising Tuck Bao. Now they're dragging Ham Ham in too. Why not praise my daughter Wei Nhi instead? Wei Nhi who sat beside asked maybe it's because I badmouthed Tuck Bao then got exposed so he's mad at me. Her mom comforted her don't overthink. It's not your fault seeing Wei Nhi sad. She said tomorrow's weekend you can skip art class. Dad and I will take you camping for fun. The next day seeing everyone together. Mrs. to side without Tuck Bao's return. Perhaps the to family would never reunite like this. Just then Tuck Bao ran over gifting her a flower this is a wish flower grandma. Over there to Thang Nhi and to Tu Lam were having trouble hammering tent pegs into the ground. To Thang Nhi scratched his head where's the hammer. Suddenly he saw Tuck Bao run over. Holding a toolbox here's the hammer cousin 5. To Tu Lam was stunned brought a whole toolbox camping. Tuck Bao looked at the cute hammers are all cousin 5's hammers this adorable. To Thang Nhi was delighted you like them. Tuck Bao nodded vigorously I really like them. Not far away to can smirk telling to why Tham. See our cute little niece is spoiled by fifth bro already. A girl liking hammers. Tuck Bao asked where can I help hammer second cousin. 
to two lamb absent mindedly pointed down hammer this down. So Tuck Bao continuously hammered at the tent corners. Just then a car pulled up before the two families' campsite. Wei Nyi's dad stepped out. Oh, you're here too. Tu Nyat Tran hurriedly greeted them, but Wei Nyi's mom thought this was a good chance to bond with the two family, then let's camp here together. Wei Nhi smiled innocently. I also want to play with Tuck Bao. But Tu Nyat Tran coldly said, We have a lot of people already. No space left, implying don't come here. Wei Nyi's dad was a bit embarrassed but said it's fine. There's empty land over there too. Close by is convenient. Wei Nhi pretended not to understand the adult's intent. And went near Tuck Bao what are you playing? Let me take you to play with brother Havan. But Tuck Bao felt her smile was like a stepmother so said I want play with you. Then she hugged the toolbox and left. Wei Nhi was stunned she didn't care about Tuck Bao taking her spot anymore. So why did she act like that way NHI thought Ham Ham disliked Tuck Bao so pulled her along to oppose Tuck Bao. Unexpectedly Ham Ham also acted disgusted as if I d play with you. Who do you think you are then she ran toward Tuck Bao. Wei NHI could only go to the riverbank. And sit crying she asked to Ha Van brother I don't know what I did wrong anymore. Why don't Tuck Bao and Ham Ham play with me. But to Ha Van said get lost. Don't bother me then he stood up. And went in Tuck Bao's direction, Wei Nhi bit her lip. Feeling it increasingly unfair, why did everyone go looking for Tuck Bao instead of playing with her? Just then she heard someone calling from behind. It was Mrs. Wen, she told Wei Nhi that she argued with Grandma. And asked her to secretly call Ham Ham over. Remembering her mom's order to flatter Mrs. Wen, Wei Nhi obeyed and went to Ham Ham, whispering for a bit, seeing her mom waving behind a bush. Ham Ham hesitated but still missed her mom so ran over. She hugged Mrs. Wynn tightly mom. Mrs. Wynn's eyes were red my poor child. Two days without mom you must have missed me a lot right? Have you been eating resting properly dear? Ham Ham shook her head grandpa and grandma make me eat on time. If it's past mealtime I can't eat Mrs. Wynn resentfully said your in-laws are so cruel. Come mom will take you home. But Ham Ham hesitated looking back then said I am not going anywhere. I want to stay and play before Ham Ham clung to her mom. Her sudden refusal to leave angered Mrs. Wynn. They don't pamper you yet you still refuse to come home. Mrs. Wynn pretended to be hurt could it be you don't love mom anymore. This line had great effect on most children. But Ham Ham struggled free of Mrs. Wynn's hands I want to stay and play here. Why can't you just let me choose? Ham Ham wailed loudly again just then the two family members ran over to see what was happening. To two lamb coldly asked Mrs. Wynn have you made enough of a racket? Caught Mrs. Wynn didn't hide it anymore what did I do? Am I not allowed to visit my child? She pulled Ham Ham's hand you don't want to stay and play. Then mom will stay with you Ham Ham wanted to jerk her hand away but couldn't. Mrs. Wynn said you don't love mom anymore. Want to play with Tuck Bao who will ruin you. And grandpa and grandma won't let you eat. That's child abuse when you grow up don't bother talking to them. Only mom truly loves and is good to you. Ham Ham was scared by Mrs. Wynn's resentful tone. And started wailing loudly just then her other hand was grabbed and yanked hard by Tattoo Lamb. Ham Ham felt like she was being torn apart. Mrs. Wynn shouted let go it hurts. But she kept yanking Ham Ham's hand. Suddenly Tattoo Lamb let go. His phone rang he looked at the caller ID then answered this as to two lamb speaking. Not hearing the other side Mrs. Wynn suddenly felt uneasy. To two lamb looked at her very coldly. Saying into the phone come here now brothers. Tuck Bao watched Mrs. Wynn very warily. Little Wu explained why are there suddenly so many death flags around auntie. Today isn't her death day. Tuck Bao asked blankly what a suicide master. Hearing the police were coming Mrs. Wynn realized her crimes were about to be exposed so wanted to commit suicide. Tuck Bao quickly looked at Mrs. Wynn auntie you're planning to kidnap Ham Ham then commit suicide. Hearing this Mrs. Wynn's expression changed. She didn't expect little Wu to correctly guess her intention. She hugged Ham Ham and ran straight for the lake. Mrs. To panicked and rushed to stop her. But the two brothers were faster. Blocking Mrs. Wynn she tightened her arms around Ham Ham's neck don't come closer. Mrs. Wynn said coldly the matter from six years ago is over. Why do you keep clinging without letting go? I only want to become second madam of the two family. Just then a car drove up. 
Mrs. Wynn desperately hugged Ham Ham and threw themselves toward the car. The four men were horrified. But the four year old girl quickly flung a plastic toy bucket at Mrs. Wynn's head. She tumbled down her face bloody. Tuck Bao said, I only used a little strength. Seeing the car about to hit them, suddenly a small pot flew and struck Mrs. Wynn's head directly. She staggered and fell backward. Shaking in pain, to Tu Lam hurriedly ran to hug Ham Ham. Tuck Bao worriedly held his hand, saying to Tanyat Tran cousin, I am sorry. I used too much strength. I promised you I wouldn't reveal my powers before others. Seeing Tuck Bao's worried look, Tunyat Tran patted her head comfortingly, it's okay. Just then the police siren sounded. Some policemen got out and went straight to Mrs. Wynn. Coldly taking out a document, Mrs. Wynn, you're suspected of murder six years ago. With clear evidence, I am now arresting you by law. Mrs. Wynn panicked, there was no evidence for the incident six years ago. Let alone now, but the police took out a paper, saying they found her fingerprints on the money wrapper. They traced the serial number on the bill and discovered it was the money she withdrew in the next county six years prior. First, you hired someone to kill to two lamb, then poisoned and killed to cover your tracks. The evidence is clear. Mrs. Wynn's heart froze over. How could they have found clues from so long ago? As she was led onto the police car, she still begged to two lamb. Ham ham is still small. She needs her mother, but the police asked about her head wound. To Nyat Tran pointed at Tatu Lam when they argued. She tried to commit suicide with her daughter, so my second brother got furious and threw that at her head. Hearing this, Tatu Lam jerked in shock, then nodded, Yes. I threw it. The police took notes and asked what he threw. Tatu Lam silently picked up the small pot from the ground and handed it to the police. He was stunned, You're sure this toy could cause such an injury? But to Tu Lam asserted, I am 100% certain. After completing the report, the police took the pot and left. Tuck Bao innocently watched the police car, my pot got taken away. I am sorry, I didn't mean to abandon it. Little Wu flew around, it's fine. It was dirty anyway, seeing Tuck Bao's regretful gaze. Everyone thought she was sad to witness the arrest. Ham Ham had been taken away too. Mrs. To worriedly asked if she was okay. But Tuck Bao shook her head, I am fine. The past has passed, now it's over. To Viet Phi gently stroked Tuck Bao's head, don't think too much. Cousin will take you to eat, okay? Tuck Bao asked, can I eat everything? Even grilled meat, two to two lamb wheeled over, worried for you, Granny said, just one skewer. The hot grill isn't good for you. Tuck Bao sadly looked at the salmon and grilled skewers, bidding each dish farewell, but to Viet Phi said, Mom, just let her eat a lot. Brother eight will handle it anyway. Hearing brother eight the parrot shook his neck again. Crying out brother eight butt blossoming. To Wai Tham glared at it angrily just then Wei Nhi ran over with a strawberry cream puff. Inviting Tuck Bao to eat together she smiled brightly. No child could resist a strawberry cream puff. Nor refuse Wei Nhi. But Tuck Bao said I don't want it. I am saving space for cousin three's grilled meat. Wei Nhi felt humiliated. She asked with a disappointed look Tuck Bao you don't like me. Tuck Bao nodded firmly that's right. I already told you how could you forget. Never directly rejected like this before. Wei Nhi immediately ran off. Yelling Tuck Bao was a naughty child. Bullying her yet no one cared over in a far corner of the woods. The tree shadows swayed slightly as a dark figure crawled up. His berries mirrored face raised a hand toward the Ta family. Wiping the blood from his face little Wu took the chance to fly near Tuck Bao today ill teach you disciple. Every time I am free I drag you out to study. All stuff you don't understand. But little Wu continued lecturing by her ear it's fine not to understand now in the future when you need it you'll naturally get it. Today ill teach you the five arts. Including alchemy fortune telling physiognomy. Military strategy and herbalism. Sun means going into the mountains for spiritual cultivation. Alchemy is obvious traditional medicine also falls under medicine. Tuck Bao's ears perked up. Master so will I also learn spirit possession dance. I don't want to learn that you'll get arrested. Little Wu looked at her who taught you spirit possession dance. It turns out once went out with her dad. Tuck Bao saw a shaman woman doing a spirit dance then getting arrested. Hearing this little Wu was very annoyed dancing like that would indeed get you arrested easily. But true advanced secret arts only require a simple finger motion. I am saying once you're skilled you can cure granny's illness. 
Tuck Bao immediately sat up straight, focused like a diligent student. Tuck Bao wanted to learn to cure Granny's illness. Little Wu sneered to himself. When he lectured about dream interpretation, Tuck Bao raised her hand master fortune telling and dream interpretation. I know those get you arrested too. When I went out with dad a blind fortune teller did it for me then got arrested. Tuck Bao's face scrunched up can you teach me something that won't get arrested master. Hearing this little Wu sighed wearily. Where did you and that dad go to learn such nonsense? This made Tuck Bao remember the past I don't know either. Dad just told me to buy cigarettes to wait there for him. I waited and waited but dad never came back. Finally the police uncle brought me home. Little Wu seriously asked you really stood there and waited. Tuck Bao nodded I stood right on that square brick. Very obedient but dad still forgot me. Saying this Tuck Bao's smile slowly disappeared. She asked master dad wanted to abandon me right. I knew it when dad turned away. Little Wu was silent she really was a silly child. Then he patted Tuck Bao's head in the future if anyone doesn't want you. You should nt want them either. Remember those who abandon you will never be worthy of your forgiveness. Nor your love. Tuck Bao nodded seeming to understand. Quickly her smile bloomed again. A child's face changes as quickly as June weather. Tuck Bao asked master will learning medicine get arrested. I know they're even on TV. Little Wu was exasperated why does every sentence involve arrest? What TV he joked how do you know this? Tuck Bao said from those secret medicine commercials master. I watched those shows so I know about medicine. Then Tuck Bao immediately recited a commercial from memory and asked Little Wu what restore father and son meant. Little Wu jerked aw that means can't get it up. Tuck Bao nodded wow amazing. But Little Wu said those people all got arrested later. Everything I teach seems illegal. But for Granny Tuck Bao ill take a risk. Seeing Tuck Bao's innocent face. Little Wu guessed what she was thinking. I see you misunderstand medicine. I have to explain it from the beginning so you understand. Just then Ham Ham cut in finally a chance to teach. Ham Ham immediately handed a skewer to Tuck Bao. Tuck Bao happily thanked her. But Ham Ham scowled don't thank me. I didn't intentionally get it for you. Just had leftovers. Remember that then Ham Ham ran off. If observing closely you'd see she was in much better spirits than when sad over Mrs. Wynn. Mrs. To decided to take Tuck Bao strawberry picking. Tuck Bao curiously asked what are strawberries granny. Mrs. To patiently explained it was a wild fruit. When I lived in the countryside I often picked them to eat. Very sweet hearing they were sweet Tuck Bao's eyes lit up wait a moment granny. Ill finish eating then go pick right away. Saying so she stuffed several skewers into her mouth. In the woods Tuck Bao craned her neck looking around where are the strawberries granny. Mrs. To led the way they're usually hidden in the bushes. Let's go look suddenly little Wu flew around in panic. Crying out there were little ghosts for some reason Mrs. To felt worried. She said if Tuck Bao was scared they'd go back. But hearing there were ghosts Tuck Bao became unusually excited. Little Wu was happy I really like ghosts. Tuck Bao let's go see. Then he flew ahead Tuck Bao hurriedly followed wait for me granny. Il go look then come right back. Mrs. To hurried after her as soon as Tuck Bao's shadow disappeared behind the bushes. In the blink of an eye she vanished into the silent forest leaving only Mrs. To. Who became scared out of her wits. She worriedly called Tuck Bao come back here it's dangerous. But suddenly the bushes rustled. And Tuck Bao trudged out shouldering a child. Looking up and seeing Mrs. To had followed her in. Her expression panicked Tuck Bao immediately flung the child to the ground. The boy fell with a heavy thud. But Tuck Bao didn't care. She ran to hug Mrs. To tightly thinking Tuck Bao was scared. Mrs. To was about to comfort her when she suddenly heard the girl's childish voice Granny don't be afraid. I am here now what would happen if something happened to you. Hearing this Mrs. To burst into tears don't leave Granny alone Tuck Bao. If something happened to you what would I do? Tuck Bao felt even more guilty I was naughty. Making you worry I am sorry Granny I promised Mom I'd take good care of you. Can't leave you alone I am so irresponsible. Just then the two brothers ran over and saw the two embracing. They asked what happened saying they heard Granny calling Tuck Bao earlier. Suddenly little Wu stood on the ground flapping his wings crying there were little ghosts. Little ghosts to why Tham went closer. Flipping the boy over he comforted Mrs. to it's just a boy. Mrs. to breathe a sigh of relief asking if he was dead. 
Tuck Bao shook her head not dead yet granny. Just now I really thought there were ghosts. Didn't expect running over it was just a boy. To Y Tham checked his breathing and pulse. He said he could still be saved to Y Tham called for an ambulance. To take the boy back to the tent for treatment after all he wasn't dead yet so they should still try to save him. Afterward to Van Tru told Tuck Bao to take good care of granny. Just then little Wu hovered nearby very happy. Earlier you said to learn medicine now there's a real case already. The patient lost one of his three huns and seven po souls. I'll teach you how to save him. Tuck Bao obediently answered I want to learn to save people. From a far way NHI saw the Tu family carrying a child and went to ask if they needed any help. They had medicine in the tent but to Y Tham quickly declined no need. The boy's life wasn't stable they couldn't casually give medicine. Wei Nyi's dad glanced at the brand name on the boy's shirt. He suddenly said wait this domestic brand only serves the Tu Tu and Mok families. The Mok have no children. That means this child is Tu Diak Nian the young master who went missing from the Tu family days ago one of the three top families in the capital. In the tent Wei Nyi's mom saw the Tu family carrying a child and asked who it was. He said it was a Tu child recognized by the brand name. But it seemed that Tu didn't know yet. Hearing this her eyes lit up excitedly it's the young Tu master who went missing long ago. The Tu family has been searching everywhere. If we inform them we found their little prince. ITD be great but he immediately interrupted you're so foolish. Competing with the Tu family they discovered him. If we take credit ITD make the Tu and Tu look like fools. Hearing this she quickly asked then what should we do. He thought for a bit then called the number the Tu family publicized during their search for the young master hello is this Mr. Tu. I am Lam Kiam Vu I am calling to inform you. Mr. Tu's daughter has found your young master. Master Tu told me to inform you. Hearing her husband say this she deeply admired his cleverness. This way they could curry favor with both families. In the Tu tent little Wu was teaching Tuck Bao soul recall. Souls are Yang Po or Yin. People have three huns the principal soul. Absolute soul and life soul the principal soul is Ming. Hun belong to the gods the other two souls often wander outside so are easily lost. The patient currently lacks a soul. But Tuck Bao's attention was elsewhere. She asked if souls get lost easily why not tie the other two to the body. Little Wu raised a hand kids don't ask so much. You'll understand later afraid Tuck Bao would keep asking. Little Wu continued before recalling souls light incense. Make a fire throw the patient's clothes and then recite a spell. I'll read it once so you can hear. All living beings under heaven. Little Wu read out a long passage. Afterward he asked got it Tuck Bao nodded yes master. Little Wu praised her as expected a genius. Read it back to me Tuck Bao immediately recited on the right a little turtle with a huge belly. Sa back nin kills chicken wa wa twitchy twitchy. Sa Bak Nin kills Chicken Wa Wa Little Wu was stunned what was that. Even though the pronunciation is similar you can't read it like that. But suddenly Little Wu sensed the surrounding air shifting. Tuck Bao's spell was actually working. Tuck Bao frowned who saw Bak Nin. Why kill Chicken Wa Wa Twitchy Twitchy? Why twitch twice Little Wu was at a loss. Not knowing how to respond. Beside the misses to only heard Tuck Bao mumbling. Her expression changing she worriedly asked Tuck Bao. Can you tell granny who you're talking to? Tuck Bao replied I am talking to master. Mrs. Tu jerked even more worried. She was afraid Tuck Bao was abused as a child causing a split personality. Seeing her imaginary friend she thought it was mental illness. But little Wu reminded Tuck Bao I told you not to mention me to others. Tuck Bao was conflicted but granny isn't others. Seeing Tuck Bao talking to herself. Mrs. Tu's heart sank into an abyss. Could it be poor Tuck Bao really had a mental illness? She hugged Tuck Bao tightly crying my poor Tuck Bao. Why is your fate so miserable? Don't be afraid granny and grandpa your cousins will always be by your side. It will be okay Tuck Bao was confused not understanding what was happening. Why was she crying just then the two family steward came to bring the young master home. They didn't know the boy nearly died. Wei Nyi's eagerly waiting parents stood along the road. Trying to appear they also participated in finding him. But the two family members didn't even glance their way. Heading straight for the two families tent. The couple's expression soured. Feeling humiliated that they were completely ignored. A man with an imposing cold aura. 
and stern expression entered the tent. Tuck Bao curiously asked Little Wu why that guy was glowing gold all over. Dazzling her eyes, Little Wu explained he was a virtuous man. People with great contributions radiate like that. When they die, their merits will be complete. Tuck Bao nodded in understanding. She then asked why there was still Death Kai within the Golden Glow. After some time studying, Tuck Bao could now sense Death Kai. Little Wu explained it's because he has also killed people before. But he killed evil people, so the Death Kai clings to him but is blocked outside by the golden light. Just then the man approached. Tuck Bao smiled, Hello, uncle. He jerked slightly, This girl isn't afraid of me. Usually children cry in fear of my fierce looks. But this girl not only didn't cry, she smiled brightly at me. He nodded, Hello, child, you're Tuck Bao, right? You brought Diak Nian back, Tuck Bao nodded. He looked at the cute, chubby girl. Couldn't help staring a few more times. Then said thank you child when Diak Nian wakes up. I'll bring him to thank you. Some men in black suits took Diak Nian away. He nodded at Tanyat Tran then prepared to leave. But Tuck Bao quickly called out uncle. That boy isn't normal. If he doesn't wake up remember to come find me. He nodded absent-mindedly clearly not taking her words seriously. Originally misses to plan to camp overnight for Tuck Bao's experience. But after this incident. She felt uneasy afraid Tuck Bao would get kidnapped again. So decided to take everyone home. The next day on the top floor of a private hospital. Mr. Tu Dao stood ramrod straight outside the Ur. Beside him was his wife Madam on NHU van pacing back and forth anxiously. Mr. Tu patted her shoulder rather distantly to comfort her don't worry. Hell be fine though named Gentle Cloud she had a rather tough personality. Inside the Ur was her son. How could she not worry? Just then the OR door burst open and the doctor emerged his eyes heavy Mr. and Mrs. too. We've done our best please brace yourselves. Mrs. on NHU van's legs weakened and she nearly collapsed if not for Mr. too catching her. He enveloped her in his arms when he arrived. We ran every test but couldn't determine the cause. Young master is getting weaker. Also losing weight rapidly for no reason since last night he's dropped 5 kilograms already. Never seen before to be honest continuing treatment like this is useless anyway. Best to take him home to settle final affairs. Mrs. Unwept there's really no other way. Doctor it's difficult for you to say this too were truly helpless. Please accept our condolences. Just then young master Diak Nian's grandma irritably shouted I knew we should NT have trusted you. She was quite superstitious. She said she had invited a grand master to come use magic to save her grandson. But Mr. Tu Dao knew she had invited many shamans already. All frauds in the end seeing his son disapprove. She angrily said this time was different I've invited Grandmaster Van to come. He has attained the Dao and become immortal. He's hard to find do you understand. But Mr. Tu still stubbornly refused. Suddenly he recalled Tuck Bao's words that the boy wasn't normal. If he doesn't wake up remember to find me. Mr. Tu decided to bring Diak Nian to the Da house. Hearing this grandma grew even more angry going to a little kid what use is that? What does she know huh? Just wait if anything happens to Diak Nian. I won't be able to live either. Grandma still believed in Master Van. Mr. Tu left leaving her with keep believing in Master Van. You want to kill Diak Nian. To save her grandson grandma invited a Taoist in yellow robes wanting to go together to the Da house. He arrogantly said usually I don't meddle in worldly affairs. Accompanying you this time is an exception. The old woman respectfully nodded my unfilial children and grandchildren. Going to a child she quickly repeated Mr. Thus words. And about donating money to restore temples. Only then did Master Van agree I also have affinity with you. Ill go see what that child still smelling of milk dares to blabber. The old woman was moved bringing him to the to house. Meanwhile Tuck Bao worriedly asked Granny did that brother wake up yesterday. Mrs. To said she didn't know no news after they left. To Lack smiled sardonically this kid cares so much about others. We've barely found our princess. Now some brat has snatched her away. Tuck Bao thought her cousin was handsome but his smile looked evil. To Lack laughed so young yet understands this already. Just then little Wu said if you want to know about him. Why not try fortune telling with me. Once you've learned it you can determine his condition yourself. Tuck Bao blankly looked at little Wu. He sat down do you still remember the martial arts I taught yesterday? Tuck Bao nodded but little Wu Saidi yed her suspiciously. 
He began teaching hexagram fortune telling. Predicting good or bad fortune today, he'll teach you fortune telling. Okay. Need tortoise shell if not use something similar. Tuck Bao's eyes lit up. There's tortoise shell. She dragged little Wu to the artificial pond. Look, master, a big tortoise. Little Wu was paralyzed. For fortune telling, you need tortoise shell, not a live tortoise. But Tuck Bao had already grabbed the tortoise, throwing it onto the grass. The tortoise rolled over several times before stopping. Tuck Bao knelt down before the tortoise, placing both hands on her knees, chin resting on her palms, staring at it intently. Little Wu was annoyed. What is this? Tuck Bao said that boy isn't dead yet. He's on his way here. There's a fraud too. The boy will run into trouble. He may not make it. Suddenly, the tortoise stretched its neck, bit some grass, and flipped over again. Tuck Bao was shocked. It's overturned. Little Wu jerked. What overturned? This is called flipping over. Just then, the sound of a car engine rang out at the gate. Tuck Bao stood up, clapping. Brother has arrived. Little Wu rubbed his fingers in annoyance. Suddenly, little Wu heard and was shocked. He looked at Tuck Bao. You really divined it. Just then, Mrs. To called Tuck Bao. Come here. Tuck Bao ran over quickly. Mr. To How's brother? Seeing Tuck Bao, Mrs. On NHU van was like finding a life preserver. She pleaded for Tuck Bao to save Diak Nian, who was about to die. In his heart, Mr. To thought Diak Nian was already exhausted. Tuck Bao went inside and asked if Auntie brought the boy's clothes. Mrs. An remembered there was still a T-shirt in the car. She ran to get it. Tuck Bao also asked Mrs. To for an iron pot and spirit money. The housekeeper said there were still some in storage earlier when the boy's parents brought him. Tuck Bao had noticed an incense stick on his head. She asked Little Wu why the boy had incense on his head. Little Wu explained it was death incense. When nearing death, people have it. When it burns out, they die. Having said that, Little Wu's face tightened worriedly. The patient was seriously ill, but not dead yet. How could he have death incense, or could this boy really not make it? Tuck Bao knew death incense signified impending death, but she only heard when it burns out you die. Tuck Bao hurriedly prepared when suddenly labored breathing sounded at the door. Grandma shrieked, "You fraud! Dare to toy with my grandson's life!" Then charged at Tuck Bao, swinging her cane down. It happened too quickly, taking everyone by surprise. They didn't expect her to actually hit someone with a cane. Tuck Bao's hand was struck once. Seeing this, Tan Yat Tran coldly said, "I allowed you in because your grandson is here, not to hit people." She highly valued hierarchy, so being scolded made her snap irritably. You make it sound like I begged to enter your house. Then to her son, take Diak Nian away. Who knows what they'll do here? But Mister Tu coldly said, "If Mom wants to leave, then leave. Ill stay." Just then, Master Van walked in. His expression mysterious. Too late. Tuck Bao frantically looked at the boy on the floor. Master, if we don't save him now, it'll be too late. Master Van paid Tuck Bao no mind. Saying to himself, "Didn't I say it's too late, rude child?" Even mimicking me, hearing this, Grandma hurriedly urged, "Hurry and save my grandson, Master." Unlike before, when she relied on seniority, now she pleaded and begged. Master Van sighed, "Oh well, out of my compassion, ill help save this month's son." He called his disciple to prepare the altar, making her feel moved, thinking her grandson would finally be saved. Sword in hand, the master mumbled spells. Summoning divine soldiers to subdue evil spirits, the disciple rang bells and banged drums noisily. But Tuck Bao looked at Diak Nian. The incense on his head was only one third left. She cried out, "He was a fraud. Had no powers at all." Like the tortoise said, disaster was coming, but you called it disrespect. Master Van said, "I just performed magic. The young master will wake in five minutes." He posed with his sword, acting transcendent. Tears streamed down Tuck Bao's face. He won't wake up. You didn't do anything. Just then, the two grandma shielded Tuck Bao's face. A child knows nothing. Don't disrupt the master's work. But Mrs. Two angrily pushed her away. He's your grandson. But I decide grandma was furious. Insolent child. As a daughter-in-law, how dare you treat your mother-in-law this way? Tunyat Tran checked his watch. Master, you said five minutes was up. Mr. Two coldly said, "Or shall I kindly help you take your leave?" Master Van's face darkened since becoming immortal. No one has dared speak to me this way. You believe a child? How foolish! Grandma wailed. How can you treat gods like this? You want to kill my grandson, but Mister Two didn't care. He asked Tuck Bao. Still have time, child? 
I trust you tuck bow through Diak Nian's shirt into the fire. Sitting down to concentrate and chant. She mumbled on the right a little turtle with a huge belly. Little Wu frowned kill chicken what? She thinks this is child's play Master Van was also angry so young yet so rude. Causing such disorder his disciple also grew indignant if she saves the young master. He'll eat ten caddies of manure before he finished speaking. The shirt in the pot suddenly blazed brightly. Everyone was stunned the disciple's words trailing off. The pot contained raging green flames. The flattened shirt stood upright. The sleeves slowly lifted up. Only Tuck Bao smiled waving to the shirt brother hurry back. The shirt dropped down Diak Nian's fingers twitched slightly. Everyone held their breath eyes fixed on the boy. Mrs. An had been stunned for a while already. Shaking eyes wide open afraid it was an illusion. The arrogance on Master Van's face froze. He couldn't believe Diak Nian just twitched. His disciple was shamed wanting to find a hole to crawl into. How could that girl have really saved him? With the two families' power if they investigate. Had really have to eat ten caddies of manure. Grandma had thought Tuck Bao a fraud. Wanting to blame the boy's death on her. Earlier Tuck Bao had used her master's magic to save the boy but he still hadn't woken up. Master Van's disciple breathed a sigh of relief he really didn't understand. You people also believe a child. Wasting time if you had let my master continue. He might have already saved him Master Van solemnly said matters of life and death require careful speech. Hearing this grandma could no longer restrain herself. She wailed it's all her fault she killed my grandson. She must pay with her life. But Mr. Tu shouted loudly mother shut up. She jerked you dare yell at your mother. If he dies you'll abandon me too beside the master van was secretly pleased. Serves them right for not believing me. If I can't save someone. But a child can. Once that spreads where will I show my face? Suddenly a feeble voice spoke up too noisy. Master van's arrogant expression went blank. He couldn't believe Diak Nian was struggling to sit up. Tuck Bao happily exclaimed the boy was revived. She suddenly thought Master is so amazing. Turns out what he taught wasn't all nonsense. Diak Nian looked at Tuck Bao asking her name. Tuck Bao replied he silently memorized it. Mrs. Un trembled touching his face. Afraid it was an illusion she called her son's name. Then thanked Tuck Bao grandma was shocked seeing her grandson awake. She thought his blessings were immense. The Tuk clan scoffed not so fast. It was that girl who saved your grandson. Your grandson had the great blessings. Mr. Tu apologized for the trouble. And said had handled things upon returning due to work. He was often on the front lines so didn't know his mother was like this. Then he stroked Tuck Bao's head thank you child. In the future if you need anything come find uncle. No matter what ill help you Tuck Bao didn't know she did something major. Owing the two a huge debt she only felt happy to have saved someone. Tuck Bao said no need to thank me uncle. Saving one life is better than building seven pagodas right. Mr. Tu took his family away Master Van's face was slapped hard. It was humiliating but he said nothing. Seeing the two leave he also quietly departed. Tuck Bao suddenly wondered I feel like I heard someone say they'd eat ten caddies of manure. Hearing this Master Van heavily looked at her so young yet you show no mercy. You think you really saved the young master. His disciple chimed in I am a cultivator. If you really saved him. Heaven would make me eat manure not you. Having said that both angrily left. Tuck Bao was confused. It was clearly her who saved him who else was here. Little Wu stroked her head don't be angry. I just divined that he can't escape calamity. Tuck Bao frowned I am not angry. I am calculating when they'll get arrested. At this time Mrs. Tu and Talak were conflicted. They realized Tuck Bao seemed abnormal. Mrs. Tu recounted earlier Tuck Bao said there was a master beside her. Tunyat Tran asked if anyone noticed her talking to herself. Seeing her happily mumbling non-stop. The three glanced at the empty space beside her. They shivered afraid she developed split personality from abuse. Tunyat Tran looked at the girl it was too soon to conclude. Tomorrow the Tatu group invests in Min Tin Entertainment's opening. It'll take you out actually earlier Tuck Bao was talking to herself. Because she was learning massage techniques from master to help granny walk again. Little Wu said to look for a chance to buy needles. After the massage they'll do acupuncture. By then granny could even dance aerobics. Hearing this Tuck Bao's eyes lit up. Great ill work hard for granny to dance aerobics soon. 
Outside the two villa grandma hurriedly saw off the master and disciple but was rejected by master Van. His disciple coldly said Mrs. Two really is worthless. My master worked hard petitioning the gods to save young master but because his soul left too long compared to expected you credited that child instead. Master Van even said he wouldn't compete with a small child for credit just let the to clan self-indulge only now did grandma understand. It meant Master Van saved him but was slightly late so Tuck Bao got the credit. She knew a four-year-old knew nothing. She continuously apologized thanked them then gave the disciple money. Only then did Master Van leave satisfied. His disciple sycophantically said behind the master master is so wise. Luckily we have you or they could still swindle us. Then he asked where next Master Van said Min Tin was opening tomorrow. They were invited to the opening his disciple happily nodded but suddenly tripped on a rock. And fell face first into a pile of manure. He cried for help endlessly vomiting. The disciple was covered in manure seeing the money in hand fly away. Master Van hurriedly told him to dive in and search for it. Still vomiting he jumped into the muddy pond to look for the money. That day the Lamb family arrived at the two estates gates. A servant went to inform the madam there were guests. Grandma frowned yesterday she wasn't home so the servant said it was the caller from the camping trip. Who found young master she told him to invite them in quickly. Mr. Lamb bowed respectfully she was very pleased with his attitude. He said they were also there yesterday so participated in saving her grandson. He dared not take credit she praised the Lamb virtue for not competing for credit. Wei Nhi sat on the sofa. Asking gently if Diak Nian had recovered. The girl even asked to visit but grandma refused since she also couldn't enter his room. She said Diak Nian had recovered thanks to Master Van returning his soul. Hearing this Wei Ni's mother was shocked Master Van from the mountains. She nodded satisfied Master Van truly lived up to being a grand immortal. Diak Nian had stopped breathing but he pulled his soul back from the gates of death. Wei Ni's mother also admired that thanks to the master young master escaped danger. I was relieved just then two servants brought luggage before her. She asked what they were doing the servant said the master ordered bringing her back to her hometown. She was stunned was this gentle clouds idea. Her son no longer valued his mother. But Mr. Thus cold voice rang out it's my idea. He looked at his furious mother you only cause trouble here. Going home to live out old age will be better. She panicked but I am your birth mother. Just then Mr. Lamb grew even more afraid his efforts today were wasted. He stood up advising Mr. Two no matter what she's still your mother. Why not speak nicely? But Mr. Two shouted my family's business. Don't meddle get out immediately. Seeing this Mr. Lamb begged him to calm down and talk. But in the end they still got kicked out. Mr. Lamb was dejected two days of efforts wasted. But his wife said not necessarily. During the fight with his mother. She had secretly taken Min Tin's invitation card from the table since she was kicked out and Mr. Two wasn't participating. Tomorrow well attend representing their family. Mr. Lamb was both surprised and excited wife you're so clever. If we can get close to important figures. The Lamb's future will be brighter. If your friend's house had a parrot that woke them up each morning. Would you still be angry about being woken up? Xiao Wu sang off key left hand pointing at the sky. Right hand holding a red string you and I don't match at all. This bird voice is too grating. Tuck Bao dazedly opened her eyes confused who's going potty. Glancing over Xiao Wu was croaking a song. Oh Xiao Wu sings terribly. Xiao Wu immediately retorted I am not going anywhere. Little Wu frowned why hasn't Tuck Bao gotten up and changed yet. Today we're attending Min Tin's opening with uncle. Soon after Tuck Bao came down changed. Downstairs to Nyat Tran was in a solemn video conference. Seeing Tuck Bao he gestured for her to come slowly. Then eat breakfast he checked his watch. Surprised she had woken at 8 a.m. Eldest cousin gave Tuck Bao an egg. Gently saying to eat egg this morning. The two group leaders had never seen this before. The second quarter plans were completely forgotten. Until Mr. To coldly asked done keeping quiet. Only then did they hurriedly present the plans. After eating Tuck Bao followed cousin as soon as he ended the call. A man taking a girl out without checking anything. Tuck Bao's messy hair was still untouched. At the event hall gate Mr. Tu's car stopped. Only then did Tuck Bao frantically realize the problem cousin I can't get out. My hair is a huge mess. 
He smoothed her hair but to no avail. It just stood straight up. Tuck Bao worriedly said it's really okay my head looks like a bird's nest. I don't want to go out anymore. Her cute face was scrunched up. Eldest cousin made two little pigtails for her. Tuck Bao nodded taking out two hair ties from her backpack. Tunyat Tran thought it was just two pigtails. Five minutes later his shirt's top button was undone. Vest removed sleeves rolled up forehead sweating as he wrestled with Tuck Bao's hair. Tuck Bao said it's fine now cousin. He silently looked at her little pigtails. Then said done that took so long. They must look very good Tuck Bao touched them to check but he quickly stopped her. They look great don't touch or they'll get messy Tuck Bao obediently nodded. Completely unaware she was tricked. The driver glanced over unable to bear it. Mr. To put his coat back on and got out. Just then Mr. Lam noticed Mr. To's car. But why had it been stopped for five minutes without moving? His wife feared meeting Mr. To since she had stolen the invitation. But he reassured her this was a good opportunity for the lambs. They couldn't miss it he undid his seatbelt. Got out first to greet Mr. To just flatter him and ITD be fine. He didn't believe Mr. To wouldn't take the bait. His family got out way NHI wore a long dress like a fairy tale princess. Seeing the beautiful girl reporters were stunned. Continuously snapping photos way NHI smiled. Thinking the dress she chose was so pretty. Today she must be the most beautiful girl here. But when Mr. To stepped out of the car. All cameras turned to him. Wei Nhi politely greeted hello uncle too. But Tuck Bao only frowned at her. Wei Nhi bowed to look in the car. But Mr. To paid her no attention Mr. Lam comforted her it's okay. Perhaps he didn't hear you. Just then seeing Mr. To reach into the car to lead someone out. The reporters eagerly thought his legendary wife was about to appear. They tensely aimed their cameras. Suddenly a chubby little girl jumped out. Mr. To hugged her tightly striding into the hall. Everyone was stunned the cold stern CEO. Was tenderly hugging a little girl. Though not matching his aura it was adorable. The beautiful girl was too cute all lenses chased Mr. Tu and Tuck Bao. Ignoring Wei Nhi behind. Initially Wei Nhi was very happy. But seeing Tuck Bao hugged and becoming the focus. She grew upset again messy hair and plain clothes could still be cute. Compared to me she's nothing thinking so. Wei Nhi approached Tuck Bao. Pretending to be surprised sister Tuck Bao. Why is your hair so messy did you tie it yourself? Let me tie it nicely for you then she giggled. I could already tie hair well at three your hair was pretty because she tied it herself. Hearing this Tuck Bao immediately grew annoyed your hair as the messy one. Eldest cousin had spent much effort tying Tuck Bao's hair nicely. She believed cousin didn't tie it messy. Wei Nhi's mother also came over criticizing Tuck Bao's slightly messy hair. Let sister Wei Nhi tie it in a nicer style for you. Mr. Lam laughingly said who tied it to look like a bird's nest. Suddenly Mr. To turned back coldly he stated I tied Tuck Bao's hair. Anyone have issues with that the lambs froze. How could it be why would the CEO tie a child's hair? When Mr. To left the lambs went straight to the reception desk. Asking who invited them if he remembered correctly. They weren't on the guest list. The staff said anyone with an invite could enter. She would double check but Mr. To ordered kicking them out immediately. After checking she learned they came representing the two family. So she let them in and explained to Mr. To. Reviewing the invitation she confirmed it was the thus so permitted them inside. A staff member respectfully led Master Van and Disciple backstage. Upon entering Master Van looked around appraising L.Y. Acting transcendent he praised the splendorous decor. Good location just the center decorative ball needed moving one inch right to align with today's stars. The staff quickly nodded agreement. Finally he said to bring his new scissors to cut the ribbon. Along with red paper gold thread and candles. The staff said had prepare it right away then invited him to rest on a seat. Master Van was very pleased with his attitude. Today's opening would be very simple. The speech also casual. With him here there definitely wouldn't be issues. Just then Tuck Bao entered the hall led by Mr. Tu. The little girl saw two workers move the decorative ball one inch right. Tuck Bao asked why they moved the ball over cousin. Leaning to one side looks very unpleasant. Mr. Tu looked over indeed with the ball off center the stage wasn't symmetrical on both sides. He told his assistant to move the ball back to the proper position. 
The assistant obeyed and immediately went. Little Wu stroked his beard. Tuck Bao's talent was truly extraordinary. She knew nothing yet could still sense the displeasure. He planned to use this to teach Tuck Bao, but she was already attracted by the sweets behind. Mister To asked what she wanted to eat, but Tuck Bao was looking behind the stage, asking Master, "What's that? That's the sobbing ghost. Looks like it wasn't caught last time. Now it's back. Come, Little Bao." Follow master to take a look. The master and disciple were unhappy with the treatment here. They were invited to bless the venue, yet given no proper resting room. The disciple grumbled about no VIP room prepared for master. How outrageous! But master Van was unbothered. We don't care for fame or fortune, though amid glamour we keep tranquil souls. The disciple muttered nice words, but who actually follows them? Yesterday you just made me dive into the muddy pond to grab money. Nearby, a middle-aged man excitedly approached. It really is Master Van. Do you still remember me? I am Hoang Duck Fat. Hearing Min Tin invited the master. I thought it was just a rumor. Didn't expect to really meet Master again. Such great fortune. Meanwhile, the lambs had arrived early and were wandering outside the hall, wanting to approach upper-class figures to exchange business cards. Suddenly, they saw Mister Hoang Duck Fat excitedly asking a Taoist if he was Master Van. Wei Ni's mother quickly pulled her daughter over, while Mr. Lam approached, asking if he was Master Van. Mrs. Tu mentioned the master pulled young master's soul back from death's door. I heard the master just has to pray and wishes are granted, but he's usually hard to meet. Didn't expect my family to luckily meet the master here today. Both were very excited, but still acted respectfully before the master. Mr. Lam eagerly stepped forward, showing great enthusiasm. Master Van. I've long heard of your fame. He offered his business card, poured tea, inviting the master. Wei Nhi carried the tea tray, politely offering the master tea. Yesterday, I heard Mrs. Tu mention the master. Thanks to you, young master was saved. Today, my family represents the thus here. She even asked us to convey her apologies to the master. Hearing Mrs. Tu mention the master, looked at Wei Nhi. This child is blessed. Yesterday, young master had lost all hope, but today I met this girl. The two children are destined. Together, they will soar high. The lambs were delighted, thinking their daughter could marry young master. Their future would be secure. Hearing this, everyone thought the children would be together. So hurriedly, gave Wei Nhi their business cards. Just then, the staff brought the items the master had requested. Wei Nhi jokingly asked master, "What are these used for?" The master suddenly looked outside and saw the decorative ball pushed back to its original position. Master Van frowned. Why is it like this? I said to move the ball one yard right. The staff said it was per a senior leader's instructions. Hearing this, the disciple was unhappy. No matter who the leader is, since they invited my master, they should follow his arrangements. It's all for your benefit. Whoever ordered moving the ball knows nothing of feng shui. Before he finished speaking, Mister Tu's cold voice rang out. I gave that order. Do you have issues with that? Hearing this, the disciple immediately shut up. Suddenly, Tuck Bao pointed, Master, that deceptive ghost is standing behind the girl and Master. We've been looking for it for so long. Turns out it was hiding here. Too crowded. Now let's deal with it later. Master Tuck Bao nodded, then suddenly remembered. Oh right, that guy who said had eat ten caddies of manure the other day. Did you eat it? Did you vomit it out? Could you swallow? It was your stomach full, Mister. Tuck Bao gestured with her hands. Yesterday, I asked Mister Ha Van. He said ten caddies is about this big of a bucket. If you ate all that, itd be amazing. Tuck Bao looked at the disciple admiringly. So you really ate it? You're amazing. The disciple didn't know how to respond. Master Van's face darkened, bumping into this child again. Really, no peace. He scolded so young, yet speaking indecently. So shameful, Tuck Bao nodded. That's right. So shameful. Did you eat any, Mister? Little Wu beside her couldn't help softly laughing. My cute disciple. Sometimes I wonder if she says this on purpose. Not long after, the master and disciple were escorted away by two uniformed men. Unsatisfied at being called a fraud, he retorted, "No respect for heaven and earth. No fear of me. I see your horoscope has much misfortune and disaster." Tuck Bao understood. He meant the lambs. At their home, her stepmother often said her mother died because of her. Her father said the company went bankrupt also because of her. Tuck Bao angrily said Tuck Bao is not unlucky and disastrous. Tuck Bao has blessings protecting her. Just then, Mister Tu coldly said, "That's right. 
Tuck Bao is a fortunate child who are these people inviting. Then he signaled the police to take them away. Master Van still stubbornly told his disciple to pack up. He even said he wouldn't save the ungrateful anymore. His words made everyone feel that the family was unappreciative. The disciple cried out we came to bless this place for you all. Yet you treat my master this way. Don't come looking for me in the future. Everyone quickly advised Mr. to not to be angry. Master Van's disciple spoke bluntly but meant no harm. Master Van is very kindhearted should NT call the police. But Master Van was still stubborn insisting on leaving. Saying he didn't want to argue further. Seeing this way NHI acted worried Master please don't go. Sister Tuck Bao is still young she didn't mean to bother you. She clung to Master Van's robe then looked at Tuck Bao Sister Tuck Bao. The master is very skilled right. Wei Nhi pretended to be worried Sister Tuck Bao quickly apologized to the master. But inside she was gleeful that thanks to Tuck Bao's example. She came off the best the ghost flying above Wei Nhi's head. Saw this girl wasn't bad for striving so for a little fame. But Mr. To spoke up you think you're who to make my niece apologize. Wei Nhi quickly took back her words sorry uncle too. I just didn't want everyone arguing. It's my stupid fault causing trouble. Her mother also quickly apologized since offending either the master or Mr. To was unacceptable. Mr. To was silent not understanding how a child could be so deceitful. Then little Wu turned to Tuck Bao master teaches that. You should ask the master if he can divine his own fate. Tuck Bao did so master Van coldly looked at her a doctor doesn't self-treat. Divining one also can't see their own fate clearly. Don't you know that Tuck Bao answered she didn't know. Since she was only a child if you can't divine your own fate. Then you probably aren't very skilled yet. The master angrily asked what talents do you have to speak of me like that. Having said that he wanted to sneak away. But everyone advised him to not mind a child. And show them his miracles instead. The master reluctantly divined that he would have small troubles. But the righteous have no fear of danger. But Tuck Bao said he divined wrongly. Let me divine for you she took out an old turtle from her backpack. And threw it forcefully to the ground look. Tuck Bao sat down watching the turtle roll back and forth. Hit the wall then roll back. The turtle stopped at Tuck Bao's feet. She looked at it intently face serious. Then Tuck Bao said oh I see Mr. Master has swindled lots of money. And is about to be arrested you'll have no worries about food and drink for life. But that manure eating guy isn't so lucky. He only gets to eat for 10 more years the disciple angrily said my master is supremely virtuous. Even the chief of police invited him. Why would he be arrested if a turtle can divine like this then anyone can be a master. Speaking of two uniformed men entered. Walking straight to master van your master van. Please come with us the stunned disciple said what are you doing. On what authority are you arresting my master do you know who he is. The police coldly laughed how would we not know. After graduating elementary school, he was a bolt threader for five years then jailed two years for theft. After release he told fortunes by the bridge to earn money. Earlier he still swindled an old woman of $3,000 for treatment. Now he still dares to defraud here. Everyone was shocked so Master Van was just a fraud. He angrily defended that was the past. Now he had attained the way and was different from before. He worked hard building his career. Only to have Tuck Bao ruin it all he even said he had just saved young master too. But Mr. Thus cold voice rang out he didn't save anyone. Just then Mr. Too entered with Diak Nian. Frowning he continued in fact I wanted to ask why yesterday you stole my mother's bank card. Master Van didn't expect to be exposed so quickly. With Mr. Too himself here there was no way to deny it. The lambs hurriedly rushed over. Fawning over Mr. Too but he coldly turned away. Mr. Too turned to Mr. To sorry my mother is old. Easily fooled they flattered her a little and she gave the invitation. I just had someone kick them out. Didn't expect they were still here everyone realized the invitation was forged. No wonder they went along with the frauds. Turns out they were frauds too. Daring to scam even the elderly how hateful. Claiming Mr. Too had entrusted them. Truly shameless if others knew they had stolen the invitation what would they think? The lambs' faces burned red wanting to expand connections for themselves. They didn't expect Mr. Too to expose them like this. Mr. Too shouted at the receptionist who allowed them in. Why are they still here the receptionist trembled saying they just barged in. 
Even claiming the thus had authorized it, please don't be angry. I'll kick them out immediately now. The Lam family was truly miserable. Way nh, I couldn't accept it. Earlier, the master had said she would have a wonderful future. Even marrying young master. Now, how could she be chased out so shamefully? Truly embarrassing, the girl looked at Diak Nian behind her. Eyes brimming with tears, but Diak Nian only coldly looked at Tuck Bao. Ignoring Wei Nhi, Tuck Bao looked at the ghost above Wei Nhi's head. Clinging to the girl after this incident. The opening ceremony and ribbon cutting would be very difficult now. Not only did two frauds appear, they had also missed the auspicious timing. Even if the company succeeded later, there would still be regret. The flustered staff said Mr. to after the earlier incident. The fortune time has passed unsure how to handle the ribbon cutting ceremony. Before Mr. Ta could ponder it Tuck Bao picked up the turtle. Put it in her backpack then said don't worry cousin. I'll help you take a look clasping her hand sagely. She said at 10.18 am a shaft of light will descend from the heavens. Signaling the start of your fortune. That will be the auspicious time everyone was silent. Clearly just a child's joke. What would a kid understand but Mr. Ta didn't say another word. Ordering staff that at 10.18 a.m. as the child said. Whether there was light or not they must follow through. Everyone didn't know how to react. Indeed the Ta family really indulged Tuck Bao. Even letting her mess around with big things like this. Clearly no one believed Tuck Bao's words. The opening ceremony was about to start everyone sat in their assigned seats. Tuck Bao hugged a cup of water just then Mr. Tu led Diak Nian over to Tuck Bao. Diak Nian's face grew increasingly tense. Tuck Bao waved her hand hey sit here. Though very cold Diak Nian still sat down next to Tuck Bao. Suddenly Mrs. Tu noticed her son walking a bit strenuously. He seemed fine this morning. Could it be lingering effects from the accident? Tuck Bao curiously looked at Diak Nian. The boy walked and sat very properly. Tuck Bao sighed so young yet already an adult. Suddenly Diak Nian held out his hand. In his palm was a piece of candy. Tuck Bao asked if it was for her. Diak Nian nodded Tuck Bao thought. Both children but only one piece of candy. If Tuck Bao ate it and big brother cried what then? She thought it best to clarify that he was only giving it to Tuck Bao right. Diak Nian turned away I only took it at the entrance. Didn't intend to eat it Tuck Bao nodded. Confirming Diak Nian wouldn't eat it before quickly grabbing the candy. She glanced forward seeing Mr. Tu and Mr. Tu talking. Then swiftly unwrapped and popped the candy in her mouth. Tuck Bao then sat straight placing both hands on her knees. Eyes looking straight ahead. Her actions were unbelievable quick. Though Diak Nian asked tasty. Tuck Bao still placed a finger to her lips signaling silence. If cousin noticed he wouldn't let her eat candy anymore. Diak Nian was quiet for a bit then couldn't help whispering you're afraid of cousin. Tuck Bao shook her head not at all. Just afraid if my teeth rot cousin and granny won't let me eat candy anymore. Diak Nian thought if he had known he wouldn't have given it to her. You should nt eat more but Tuck Bao covered her mouth. Shaking her head it's in Tuck Bao's tummy already can't spit it out. No matter what Diak Nian said Tuck Bao kept shaking her head it's in my tummy already can't spit it out. The candy is very sweet Tuck Bao likes it a lot. If found out ill just swallow it. Diak Nian couldn't help glancing at Tuck Bao again why do you like candy so much? Tuck Bao hugged her cup answering because life is too hard. Diak Nian found it hard to believe these words came from Tuck Bao's mouth. Her little face was so pure. Tuck Bao continued in the past stepmother hit me. Dad didn't listen to my explanations. I was very sad that feeling was bitter. Later I found a candy under the sofa. At the time I was hungry the sweetness made me remember it forever. Mr. Hoang didn't believe it I want to see if there really will be light at that time. If so ill shave my head right away. Everyone whispered not believing a little girl watching movies would pretend to be a fortune teller like this. Before Mr. To went on stage. He patted Tuck Bao's head behave here with Uncle Kook. Don't run around randomly to prove shed certainly behave. Tuck Bao tightly grasped assistant Kook's arm. Seeing the cute girl little vis heart softened Mr. To. Il watched the child carefully. Mr. To nodded then stepped on stage giving a brief speech. Loud firecrackers sounded as he cut the red ribbon. Just then the sun rose in the east. Shining straight down on the stage. In a flash the decorative ball center stage was enveloped in a polychromatic glow. 
The audience below was stunned, looking at the light on stage, wondering where it came from. They looked up. The colored glass roof was shining directly down on the stage. The one who had sworn there could be no light was murmuring, "Impossible. It must have been prearranged." The one next to him said, "It was just sunlight shining down by chance. Nothing mystical." They checked their watches. It was exactly 10:18 a.m. They looked back at Tuck Bao. Truly unbelievable! If it was coincidence, how did she guess the exact time? Right on time, as foretold. The Tu family really had a fortunate daughter. After the ribbon cutting, Mr. Two and Mr. Two were surrounded by reporters. Not able to get away yet, Mrs. Two told Diak Nian, "Watch Sister Tuck Bao carefully, okay?" Diak Nian coldly answered, "I know already." Mrs. Two helplessly thought earlier Diak Nian had talked to Tuck Bao very attentively, yet was indifferent to his own mother. Tuck Bao pulled Assistant Cook's hand, "Hurry, Uncle." Tuck Bao wanted cake. Diak Nian stuffed his hands in his pockets. Following behind Tuck Bao, she raised her hands but couldn't reach the cakes on the table. Diak Nian immediately helped her take one down. Tuck Bao happily thanked him, then carefully held the cake sitting down on the sofa. She took a bite, saying, "It's so sweet, sweeter than first love." Assistant Cook chuckled, asking, "How do you know what first love is?" Tuck Bao answered with her mouth full. The melon seller said that. Then she imitated the seller's sweet, juicy melons. Sweeter than first love. Eat melons. Forget first love. Cook was surprised and couldn't help laughing loudly. Tuck Bao is so adorable. Diak Nian turned away, very cute. But just that, Tuck Bao ate very happily. She glanced at him, then suddenly asked, "Why are you named Sound of Losing Uncle? Were you born wanting to cry out seven times?" Cook burst out laughing. He didn't recognize himself. Like a frog, he used a wet towel to wipe the cream around Tuck Bao's mouth. Then explained his full name was Cook Hong, not Sound of Losing. Tuck Bao asked again. Then what is Cook Uncle? Diak Nian spoke up. Its letters combined for pronunciation in the Latin alphabet. Tuck Bao curiously asked, "What's the Latin alphabet?" Indeed, a preschooler knew no elementary knowledge. Cook Hong held in his laugh, shed no once she started school. Tuck Bao nodded. I see. So cousin and big brother Diak Nian are smart from going to school already. Studying is great. Tuck Bao wants to go to school too. Cousin Cook smiled at the girl's serious attitude. Let me discuss with big cousin later. A rich lady came over asking, "Hello, what's your name?" Tuck Bao politely answered, "I am Tu Tu Tuck." The lady was stunned. Why Tu Tu? But Tuck Bao looked at her suspiciously. My name is Tu Tu Tuck. Then she turned and asked Diak Nian, "So how do you pronounce it in the Latin alphabet?" Diak Nian taught her a sentence. Tuck Bao turned back. Do you know T O T U C? The little girl pitied the lady. You're already old yet haven't gone to school. Don't know the Latin alphabet. How pitiful! The flustered lady covered her mouth, laughing. Tuck Bao is so cute. But Tuck Bao asked, "What's stuck in your throat? Ate too fast and couldn't swallow. Your voice sounds so weird. Very unpleasant to hear. Do you have some illness making you talk unclearly?" Tuck Bao was honestly concerned, not intending to insult anyone, but the other girl was very embarrassed. While everyone else whispered agreement that Tuck Bao spoke truly, the nasal-voiced girl Chao Vu, always giggling, just then cousin Tu approached, slicked back hair, still wearing thin-framed glasses, shirt collar wide open, wearing a shiny gray jacket. He looked like a gangster. Seeing cousin Tu, Tuck Bao hurriedly stuffed the rest of the cake in her mouth. He smiled lightly. My little Tuck Bao is eating something. Tuck Bao shook her head, fussing, not eating anything. To lack wiped the cream around the girl's mouth. Naughty kid. You are exposed next time. Remember to wipe your mouth after eating. Chao Vu next to him shyly moved closer. To lack's personality matched his looks. Sickly and spoiled, yet irresistibly charming. Moreover, he was one of the eight sons of the Tu clan. Marrying into a rich family would be wonderful. Thinking this, Chao Vu's eyes lit up. But Talak carried Tuck Bao up and took the wet towel from Ku Kong's hand, casually wiping the girl's mouth. He said, "No need. Too much in your stomach will burst. A kitten that sneaks food should remember to clean up neatly." Remember, Tuck Bao obediently nodded. Yes, remember. Seeing Talak pamper Tuck Bao, Chao Vu pretended to like children. Tuck Bao is so cute. Sister will hold you. She lifted her hands, but Tuck Bao seriously asked, "Are you congested with phlegm?" The surrounding people were surprised, then quietly laughed. Chao Vu's face darkened. Tuck Bao frowned, thinking, 
Then she said, Oh, you're congested with a pair of plastic slippers. Diek Nian, standing next to her, corrected it's put on an act. Remember, Tuck Bao nodded heavily, remembered. Chao Vu was very annoyed about to explain when Cousin Tu walked away. Carrying Tuck Bao, the people around giggled, the child spoke so cleverly. The little one spoke truly, I've always found her very irritating. Chao Vu shook her head, it's not me. My voice is naturally like this, but to lack paid her no attention. Going straight to the back garden with Tuck Bao. After a while he suddenly realized something was off. Diek Nian was still silently following behind. He asked why are you still following us. Diek Nian answered dad told me to watch the girl. Mr. Hoang turned and asked little V this boy's personality is even colder than his dad. He refuses to do anything he doesn't want to. Yet now he obediently listens. He's had to keep watch since little. Not letting her sit together with Tuck Bao on the swing. Tulak played between the two children. Very childishly Tuck Bao how did you know at 1018 there'd be light? I was so shocked seeing the glow appear. Tuck Bao rummaged in her bag for the turtle saying it's like this. Watch closely cousin Il demonstrate for you. Tulak was shocked you brought a whole turtle here. Aren't you afraid it'll suffocate? The turtle spun around on the ground. He asked so what did you divine? Tuck Bao seriously lifted a finger cousin will soon have relations with women. Going out lately be careful. Or a succubus will snatch you away to lack was stunned succubus. Tuck Bao said succubus is like harassing others. To lack sneered how troublesome. Maybe bird droppings will land on my head. Or apricot blossoms he said seriously truly annoying. Tuck Bao nodded heavily very annoying. Cousin will suffer a lot Mr. Hoang chuckled the more said the more nonsensical. To lack suggested letting him help neaten her hair into cute pigtails. He skillfully plaited Tuck Bao's messy hair into two fishbone braids. Her hair became neater and cuter. Tuck Bao smiled brightly thank you cousin. Diek Nian glanced over seeing Tuck Bao's smiling eyes form crescent moons. Very adorable but he quickly looked away. When to lack glanced at him. Suddenly there was a flash with clicking sound. A paparazzo had sneakily taken the shot. To lack shouted who dares take candid shots. I hate sneak shots the most. The man quickly apologized Mr. Tu. I am a journalist I couldn't resist because the image of you braiding little Miss Tuck Bao's hair is too cute. I wanted to capture it as an exclusive shot. Please be assured I'll delete the photos I just took. I'll be going now but Talak called him back who said you could go. If you want to shoot then come here and do it properly. Take beautiful shots of my little niece Tuck Bao. The reporter's eyes lit up brightly then little Miss Tuck Bao looked this way and give a smile. So cute Talak naturally stood beside her. Usually I really hate being photographed. But if it's with this cute girl then it's fine. Moreover we must let the whole world know about the darling little princess of the Ta clan. Thinking this cousin too suddenly remembered Tuck Bao's prediction. His heart sank if it was true about Chao Vu. If the apricot blossom Tuck Bao mentioned was her. Tonight he would slay someone under the moonlight. Chao Vu came over next to him. Sincerely saying Mr. To I must have said something wrong. If I apologize will you forgive me? Hearing this cousin Tu's eyes lit up. He asked did anyone say you're very irritating? Chao Vu was stunned oh because of my voice. But this is truly my original voice. If you don't like it ill start voice training from today. To lack sneered the reporter immediately snapped photos. What's going on if these shots are published? They'll be the focus next week. Tuck Bao thought then asked Diek Nian is this what's called a lingering attachment. Diek Nian HM Med Tuck Bao nodded Tuck Bao just learned something new. Then she turned to Chao Vu you're lingeringly attached to cousin Tu. Chao Vu awkwardly smiled don't say that Tuck Bao. I just want to be famous. The reporter kept continuously shooting. Endure a little longer. As long as there's a scandal with Mr. Tu it'll quickly become famous. But immediately Talak coldly said if you publish any shots from today. I won't let you off he pushed up his glasses. His gaze making the reporter's back run cold. The man quickly said yes Mr. Tu. Then can the shot of you and little Miss Tuck Bao be published. He answered yes the reporter was shocked. Previously on red carpets Mr. Tu had never refused photos with actresses. Turns out he detested Chao Vu that much. Not waiting for Chao Vu to speak Talak turned and left. Chao Vu was devastated her plan was ruined. He lightly patted Diak Nian's head. 
messing up his neatly combed hair. Diek Nian followed behind sullenly. Tuck Bao sat on Cousin Tu's shoulders. Giggling Big Brother looks like a rooster. The reporter quickly snapped this scene. No scandal of Mr. Tu but they could speculate on the relationship between the two and two clans. If the two families truly allied, the capital's business circles would be strongly shaken. Tu Lak and Tuck Bao returned to the hall. Tuck Bao tiredly patted her stomach be good tummy. Cousin Want let you eat cake. We have to indulge him. No candy no drinks either. How pitiful to lack thought. This little one sure acts a lot. Before they could settle down someone approached Tuck Bao. Hearing she was skilled at fortune telling. Help auntie see when my son's wife can give birth. Tuck Bao help big sister see when shell get rich. Tuck Bao acted mature granny. Your grandson's wife will give birth in three days. The old woman was shocked unconsciously holding out her hand for a tip. The old lady said my daughter-in-law is just eight months pregnant. Still far from her due date. She was a little disappointed it was so off from the prediction. The old lady thought Tuck Bao had some skill. At least she should have said within half a month. She grumbled while leaving my daughter-in-law will give birth in a month at the earliest. Not accurate at all. The other girl asked what she must do to become rich like big cousin. Tuck Bao answered seriously big sis can only dream. You can't be richer than little cousin. Hearing this the girl immediately left. Mumbling impossible. Tulak held in his laugh this is called modern superstition. Tuck Bao curiously asked what's modern superstition. Diak Nian sat straight hands on knees and explained for example. After a nightmare people comfort themselves it was just a dream. But if it's a good dream they think they'll have good fortune. The left eye jumping means something good. The right eye jumping they tell themselves it's fatigue. Similar phenomena are called modern superstition. Suddenly Tuck Bao looked at Diak Nian with round eyes big brother. This is the most you've said. So amazing Diak Nian shyly looked away. He thought Tuck Bao would praise his knowledge but no. Cousin Tu smiled children only notice strange things. After Min Tin Kampani's opening ceremony ended. Tuck Bao dozed off into lax arms. Mr. Tu took off his vest and covered the girl with it. After bidding Mr. Tu farewell the two families cars departed. Diak Nian silently watched the two families car fade into the distance. If they met again he would bring two candies for Tuck Bao. Two because she liked to eat no more afraid her teeth would decay. Beside the two family car a short fat man stood waiting. After seeing the two families off he breathed a sigh of relief. Little Miss Tuck Bao of the two family was the true granddaughter of the clan. If the girl could save Diak Nian from the brink of death. Could she also cure his mother's strange illness? Mr. Duong as he entered. Instructed his assistant that from now on whenever little Tuck Bao came. Without prior notice immediately invite the best pastry chef in the province to make fresh cakes. And remember she doesn't like overly sweet cakes. No chocolate she likes fruit tarts. Fruit candies write it down in the staff handbook. The baffled assistant wondered why the staff handbook needed these things. In her dream Tuck Bao felt someone staring at her intently. She turned and saw an old woman tenderly watching her. Tuck Bao gave a start and woke up. Li Thuong beside her was startled asking if something happened. Tuck Bao's eyes still held fear master in my dream I saw an old woman. Her eyes were sunken cheeks hollowed. Looked very frightening Li Thuong was shocked hollow cheeks. Sunken eyes blue pallor a dead person's face. Have you met her before Tuck Bao shook her head no. I don't know her ghosts have already started coming for Tuck Bao. Master Li expression grew more worried Tuck Bao. From now on tell Master about anything you see in dreams. Remember Tuck Bao was puzzled why Master seemed so serious. The sleepy girl asked I know Master came to teach me. I know mom invited you to teach me. I still remember Li Thuong suddenly fell silent for a moment. At first I also thought meeting to Kam Nok was coincidental. But now it seems Tuck Bao's fate isn't so easily protected. It even needs merit to prolong her life. Then Li Thuong suddenly asked do you remember the soul jar I gave you? Tuck Bao lifted her hand yes I remember she touched the jar lightly previously master didn't tell me. This jar needs to be filled if not filled. You may depart to a very distant place unable to return. Tuck Bao's sleepy eyes were completely alert. She said but I just met you all. Granny doesn't want to leave you yet. I can pour in water to fill the jar right. Right Li Thuong sighed this soul jar only contains souls. 
That's why it's called a soul jar tuck bow's eyes were round then what should I do? She thought maybe capturing ghosts to fill it. Catch 100 ordinary ghosts. 49 hungry ghosts and just 18 evil ghosts should be enough. Tuck Bao looked at the jar master could that ugly lady in the lake fill the jar. She looked very pained she's useless. Can't even fill this small jar. The ugly female ghost shrieked hey girly errant your demands too high for me. Suddenly Tuck Bao cried oh master. The ghost on Wei Ni's head is also an evil ghost right. Saying so she jumped out of bed ill go find Ha Van. Mr. Tran asked looking for him for what? Tuck Bao glanced at him master is so slow to understand. To find Wei Nhi of course I must go where Ha Van is. They go to the same school. The girl looked at him pityingly master must be dead too long his brain is damaged. Li Thuong was shocked I am being looked down on by a four-year-old girl. Tuck Bao is increasingly strange. Both the extraordinary talent and needing merit to prolong life. At first I just happened to meet Mrs. to right after she passed away. Then naturally came to Tuck Bao's side. He waved his hand and a book appeared. Tuck Bao's name had two lines of red text if she threatened to kill someone at 3 a.m. wouldn't let them live past 5 a.m. Only Lord Yama has that ability. The little girl knocked on Ha Van's door. Her brother's voice called from inside come in Tuck Bao. Here to ask me something again. If it's how much five caddies of poop is again I want answer. I calculated a whole page for you already. But you only remember how many milliliters is one bucket. Not accurate at all Tuck Bao hugged the rabbit. Looking very expectant big brother Ha Van. Can you take me to school with you tomorrow? But Ha Van coldly said no can't do. I hate Hangerson the most. Moreover I still have to study who has time to bring you along. Tuck Bao pleaded but before she could finish. Ha Van pushed her out the door. Yelling stop bothering me. Then he slammed the door shut Tuck Bao looked at the closed door. Maybe she should change into a cuter dress and try again. The girl ran back changed into a fluffy dress then returned to her brother's door. Before she could finish speaking the door slammed shut again. Seeing Tuck Bao chased off twice. Li Thuong was angry this brat dares treat my darling like this. Tell granny to come speak hell surely agree to take you. But Tuck Bao shook her head no can't do that master. Kids problems should be solved by kids. Running to tell adults right away is too childish. Li Thuong laughed then what will you do? Ha Van isn't a child who can be persuaded. Tuck Bao smiled brightly kids have kids ways master. Let me handle it not long after. Tuck Bao took a cup of fruit juice. Knocked on her brother's door again this time it was a while before Ha Van opened. Yelling what else do you want? I almost solved this function problem. Got interrupted by you again so annoying. Tuck Bao was startled it seemed she was bothering him. But the angry Ha Van pushed the cup away I want drink. Can you please not come here and bother me? The juice spilled all over Tuck Bao. The smile on her face gradually faded away. She said sorry I was wrong big brother. I should nt have bothered you while you were studying. Seeing Tuck Bao's sad face. Ha Van thought uh oh she's about to cry. How annoying give me the water he said. Ha Van expected Tuck Bao to cry. But instead she smiled brightly. He complained why choose orange juice. I really dislike orange juice oh well. Seeing you so eager and I am also thirsty. Not that I like you. Ha Van awkwardly said thanks ha. Huh? After this glass you won't owe me anymore. Anyway I won't agree to take you anywhere. I still have homework to do. Go play by yourself saying so the boy entered his room. Emptied the cup seeing this Tuck Bao was very happy. She cried bye bye big brother Ha Van. But Ha Van had already closed the door. Tuck Bao musn't bother him anymore. Wait until he's free to ask again later. Suddenly Tuck Bao scrunched her face thinking. But how would Tuck Bao know when big brother Ha Van wasn't busy? Li Thuong said just have that ugly lady follow and watch him. She can pass through walls. Regular people can't see her. Tuck Bao's eyes lit up she quickly pulled the girl from the jar can you help me watch what big brother Ha Van is doing. The girl whined I can do it. But before ordering me around. Could you drop the ugly lady phrase? Muttering so she passed through the wall into the room. But Ha Van wasn't there. So she continued through the bathroom door. Inside Ha Van was sitting on the toilet. Holding a math book looking serious. Suddenly the girl was shocked why is my shadow reflected in the mirror. Just then Ha Van lifted his head. Their eyes meeting. 
Ha Van was startled pants not pulled up yet. Bottom not wiped clean he dashed out of the bathroom. Running for his life dad save me. Tuck Bao stood waiting outside. Suddenly the door burst open Ha Van dashed out. Bare Bottom seeing this Tuck Bao also ran after in panic. Ha Van ran desperately not daring to look back. He yelled dad save me just then Mr. Tu emerged from his office. Seeing Ha Van run over. Pants slipping he grabbed his pants. Behind him Tuck Bao also followed. Mr. Tu caught Ha Van and took him into his arms. Suddenly he smelled a wonderful fragrance. It turned out to be the smell of an unwiped bottom after using the toilet. Ha Van was still panicking there's a ghost. Tuck Bao panted as she followed no ghost big brother. It's me not a ghost. The ugly girl is the ghost but usually people can't see her. The girl flying behind was also surprised how can you see me. You can still see me she went near Ha Van but he kept looking back. Li Thuong found this even stranger. Ha Van looked back only seeing Tuck Bao standing behind him. No one else Tuck Bao hurriedly covered her eyes why did you run out without pants on? Ha Van frantically pulled up his pants but felt very uncomfortable. He had never been so embarrassed. I really saw a very ugly female ghost. Hearing this the girl felt psychologically attacked I am that ugly. Mr. Tu told Ha Van to bathe first then went with him to check inside. Ha Van softly said maybe I saw wrong. Mr. Tu was about to say something but didn't. He only instructed anyway protect your sister well. Ha Van said but Tuck Bao said she wants to go to school with me tomorrow. Mr. Tu immediately told his son to bring her along to school tomorrow and he would handle everything else himself just watch over Tuck Bao carefully. The next morning before the siblings Ha Van and Tuck Bao went to school. Tunyat Tran instructed them to be sure to pay attention to safety. Ha Van looked back at Tuck Bao. Face cold saying first I warn you. Don't cry at school. Or I won't care about you. Tuck Bao obediently nodded okay. I understand Ha Van kept a stern face. Took Tuck Bao's hand and got in the car Tuck Bao obediently followed her brother. The other students peeked out. Curiously looking at tiny Tuck Bao. They were quite surprised that one so little was already going to school. One asked Ha Van why he brought such a little kid. Tuck Bao looked up seeing Diak Nian sitting in the last row. Her face immediately brightened but Diak Nian coldly HM med. Tuck Bao curiously asked big brother are you unhappy. Diak Nian turned away very conflicted inside. Today he didn't bring candy. Didn't know how to act with Tuck Bao. Tuck Bao was puzzled why's big brother Diak Nian like this today. Wei Nhi also appeared at school. His friends admired that he came in the school's private car. Because the school's private car used special armored materials. With guards like veteran commandos. It cost around 100,000 RMB per month. Only a few rich students got to ride the private school car. But in truth Wei Nhi was driven to school by her mom. Each time she calculated the timing to arrive together with the private car. So everyone would think she came off that car too. Those friends who didn't know the truth gazed at her admiringly. Satisfying her pride. Now on Wei Nyi's head an ugly demon cackled at such a young age yet so greedy already. Truly wonderful nourishment for me. The demon sucked in a stream of black air from Wei Nhi. On the other hand Tuck Bao obediently followed behind Havan. Asking big brother ill be in your class okay. Can I sit next to you? Do you know which class Wei Nhi is in? Ha Van finally lost his composure. Yelling quiet I feel so embarrassed. Others all go to school themselves only I drag a little sister along. So shameful Tuck Bao immediately covered her mouth. Softly said sorry big brother her round eyes looked at Ha Van. Hand tightly covering her mouth Tuck Bao suddenly put her hand down. Saying don't worry big brother I'll go find my lamb myself. My little lamb where are you? I'll go look for it Ha Van was startled. His mouth twitched telling her not to attend his class but she insisted on following. Who would let her look for a lamb in school? Ha Van bid his schoolmates farewell then went up to class. He was very jealous of Tuck Bao. Wishing he could also be carefree like her. While he had to pamper his little sister. Truly troublesome seeing Tuck Bao still standing there. Ha Van irritably pulled her along up to class. Stepping into class his friends laughed loudly. Teasing Ha Van is this your sister? Why do you even bring her to school? Others act like older brothers you act the little brother. 
The whole class burst out laughing. Ha Van felt extremely embarrassed. He swore he'd never bring his sister to school again. Stepping into class, Tuck Bao immediately saw Wei Nhi. She cried, "Master, there's Wei Nhi. On his head is a very fat lamb. Oh no, it's an ugly ghost." Li Thuong whispered, "Indeed, here it is. Let's watch the show today." Tuck Bao Li Thuong said, "Let me see if you've made any progress." Just then, a female teacher entered. Seeing Ha Van and Tuck Bao, she smiled brightly. "Are you Tuck Bao?" She heard today Tuck Bao came with her brother to experience elementary school, right? Tuck Bao nodded vigorously. Yes, teacher. I came to attend school. She couldn't say she came to catch ghosts, or the teacher would also run from the bathroom frightened like Ha Van. Seeing Tuck Bao's innocence, the teacher laughed as Tuck Bao wanted to sit beside her brother. Tuck Bao pointed to the spot beside Wei Nhi teacher. I want to sit next to Big Sis Wei Nhi. The teacher was surprised. What luck! Wei Ni's deskmate is absent today. Li Thuong raised a brow. Right, good luck. Now Wei Nhi seemed unhappy. Whenever Tuck Bao appeared, it was never good. She didn't want to sit with Tuck Bao. Suddenly, the girl before her turned and said to Wei Nhi, "Wow, not only close to the two family, you're also very close to the two families, little girl." Wei Ni's dissatisfaction vanished, replaced by overflowing pride. She smiled. Just happened to meet Tuck Bao when camping. That's all. Wei Nhi patted the seat beside her. Sit here, Tuck Bao. Tuck Bao grabbed her backpack and ran over next to Wei Nhi. Sitting down, Wei Nhi meant to chat with her, but saw Tuck Bao take out an old turtle and pair it from her bag. Wei Nhi was stunned. The teacher was also shocked. Tuck Bao said, "Don't worry, teacher. Grandpa Turtle won't make noise." Then she explained, "Tuck Bao came to school." So they'd be very lonely at home. So they insisted on coming along. The teacher smiled. Riley turtles and birds know nothing of loneliness. No such a little girl wouldn't know either. Tuck bow class is now. If they make noise, it'll affect the class. Then you'll have to take them away. Tuck bow looked at her with round eyes, nodding obediently. The teacher started the lesson. The female ghost looked at Li Thuong, her eyes doubtful. She couldn't sense any vengeful spirits from little Tuck bow. Didn't know what kind of ghost that was. Li Thuong now explained to Tuck Bao it was a prideful ghost. Tuck Bao after class well catch it. Make an appointment with your friend at the forest edge. Tuck Bao obediently nodded okay. Yes master the girl tilted her head towards Wei Nhi. Tone arrogant after school don't go home yet. Meet at the forest edge Wei Nhi was listening intently to the lecture. Startled this was just the first class yet she was threatened already. The first class quickly ended. The teacher smiled, asking Tuck Bao if she understood anything. She didn't expect the little girl to understand the lesson, but Tuck Bao nodded. Yes, she understood. The teacher was surprised. Oh, then I'll test you. A builder had to make a 100 meter long road. The first day he completed 64 meters. Six days later, he finished the remainder. How many meters did he do each day? Tuck Bao answered six meters. The teacher was amazed. You're so clever. But Tuck Bao wondered why did he do 64 meters the first day, then only six meters each day after. Why not finish it all from the start? Teaching for years, this was the first time I couldn't answer a four-year-old's question. How embarrassing! While the teacher was at a loss for how to answer, the math teacher passing by asked, "Did our little Tuck Bao understand anything today?" Tuck Bao nodded, "Yes, I understood." The teacher told the math teacher, "Tuck Bao was very smart." Remembered everything taught. The math teacher was intrigued. Tuck Bao is that clever? Then I'll test her. Tuck Bao, let's say your friend has in her pocket 50 candy sticks, 70 gumdrops, and a hundred fruit candies. She ate all 50 candy sticks, 60 gumdrops, and a hundred fruit candies. Then what candy was left? Tuck Bao shook her head. My friend has diabetes now. I think like my granny. Grandpa said granny got diabetes from eating too much candy. The two teachers were surprised. Li Thuong laughed loudly. The answer wasn't wrong either. Seeing the two teachers pay Tuck Bao attention, Wei Nhi was unhappy inside. She said, "Tuck Bao, you're wrong. The candy sticks and fruit candies are gone. Only ten gumdrops left. Not diabetes." Wei Nhi tried very hard to show she was good at math, hoping the teachers would praise her. But the teachers only paid attention to Tuck Bao, not Wei Nhi at all. Wei Nhi felt embarrassed and hurt. 
Her answer was right, but no one cared. The teacher patted Tuck Bao's head, telling her to find him if she needed anything, then left. The kids immediately surrounded Tuck Bao, curiously looking at the turtle on the desk. Why did Tuck Bao bring a turtle to school? Why put it on its back? Tuck Bao explained, if right side up, the turtle would run away. A kid asked about the little parrot too. Tuck Bao sat on the floor, sticking her face to the drawer to look at the parrot. Does it eat bread? Everyone praised the beautiful, smart parrot. Tuck Bao became the class darling. Wei Nhi was very angry previously. After class, the kids liked gathering around Wei Nhi to chat. Now they all flocked to Tuck Bao. Besides Wei Nhi being unhappy, there was also Ha Van. His sister was just an ordinary girl. Why didn't she come to her big brother after class? Ha Van loudly closed his book, hearing this. Wei Nhi looked over at Ha Van. Seemed he also disliked Tuck Bao. Wei Nhi stepped closer. Everyone likes Tuck Bao so much. That girl speaks so well, not like me. Wei Nhi hoped Ha Van would comfort the little one. What was there to like about Tuck Bao? He preferred kids like Wei Nhi more. But unexpectedly, Ha Van bluntly said, "You're only this old yet already learned to fake innocence. What are you doing in front of me?" Wei Nhi's eyes turned red. Why do you say that about me? Ha Van angrily yelled, "Get lost!" Seeing Wei Nhi still hadn't left, he irritably said, "Hey faker, get out right now or I'll hit you!" Just then, the class bell rang. The kids hurried back to their seats after class. In just ten minutes, Tuck Bao made many friends. The girl was very happy. Suddenly, a slip of paper flew from behind onto her desk. Tuck Bao curiously opened and read it carefully. Dear Tuck Bao, have you eaten yet? If not, let's eat roasted chicken this evening. Li Thuong was startled. First graders still couldn't write well, yet wrote a love letter. Tuck Bao rummaged in her backpack, taking out a pencil. She bent over the desk, writing a reply carefully. Okay, I really like roasted chicken. Let's eat together this evening. Li Thuong looked at her, mumbling as she read, but the paper only had random scribbles. Seeing Tuck Bao fold it and pass it to the friend behind her, suddenly Wei Nhi raised her hand. Teacher, Tuck Bao and Duong Tuhang are passing notes. Wei Nhi knew the teacher hated talking. Passing notes during class, Tuck Bao would surely be scolded. The English teacher sternly said, "Give me that note." Duong Tuhang's face paled as he handed over the note. The teacher read the contents, then looked at Tuck Bao. The school board kneels before the Tu family daily, telling me to treat Tuck Bao specially. Not a chance today. I'll show them what discipline is. The teacher looked down at Tuck Bao. Both of you take your things and stand outside. Tuck Bao had never been to school before, but felt she was probably wrong. Before she could finish, the teacher slammed her ruler on the desk. She didn't care whose child you were, how wealthy in her class. You had to follow her rules. Tuck Bao wanted to explain she didn't know you couldn't pass notes during class. She just wanted to apologize, but seeing the teacher's stern expression, Tuck Bao silently took her bag outside. Wei Nhi looked gleeful enough to laugh out loud. The ghost on her head took a deep breath, chuckling wickedly. How unexpected! In just a moment, absorbed so much resentment energy already. Soon this body will be mine. Now dark rings slowly appeared under Wei Nhi's eyes. The teacher said, "From the lectern, remember this well, everyone. No matter how high-ranking or wealthy your parents are, in my class you must obey the rules." Suddenly, the teacher looked at Ha Van, coldly smiling. "Tuck Bao is your sister, right? I heard as soon as she arrived at your home, she made your second aunt and uncle divorce, right? A disobedient child like her needs discipline. Don't follow her example." Hearing this, Ha Van slammed the desk, standing up, voice cold. "Don't speak badly of my sister." You're a teacher, yet don't teach. Only speak badly of others in class. Truly a disgrace to the teaching profession. As he walked out the door, he continued, "My second aunt caused the divorce. It had nothing to do with my sister. Right now, my second aunt is still in jail. Would you like to join her?" The teacher was stunned, didn't expect this usually silent student to dare talk back like that. She shook with anger, passing the lectern. Ha Van suddenly stopped coldly, saying, "Do you know the chemical element number fifty-one? Its antimony symbol S B." Having said so, he grabbed his bag and left without turning back. Watching Ha Van's back, the teacher snarled, "Don't ever set foot in my class again. I won't teach a rude student like you." In contrast, his friends looked at him like a cool badass idol. In the hall, on Tuck Bao's head was the turtle.
On the turtle was the parrot Tuck Bow side. The parrot echoed with a chirp too. Then Ha Van stepped out seeing Tuck Bow really standing still in the hallway. He was surprised into silence forget it. Aren't you looking for your fat lamb it'll take you to find it. Tuck Bow was astonished there's really a fat lamb at school. Though a bit troublesome with money's super power. What can't be done. Not to mention a fat lamb even a lavish feast could be arranged for you. Tuck Bao peeked through the classroom window. But anyway Wei Nhi wasn't Tuck Bao's close friend. Eating the fat lamb was more important. Ha Van was confused what's that Tuck Bao. Tuck Bao smiled brightly nothing. She quickly put on her backpack. Stuffed the turtle and parrot inside then said let's go big brother. Duong Tu Hang watched Tuck Bao leave. Gaze full of admiration but didn't dare follow. Wu Hang International School's cafeteria had two small shops on both sides and a food court. As a top private school the food quality was naturally the best. Just the prices were also expensive. Ha Van ordered one roasted lamb. Two roasted lamb legs for my niece. Tuck Bao quickly added also a prawn and apple slice. Grandpa Turtle and Little Parrot have to eat too. Ha Van sighed adding a plate of fresh prawns and sliced apples. The seller HM med but said it's still early ingredients aren't ready yet. But before he could say more Ha Van took out his bank meal card ill pay double the price up front okay. The seller happily said sure. Give me 15 minutes Tuck Bao's eyes widened praising you're so awesome. Ha Van didn't understand why he suddenly felt proud. He grumbled oh be quiet you're so annoying the food was quickly brought out. Tuck Bao took the parrot out of her bag. Fed it a slice of apple before eating herself. Suddenly Ha Van said wait ill get you gloves to wear. Thank you big brother Tuck Bao happily dug in the roasted lamb legs made her drool. Dripping onto the table Ha Van frowned don't thank me. You're drooling. He used a napkin to wipe his little sister's mouth. It wasn't that he doted on and pampered her. Just that seeing a four year old drooling. Head be too embarrassed Tuck Bao ate while unclearly saying you should eat too. Don't mind me Ha Van didn't know when had become a server. Cutting her food for her quiet if I don't feed you. When will you finish hurry up and eat. Fourth period is Vietnamese class. Tuck Bao wondered don't you hate Vietnamese class. Tuck Bao remembered Ha Van liked reading and math. And weird numbers too. On one side Tuck Bao happily ate. On the other the prideful ghost on Wei Nhi's head became more and more arrogant. At first Wei Nhi sat upright. Now he felt like carrying a mountain. Very tired suddenly he felt his chair get kicked. He turned back the classmate behind startled him Wei Nhi. Are you okay didn't sleep well last night. Wei Nhi shook her head the friend passed a small slip of paper. He opened it a long scribble was on it. The ghost on his head cackled having someone like him was so prideful. Quick read it aloud for everyone to hear. Wei Nhi was elated that's right. Everyone loves me this much. I have to let them know I want everyone to see. The most beloved student isn't Tuck Bao it's me. So he raised his hand loudly saying teacher. Lu Tu Tan passed me a note. Sitting in the last row Lu Tu Tan panicked. His pen dropped the teacher angrily asked who wrote it. Read it aloud Wei Nhi opened the note. Reading loudly Wei Nhi I want to tell you one thing I love you. The teacher read each word clearly. Wei Nhi read the whole note aloud. Chin lifted arrogantly like a young master. The English teacher coldly said Lu Tu Tan. Go stand outside tomorrow call your parents to come. Young students already dating early on. I've seen many kids like you before. You'll grow up to be nothing or become a delinquent. Or just fail Lu Tu Tan's face paled. He angrily glanced at Wei Nhi then silently went outside. But Wei Nhi didn't feel guilty at all. The ghost could only affect his pride. Not his conscience. The kids crowded around asking Wei Nhi when Lu Tu Tan started liking him. He's like a toad wanting to eat a swan. But I heard many people really like Wei Nhi. Your locker must be full of love letters right? Wei Nhi humbly said no not at all. But he still let a female friend ransack his locker for all the love letters. The two giggled while reading them. Wei Nhi pretended hey stop it. Don't say nonsense I won't have anything to do with them. His friend said our Wei Nhi is engaged to the capitalist family already. In the future will be their fourth wife. Hearing this Wei Nhi didn't deny it. Amidst the admiring whispers his ambition grew. But he didn't know the ghost behind him was also swelling up. 
Passing by Li Thuong saw the scene. He murmured it's absorbed so much resentment energy already. At this rate Wei NHI will die in two days. Have to gather his soul before it takes over the body. But where's Tuck Bao now in the office? The head teacher asked Teacher Vong how her previous class went. Was Tuck Bao well behaved Teacher Vong smirked talking about discipline for a four year old. Just then another teacher came in asking Teacher Vong. Have you seen Tuck Bao I just went to look in class but didn't see her anywhere. Teacher Vong frowned how would I know. School's over who knows where the girl ran off to play. Such a little kid yet so playful. School is for studying not daycare. I have no responsibility to follow her around. The head teacher advised teacher Vong. Your temper also needs changing. This time the child is very special. The class bell rang teacher Vong held the textbooks and lesson plans in my eyes. All students are equal. No class differentiation everything is based on grades. Having said so she left the head teacher could only shake her head. Saying all are equal yet differentiating treatment based on grades. Any student who didn't get 90 points or higher in English was looked down on. On one side Tuck Bao ate until full. Burping in satisfaction Ha Van's face darkened full yet. Don't follow me tomorrow. But Tuck Bao seriously said I didn't come with you to eat. Ha Van laughed not to eat. Then what for to attend school saying that at your age. Do you think I d believe that but Tuck Bao shook her head no. I came to catch ghosts Ha Van was stunned catch what. Catch ghosts he suddenly remembered seeing the hideous female ghost in the bathroom last night. Tuck Bao asked are you afraid of ghosts. Ha Van pretended to be fierce who's afraid I just asked what ghost you're catching. Tuck Bao shyly told Ha Van catching evil ghosts. That ghost clings to Wei Ni's head and neck. Sucking in resentment energy like drinking boba milk tea. Ha Van imagined the boba drinking imagery. Suddenly he felt a cold breeze blow across his neck. He unconsciously hugged his neck tight unaware he was actually afraid. He asked Tuck Bao can those ghosts appear in the daytime too. Tuck Bao explained there are three kinds of ghosts in this world. But not all ghosts and monsters can appear in the daytime. Like that evil female ghost is called a lingering ghost. There are people who died abnormally unable to reincarnate well so they wander the living realm. Hearing this Ha Van immediately recalled the terrifying face of the ghost that scared him into peeing himself. His face was already pale then there were evil ghosts. People who died terribly. Appearing suddenly to scare people. Ha Van paled again finally there were vicious ghosts. Very ferocious and eat souls. Evil and vicious ghosts can't appear in daylight. But their very strong Ha Van suddenly covered Tuck Bao's mouth that's enough. Stop talking the boy looked around. Thinking now it's sunny. How could there be ghosts then he lowered his hand. Tuck Bao quickly said you're scared aren't you. It's okay being scared isn't shameful. If you don't know don't say anything. But it makes sense for you to be scared. Ghosts aren't that scary just bulging eyes. And severed hands immediately. Ha Van stuffed a candy into Tuck Bao's mouth. She fell silent the boy didn't want to go to class. Because his sister said a female classmate had an evil ghost. But thinking of her laughing at him for being scared. He had no choice but to endure it just then the head teacher found the siblings. Where are you two going the bell rang already. Tuck Bao unclearly said her mouth was full of candy she was too hungry. Big brother took me to eat Ha Van explained teacher Vong kicked us out. Ha Van wanted to call his dad to pick them up. Thinking about what Tuck Bao said about a female classmate having an evil ghost on her head. He didn't want to go to class anymore. Hearing Ha Van ask to contact Mr. To Nyat Tran. Mr. To couldn't intervene in this matter. So the teacher quickly advised Ha Van take your sister back to class. Then come up to study together before Ha Van could reply. Tuck Bao had obediently raised her hand saying yes. My sister and I will go to class then the siblings held hands going towards the classroom. Ha Van reluctantly followed behind. He had no other choice. If he didn't go to class he'd be mocked by his sister for being scared of ghosts. He had no choice but to endure he stepped into the classroom. As soon as he entered Ha Van reflexively looked at Wei Nhi. Just then Wei Nhi looked up. Seeing him grin at Ha Van. Ha Van suddenly shuddered. Under Wei Ni's eyes appeared a layer of grayish blue. Face pale his eyes bulged staring straight at Ha Van. The earlier strange smile when facing him. Wei Nhi wasn't like this before. Could it be true like Tuck Bao said? 
Wei Nhi was possessed by an evil ghost. Thinking so Ha Van immediately turned away. Tensely walking clumsily to his seat. Now the ghost on Wei Nhi's head whispered see that. As soon as he entered class the first person Ha Van looked at was you. He must like you too. Everyone likes Wei Nhi. Wei Nhi kept staring at Ha Van. In her heart she was proud an excellent girl like me. The boys will surely like me. Just then Tuck Bao sat down next to Wei Nhi. Tilting her head looking at the ghost auntie must be full now right. She mumbled such a big ghost could probably fill a whole soul jar a bit. Wei Nhi tiredly turned away who's full. I am different from you I am here to study properly. Not like Tuck Bao who only thinks of eating all day and night. Just then the head teacher entered the class okay kids. Let's start class now. Today we'll study the M home village. This M is a little longer than previous ones. No sooner had he finished than Wei Nhi raised her hand teacher. I've memorized this M already. The head teacher stopped. Looking at Wei Nhi oh then let's hear Wei Nhi recite it. Wei Nhi put her hands behind her back. Reciting each word smoothly with melodic inflection. Full of emotion as if performing the M on stage. The classmates all admired her wow so good. Really talented the teacher also praised very good. Sit down Wei Nhi Wei Nhi sat down. Suddenly wondering why he only praised with two words. She recited so well yet why didn't he ask if she self-studied at home. She wanted to add that she was very diligent. Wei Nhi was a little unsatisfied the ghost behind was also displeased. Tuck Bao squinted seeing many straws between Wei Nhi and the ghost. Resentment energy was flowing into Wei Nhi. Tuck Bao raised her hand teacher. Tuck Bao also knows this M. The head teacher was surprised oh. Then let's hear Tuck Bao recite it. Tuck Bao stood up looking up reciting two orioles fly the February sky. Hats of leaves hands holding hose she mispronounced a few words. Voice still childishly lisping. But very adorable the class cheered happily. The teacher praised Tuck Bao you're so smart. Did you memorize this M beforehand? No I just learned it now. Actually the teacher taught Tuck Bao. Then I recited after him but after reciting I remembered it all. Now Wei Nhi's eyes were full of disappointment and resentment. Tuck Bao isn't as good as her yet why did he praise her so much? She lost sleep memorizing this M. Saying she just learned it now is a lie. Wei Nhi felt it was very unfair. She felt he only praised Tuck Bao for being a de family niece. Not because Tuck Bao was good. If she was a de family niece she'd surely be even better than Tuck Bao. Wei Nhi's eyes flashed with jealousy. She thought if she could kill Tuck Bao then she'd become a de family niece. Without hesitation Wei Nhi swung her hand hard but only hit the back of Tuck Bao's chair. The teacher asked if anything was wrong. Wei Nhi quickly lied she was fine. But her movements were sluggish. Seeming tired the ghost thought just two more days and it could possess Wei Nhi. And come back to life again it cautiously looked at Li Thuong. Explaining Wei Nhi moved by herself not because of it. Tuck Bao whispered to master it's too fat. Can it fill a whole soul jar? The girl stared at the ghost. Eyes full of mystery. No good it only knows how to bloat up. Useless Li Thuong took out a notebook. Flipping through it asking the ghost are you a teacher at this school? The requirements to become an evil ghost are quite harsh. Tuck Bao listened carefully this is it. First an evil ghost has to die horribly. Not a normal death. Jumping off a building broken limbs run over even decapitation isn't tragic enough. The death of an evil ghost must be far more terrible. Second after death due to karma they can't leave the place of death. Only stay there repeating the scene of death. Only by accumulating resentment over time can they become evil ghosts. Li Thuong looked at the ghost curiously I am very curious how you died. The ghost's expression darkened though not knowing what kind of ghost Li Thuong was. She sensed a solemn aura from her. Tuck Bao tilted her head why did you die and bloat up so much ante. Like a balloon the ghost completely dismissed Tuck Bao. Though wary of Li Thuong thinking itself already the most evil and vicious ghost. It wasn't afraid finally the lesson ended. Suddenly Wei Nhi angrily yelled at Tuck Bao you did that on purpose just now didn't you. Deliberately stole my spotlight. Made me lose face Tuck Bao was confused deliberately what. Wei Nhi snapped deliberately stole my spotlight. The surrounding friends were surprised turning back. 
stunned looking at Wei Nhi. Wei Nhi was startled. Realizing she had blurted out her inner thoughts, she quickly grabbed her bag. If you don't come to the edge of the woods to meet me, you're just a puppy. Having said so, she left Tuck Bao immediately stuffed the turtle and parrot into her bag. Then pulled Ha Van's hand, Big Brother, let's go too. Ha Van suddenly had an ominous feeling. Go where catch ghosts, Ha Van thought he would never do that. No way, wait a minute, he called behind. But Tuck Bao didn't listen, just kept pulling him to run really fast. As soon as they stepped into the woods, Ha Van saw Wei Nhi standing with lowered head. She was slightly hunched, both hands dangling. Seeing Ha Van, she slowly raised her head, eyes bulging as she stared at him. Ha Van shuddered, his whole body went cold. Tuck Bao asked, You're scared now, right? You go back first, ill catch it. Ha Van turned to leave but stopped himself. Trying to say calmly, Who's scared? I have to stay calm. There's nothing to fear in this world. Just as he thought this, a sudden blood curdling scream came from somewhere. Ha Van jerked in fright, about to run out when Tuck Bao held him back, Big Brother. That's the parrot's voice, that's right. The parrot in my bag is singing left hand points at the moon. Right hand plucks the star's sis and I can't sing the high notes. Then the scream turned into a blood curdling shriek. At that moment, Wei Nhi stepped forward, walking lightly as if on tiptoes. Oh, you came too. The tears welling up in Ha Van's eyes instantly dried up, turning into chills all over his body. Tuck Bao stood in front of Ha Van. Her cute face turning serious. If you have issues, take it up with me. Don't scare my brother, Master. Hurry here. Tuck Bao frantically looked around. Suddenly, Li Thuong appeared, patting Tuck Bao's head, calling for someone. Tuck Bao was surprised, looking at her master today. Master, what's with you? Always disappearing. Disappearing into thin air, right? But now wasn't the time to ponder that. She asked Master, why is Wei Nhi like this? The evil ghost hasn't taken over her body yet. Li Thuong explained that's the ghost possession phenomenon. Though possession and replacement differ by only a word, the meaning is completely different. Possession is a ghost clinging to the host, influencing them. Replacement is the ghost trying to control the host but hasn't completely taken over the body yet. Tuck Bao nodded, Oh, I see it's replacement. Ha Van paled, asking what's replacement. Tuck Bao explained again, following the master's words, See. She's walking on her toes, See. Replacement is a ghost controlling the host. Right now on Wei Nhi there's a ghost pressing down on her. Using the soles of her feet to walk for her. Ha Van was both scared yet couldn't resist looking curiously. Indeed Wei Nhi was walking on her tiptoes. Soles completely straight unable to bend. Ha Van wanted to flee again but Tuck Bao said when near ghosts. Absolutely don't run people can't run faster than ghosts. And when running the soles lift up high. Making it easy for ghosts to invade Ha Van asked how to move now. Tuck Bao continued explaining in this case. It's best not to let the souls leave the ground. Can move by shuffling feet. Hopping small steps or backing away. Of course the best is defeating the ghost. Ha Van shook in fear dead defeat it you're serious. Tuck Bao patted her chest don't be scared. I am very strong ghosts like this I can stuff between my teeth. Hearing this the ghost scoffed brat who do you think you are? I am not scared of you only your master. It controlled Wei Ni's body. Asking Li Thuong what exactly do you want? Li Thuong said we'll train her disciple. As well as resolve the 18 corpses buried under the school grounds. The evil ghost's expression changed bearing fangs don't interfere in my affairs. Everyone mind their own business. At the same time it charged at Li Thuong. Suddenly Tuck Bao grabbed its ankle. Mr. Tran flung the ghost back forcefully. We're all ghosts but my teacher isn't like evil ghosts you hear. So this is how it feels to have a disciple's protection. Li Thuong smiled cunningly. Now it's the disciples turn Tuck Bao flung the ghost away. Beside them Ha Van had been stunned for a while now. Following Tuck Bao's motions with a boom. A swollen figure like a gigantic female wrestler ghost appeared before him. Another ghost Ha Van shuddered violently. About to lean on a tree but looking up saw Li Thuong. He smiled you can see me. Before Ha Van could scream. Li Thuong pasted a yellow talisman over his mouth. Telling him to watch Tuck Bao subdue the ghost silently. The ghost was startled it got flung away by a four-year-old kid. It stared at Tuck Bao asking what the girl was. Tuck Bao seriously corrected I am a person not a what. 
Oh right I am a person but also a thing. That's not right either getting to this point. The girl realized there was no correct way to describe it. Tuck Bao bulged her eyes at the ghost it's auntie who's the what. Your whole family are what's the ghost mumbled oh. You're mad now before it could finish speaking. Tuck Bao grabbed and flung it every which way. Got mad already from just that I was just voicing my thoughts. No need to overreact the ghost whined damn it. I didn't expect such a little kid to be so strong. But suddenly it yelled wait a minute. You forgot I am sitting on Wei Ni's body right now. Hitting me like this aren't you worried about badly injuring your friend. It wanted to use Wei Nhi as a shield. But after two seconds of silence. Tuck Bao shook her head she's not Tuck Bao's friend. Better hurt than drained of blood by a ghost. So Tuck Bao continued punching the ghost's body forcefully. Seeing it couldn't win the ghost glanced at Li Thuong then Tuck Bao. Deciding to flee but the red thread on Tuck Bao's wrist glowed faintly. Helping her pull it back Tuck Bao used all her tiny strength. To fling around the possessed host. Wei Nhi got flung along too. Luckily Tuck Bao only held the ghost's leg not the girl herself. Otherwise with that strength Wei Nhi would have been smashed long ago. But now the girl wasn't much better off either. Finally Tuck Bao forcefully flung the ghost out of Wei Ni's body. At that point Wei Nhi had collapsed unconscious. Tuck Bao sighed wiping sweat from her brow. So tired master didn't help at all. Just taught this one move yet it took so much effort already. But oh well it's done anyway. Afterwards Li Thuong and Ha Van were stunned. Eyes wide in shock Ha Van mumbled so scary. Turns out my sister isn't a crybaby kid. But a violent little girl Li Thuong also didn't expect Tuck Bao to have such ghost expelling ability. Her strength resisting ghosts she grabbed the ghost and flung it away. Even he would have to expend some effort to separate a ghost from its host. Yet Tuck Bao just needed to fling it away. Her power didn't manifest clearly on living humans. But was utilized fully against ghosts. Truly born for this job. Li Thuong suppressed his excitement asking Tuck Bao earlier I taught you some ghost subduing incantations. Still remember them Tuck Bao nodded yes I remember. So you drew them sloppily like dog bites but I remember. Li Thuong twitched eyes spasming. The latter sentence was completely unnecessary. He told Tuck Bao to try using the ghost subduing talisman to seal the ghost in the soul jar. Tuck Bao clumsily waved her hand drawing the incantation. A yellow talisman appeared in the air. Enveloping the ghost then pulling it towards the soul jar. The ghost struggled I don't want to go in there. Why go in I tried so hard just for this outcome. But Tuck Bao didn't care. Stepping on it then pulling hard. Li Thuong shook his head disciple you're stepping on the ghost then pulling yourself. Then he told Tuck Bao to ask how it died. Subduing ghosts wasn't just simply sealing them. Need to investigate the cause of their death. That would benefit her cognition and experience later on. Tuck Bao obediently did so fat auntie. How did fat auntie die the ghost bulged its eyes at Tuck Bao you're the fat one. Your whole family is fat Tuck Bao immediately retorted that's right. Li Thuong saw that in a bit it wouldn't reveal its death. So he just gently pushed the ghost into the soul jar. The jar shook the ghost screams audible inside let me out. Tuck Bao patted the jar be quiet in their ante. The girl happily shook the jar be with the other ugly ghost. Master this ghost is so big. Is it enough to fill my jar? Li Thuong taught let me show you. He pressed Tuck Bao's finger onto the soul jar. Telling her to concentrate suddenly Tuck Bao saw the inside of the jar was spacious like a large room. The ugly female ghost lay inside bored. The fat ghost was stomping around. Still cursing earlier it looked so big yet still not enough to stuff into the jar. The girl pouted so how long would it take to fill up? Li Thuong chuckled even I don't know. Or ask your brother to calculate for you. The master and disciple looked at Ha Van. The boy was flustered don't ask me. I don't want to calculate anything about female ghosts. I d rather give up my favorite subjects math physics chemistry to study the difficult literature instead. But Tuck Bao still asked why big brother. You're so good at math the girl sat down drawing look. This is the room inside the jar. There's ugly auntie and fat auntie the room is this big. Fat auntie this big ugly auntie this small. So how many fat and ugly aunties to fill the room? Ha Van said this is simple math. Let's say fat auntie is x ugly as y. His hand seemed to move on its own. 
Seeing the problem made him want to solve it immediately. Finally, he came up with the result about 19 fat aunties and a hundred ugly aunties. Having said so, Ha Van fell silent, tossing away the stick, pretending he hadn't calculated anything. Tuck Bao nodded seriously, yes. I understand now, beside them, Li Thuong thought to himself. I already told Tuck Bao. Ha Van absent mindedly asked why the girl had to fill the soul jar. The smile on Tuck Bao's face gradually disappeared. If she didn't fill the soul jar, she'd be taken away. Ha Van was surprised taken where? Tuck Bao lowered her head drawing away to a very far place. Never to return that meant if she didn't fill the soul jar. Tuck Bao could actually die much later. Only then did Ha Van ask what about ghosts like that fat auntie. Quickly catch more worried there won't be enough. Ha Van denied being worried. He just calculated X and Y already. And needed to recheck if it's correct. Suddenly Li Thuong moved close to Ha Van how can you see me? Ha Van was startled about to answer when he realized Li Thuong was gradually disappearing before his eyes. He was stunned Hey Tuck Bao your master didn't want to ask anything. Why did she vanish Tuck Bao looked around not seeing anyone. The master was right beside you. Ha Van suddenly felt a chill down his spine. As if someone had just placed a hand on his shoulder. His hair stood on end. He didn't dare turn around. Truly horrifying not seeing was scarier than seeing. Li Thuong felt strange these two kids could see him. Sometimes other times not. Even after being a ghost for a hundred years he hadn't encountered this. Just then noises came from outside the woods. Mr. Tanyat Tran and some teachers appeared. Mr. Tu approached Tuck Bao. Looking her up and down are you okay? Tuck Bao shook her head I am fine. Behind her Vong Lai was babbling I said I didn't know anything. They ran out themselves then dragged me into this. Seeing her daughter lying unconscious on the ground. Wei Ni's mother rushed over to hold her up Wei Ni's whole body was caked in mud and dirt. Hair and ears messy her mother almost didn't recognize her. As Wei Nhi gradually woke she suddenly cried out mom it hurts so much. Her mother then noticed Wei Ni's face was full of wounds. Arms and legs also scraped all over. Nose swollen face bruised front tooth broken. Eyes black what on earth happened. Who beat my child like this what wrong did you do? Wei Ni's mother said this while looking at Tuck Bao. Immediately Ha Van stood shielding his sister I beat Wei Nhi. She was stunned asking why Ha Van shrugged she provoked my sister. Accused my sister in class. Then dragged me to the woods to confess her feelings. So young yet chasing boys like a thousand year old demoness. Still dares to like me if I don't beat her half dead then what's the point? Ha Van said first it's something everyone knows already. Hiding some details to avoid suspicion. But he took all the blame himself. Wei Ni's mother was flustered still should NT beat her like this. Being liked by others is good. Why beat them up Vong also said what's wrong with Wei Nhi accusing your sister in class. But you beating the accuser is wrong. Did wrong yet still beat others. Ha Van argued right accusing is right. But I still wanted to beat her so what. Vong was stunned not knowing how to respond. Duong Tu Hang admired Ha Van Big Bro Ha Van is too awesome. Later hell be my big bro. Initially just meant to pass a note to Tuck Bao. Resulted in Wei Nhi accusing her in front of the whole class. Being punished to stand for 45 minutes. Duong Tu Hang was also very annoyed by Wei Nhi's pettiness. Tu Nyat Tran gently said fighting really wasn't right. Well take responsibility for this matter. Then turning to the other side sorry ma'am. My niece is hot-tempered and hit your child. My family sincerely apologizes and will compensate medical fees. Mental damages 10 million dong to the Lam family. For the Tu family that amount was like throwing it in the river. Just because they felt like it Wei Ni's mother quickly said no need. Kids messing around is normal. It's nothing doing that would make me lose face. But they insisted on apologizing publicly. Compensating money she couldn't object. Mr. Tu said just in case you regret later contact my assistant. Wei Nhi cried mom I didn't. Her mother quickly whispered keep your mouth shut. Don't say any more Vong cursed under her breath debauched playboys. Just then Tu Nyat Tran glanced at Vong then the principal. Asking how he planned to handle this Vong was startled. Why did it involve her? Just because she wasn't on the two families side they vent their anger on her. But no matter she was the English teacher with the best record in school. The principal would surely protect her. 
but the principal was flustered, right? Teacher Vong was wrong to punish students without permission. According to regulations, shall be disciplined. Vong couldn't believe it looking at the principal. She only fulfilled her duties as a teacher, punishing the student for their own good. But to Nyat Tran said she arbitrarily punished students, even categorized and ranked students, posted names on the blackboard, publicly discriminating against and attacking students. Is that responsible? While she believed students only excelled when beaten, everything she did was for the students. In fact, they were just mad because Tuck Bao was punished by Vong. But Mr. To just smiled, signaling his assistant to read out info just found on Vong from two years ago. Two years ago, Vong bribed department heads for favoritism, but was rejected and received one reprimand. Last September, Vong misused her position to refer students to her external tutoring classes, collecting introduction fees. Mr. To looked at the principal with a teacher of such moral character. Even if you don't handle it, it's fine. Ill appeal to higher authorities. As for investing to build the school, ill reconsider that regarding her arbitrarily punishing students, categorizing them, posting achievements on the board. Finally, Vong was expelled from the school amidst parents' gossip. She wasn't just fired, but had her teaching certificate revoked. On the side, Tuck Bao stammered, telling Mister To she wasn't made to stand for long. On the contrary, she even got to eat her fill with her brother. Mister To gently said, "This matter doesn't involve you." Your attitude is clear already. Who dares bully the two families' granddaughter? Well, show them. Now you take the kid shopping. Tuck Bao cheered. I want to buy stuff too. Right? Tuck Bao wants to buy acupuncture needles for Grandma to treat her legs so she can dance. Suddenly she remembered. But isn't everyone not taking the bus anymore? The cute yellow bus will be gone then. Mister To smiled. No, you and Ha Van will go shopping directly. Not taking the bus anymore. Tu Du Nian boarded the bus with his backpack. Tuck Bao smiled brightly, waving to him. Tu Du Nian was stunned, subconsciously waving back. Then he went in and sat down, not knowing what to do. Beside them, Duong Dean finally got his chance. Approaching Mister to Mister to said, "Wait a moment." He looked at Duong, asking, "What's the matter?" Mister Duong said, "I heard Tuck Bao revived Tu Du Nian after he fainted." So I want to ask Tuck Bao for help with something. Mister To frowned. Tuck Bao curiously asked, "What is it?" Dean explained, "My mother has been in a coma for a long time. Can't wake up. I want to ask Tuck Bao to take a look, please." Beside them, Li Thuong suddenly said, "It's not his mom you dreamed of, right?" Tuck Bao suddenly remembered the old woman in blue clothes from her dream. Li Thuong was startled, looking closely at Mister Duong. Indeed, identical. Just agree. She looks exactly like that granny. So Tuck Bao nodded. Ill, come take a look tomorrow. Dean was overjoyed. Didn't expect Tuck Bao to agree so readily. On the side, Wei Nhi sobbed in her mother's arms. Mom, I didn't do anything wrong. Tuck Bao must hate me. That's why she badmouthed me to Ha Van. So he beat me. Wei Nhi's mom sighed. You have to endure it. Perhaps the Tu family can't be relied on anymore. Now the Duong family is the best choice for us. If others know you confessed to Ha Van, then got beaten. How can you get together with Tu Du Nian later? It's obvious you were bullied, but Tuck Bao has protectors. Yet you have to endure it. Why is that? I really hate Tuck Bao now. On one side, Tuck Bao went shopping with Mister Tu, finally buying the acupuncture needles. She was very satisfied coming home. Grandma Tu to told Tuck Bao to come eat, but Tuck Bao rubbed her round tummy. I already ate ten bowls. Grandma to laughed yet helpless said lying isn't good Tuck Bao. Yes, Grandma, I am sorry. Actually, I ate an ice cream cone, two mousse cakes, and two boxes of strawberries. Tuck Bao started counting everything she ate on her fingertips. Seeing Grandma to about to get mad, she quickly said, "But you promised not to get mad at me." Grandma to comforted, "I am not mad, but don't eat like that again, okay? Kids should eat properly." Tuck Bao happily kissed her cheek. Grandma is so nice. Ill definitely quickly learned traditional medicine to heal your legs. The girl cheerfully ran upstairs. Grandma to watched her with gentle eyes. Turning back, she scolded Mister to you let the child eat so many snacks too. Kids don't understand, but you're an adult yet still don't get it. Mister to silently thought eating was Tuck Bao's own doing. Scolding was him being scolded. Tuck Bao wanted to eat. Eyes shining at him. Who could resist? Grandma to continued scolding. You have to learn to refuse. No principles at all. Young master to coughed. I have a meeting. I am going. Then he left immediately. 
Not waiting for her to say more she wondered what Tuck Bao said to panic him like that losing his soul. Not long before Ha Van wandered out of his room. Downstairs to drink water then wandered back up. Soon he went down again for milk then sat in the living room. Ha Van saw his sulking brother you want to see Tuck Bao. If you want to see her just go Ha Van snorted who wants to see her. I was just thirsty I don't want to see her at all. Ha Van silently watched his brother arguing by himself. Finally Ha Van knocked on Tuck Bao's door. Tuck Bao sweetly said come in big brother. Ha Van tensely looked around. Then nimbly slipped inside. Like going to meet a secret contact. In the hallway Ha Van held up his phone to record his silly little brother's sneaking. Ha Van didn't understand young master Ha Van and Tuck Bao just went out together for half a day. How did his brother change so much? Girls are so annoying yet he still had to go up and down several times before entering her room. If it were him he would never do something so stupid. When Ha Van entered he saw Tuck Bao lying on the bed. Little legs raised up high. Twisting her little toes he asked what she was doing. Tuck Bao swung her stubby legs I am losing weight. You're so young why lose weight? Kids don't need to lose weight losing your cute round face like a tomato will make you less adorable. Hearing this Tuck Bao put her legs down oh right. If I don't lose weight then I can only eat one more bowl. If I don't eat at all grandma will worry a lot. Ha Van was shocked you want to eat another bowl more. Gosh people lose weight to look pretty. But you lose weight to eat more. Tuck Bao lay spread eagled poking her round tummy why is my tummy so small? How come it's not all stomach below my neck? Suddenly Tuck Bao looked up asking how did the fat female ghost die? Don't tell me she died from a ruptured stomach from eating. She looked behind Ha Van's back. Ha Van froze where's the fat ghost? Tuck Bao pointed behind him behind you. Atop your head she spoke sweetly but her words were horrifying. Ha Van startled jumping onto the sofa. Sitting ramrod straight Tuck Bao was startled you're that scared. Ha Van shook his head no I just got tired standing. Wanted to sit and rest. Tuck Bao acted like she understood then just say it straight if you're tired next time okay big bro. To conceal his awkwardness Ha Van silently asked if Tuck Bao found out how the fat lady died. To be honest Ha Van was also curious to know. Ever since seeing that ugly female ghost at night. His worldview was shaken up and down. Both scared yet unable to restrain his curiosity. At that time the arrogant ghost was being controlled by Li Thuong. Its mouth gaped open face bizarre. Li Thuong raised his hand pulling the ghost Li Mai out of its mouth. Tuck Bao's eyes were round with shock it can really be pulled out. Ha Van wondered what was pulled out. Tuck Bao said the fat lady swallowed the ugly lady. But master just rescued the ugly lady. But Ha Van misunderstood now not seeing ghosts anymore. He guessed the ugly lady was pulled from the ghost's stomach. The ugly ghost cried accusingly it swallowed me. It dared swallow me we were all made into ghosts. Yet it still ate its own kind. The invisible controlled ghost. Was pressed down to one side it laughed coldly if you want to kill or force me then do it quickly. Otherwise next time it won't just simply be eating female ghosts. Its bloodshot eyes looked at Tuck Bao threatening as long as I am here. You'll never have peace. Suddenly Li Thuong raised his hand slapping the ghost heart on the head. Dare threaten my disciple the ghost's head was slapped away. Rolling and bouncing by Ha Van's feet. Tuck Bao watched it then looked up straight at Ha Van's face what are you looking at? The fat lady's head fell by your feet over there. 